everyone. It's time for my RPG show, I guess. Uh, we've got just a super comfy, super, super good RPG run right here for you, right, pretty much right now. But before we get that started, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you some stuff. I, I kind of have to, they make me. They make me tell you these things instead of just going straight to the game. AGDQ 2021 online, it's done. It's complete. We did it. My sleep schedule is still ruined, but the total right now is $2.77 million raised for charity. However, just to remind you all, all of GDQ's portion of subs, gift subs, prime gaming subs, bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel for the full month of January, those also get donated to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. So it's $2.77 million unless you do something about it. You can make that number even bigger. And bigger numbers for charity are better numbers for charity. GDQ Hotfix, that's what's going on right now, is a series of shows that happens every week here on Games Done Quick. Information about all of our Hotfix shows is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to support the live content, head on over to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel, you know, like this one, every month for free. Consider using your Prime uh, Gaming sub here on GDQ. If you want to watch any previous Hotfix shows, maybe you missed one, maybe you were busy, things happen. You can head on over to youtube.com slash gamesdonequick, check out the archive of our live shows. And finally, tune in tomorrow for Games Done Classic at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a podcast where Lat Mackie brings on guests to talk about classic GDQ moments that they're never going to forget. And this time, it's going to be more Taskbot discussion. This is part two. Part one's already happened. Hey, you can head on over to youtube.com slash Games Done Quick to check part one out if you missed it. It was really good. Part two is happening tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be super fun. But what's also going to be super fun is right here, right now, I've got the RPG chick who's really good at RPGs, hence, you know, the name. Tell us about what you're going to be running. Hi, uh, I'm going to be running Shining Force CD book one only, though, today, because uh, there are two books in this game. Actually, there's four technically, but... Um, only book one for today, which is the first of the two Sega Game Gear Gaiden remakes. And uh, not, uh, lots of nice upgraded, more Shining Force 2 type graphics. We're gonna hope for some really good RNG and not a lot of 1 HPs, but uh, it's me, so yeah. And uh, I am joined here by the Camelot man himself, Bowie the Hero. Hi, Bowie. Hi there, RPGC. Hi there, Tina. How, how are you? It's time for the show. I get to watch RPGs be run. It's good. I'm I'm doing well. I hope that you're both doing well. Tina claims I'm good at RPGs, but um, well, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. We'll we'll have we'll have a good time today, and that's that's the only thing that matters here. Uh, I, mean, I, I would say that Tina's wrong. You're not good at RPGs. You're very good at RPGs. <laughs> oh, look at Bowie trying to be nice to me now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, we're in public. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's it, it, it's a cool game. As um, RPGC said, um, this is CD. So Shining Force CD is a remake of the first two Gaiden games which came out on the Game Gear. Uh, the first, only the second one came west. Sort of Hadra came west, but the first one and the third one, Final Conflict, they never came west. So actually, um, book one, uh, we never saw on the original release until this remake. Um, so, and this follows immediately after the events of Shining Force 1. So, if you're a fan of Shining Force 1 you, and you want to know how, what happened immediately after that, what are you going to find out right now? Uh, I think I'm good to start. Uh, I think hopefully everybody else is good to start. So I'm going to count us down in three, two, one, boom, let's go. Good luck. Oh, I have my fingers crossed. <laughs> So yeah, Shining Force CD came out on the, uh, the, uh, the Sega CD attachment to the Mega Drive, or the Mega CD, or yeah, the Sega CD if it was for, 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 for Genesis. Um, so yeah, it runs on discs, which is really, really cool. So it's got, um, it takes a little bit more of the visual style of Shining Force 2 into account. 
um, but with CD quality audio. Um, now, a thing to note with these games is if you've played Shining Force 1 or 2 before, or even 3, you'll know that the Shining Force games are a little bit different from your regular strategy RPG, because they tend to have a fully explorable overworld. Because when Camelot Software Planning, the developers of this game, um, and Golden Sun and stuff, stuff like that, they first wanted to make a game that played a bit like Fire Emblem in terms of combat, but really enjoyed the world exploration of Dragon Quest. So they kind of slammed the two together, and et voila, Shining Force. That said, <laughs> The Gaiden games and CD as a remake, they didn't actually have this overworld because it was just a handheld game. And for, for a Game Gear game, they were, they were really, really impressive. But they had to scale back a little bit of the uh, the scope of Shining Force. So these ones are just kind of a lot more regular like other strategy RPGs you'll see, which is just battle to battle to battle, broken up by cutscenes. But uh, yeah, the beginning is that uh, after the events of Shining Force 1, after Max goes on his journey, goes missing, um, Anri assumes the, uh, the the throne of Guardiana. Um, at the beginning of this game, those you saw, um, the evil um, people of Cyprus, evil, quote unquote, uh, came to attack Gar Guardiana um, and they put a, um, well, they, they kind of like poisoned Anri and put her into an eternal sleep until she can be saved. But uh, yeah, time for a brand new adventure. And uh, we're going to get treated to a lot of the descendants and nieces, nephews, quote unquote, of the original Shining Force crew, uh, including uh, Ken's son Apis, Hans's son Shade, um, Gong's nephew, I believe, mm -hmm. Sig, um, Luke's son, uh, Roos. Um, but we're, you know, it's a speed run, so we're gonna be not using all of them because using all of your characters actually does take a bit longer. Yeah, it's very interesting because like when it comes to a game like this and trying to mitigate time, uh, experience sharing is, is a thing. Um, so being able to funnel more experience into less people means that we get two or three heavy units rather than five or six less heavy units. And, you know, that can definitely um, uh, speed things up. As, and as of course, we are, uh, thanks to uh, Tina having us on uh, GDQ Hotfix, we have named our uh, main character Velocity. Um, so yeah, Nick is an unknown warrior who's joining to has joined us to lead the Shining Force, and of course we start on a boat. And if you've played any any RPGs that have have a boat, we know what's going to happen to said boat. Um, it's going to longer live a long and happy life, of course. But uh, yeah, of course. That, that said, boats have never conflict. ever 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 sank in any Shining Force game whatsoever. There's never been any issue at all in the history of RPGs. Mm-hmm, agreed, yeah, <clears throat> for sure. This is the great Shining Force, eh? Yeah, so we get immediately on sailing over to Cyprus, we get attacked by the uh, uh, the minions of Cyprus. Um, and we get into our first fight immediately. Now, what RPGC is going to start this by doing is uh, trying to activate turbo mode in this game. So like Shining Force 2, the CD remakes of Gaiden 1 and 2, uh, have have a turbo mode build built in. So when we get our turn, which eventually we hopefully will, hooray, um, quicker you go to the speed, sp bring it up to four, get rid of the display, and then reset the game. This is how you activate the, the turbo mode in Shining Force CD. You need, you need to reset the game. Now this does take a while on the CD version because the startups are a lot slower than on um, Shining Force 1 and Shining Force 2. So we have to enjoy the uh, Sega. Now, I know I said that Camelot Software Planning developed this. Um, they were called something else at the time. They were called Sonic Software Planning during this time. Uh, they went through, through many names, in case you were confused by that. Anyway. But now that we have uh, Turbo Mode being activated, we'll be able to progress through this game a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. It really does make a massive difference. The biggest thing that turbo mode changes is the speed of the cursor. So uh, v versus other strategy RPGs where you'll normally see like a phase, like all goodies go and all baddies go, uh, this is more like directly RPG turn-based. So the speed affects turn order and how fast you go in that turn order. And what's really great about, about the, these games is the pacing of these games. As soon as a character gets their turn, you're moving them directly. You're not having to go menu, move, select tile, they'll run to the tile. It's just as soon as the cursor's over the character, they're moving. And it's a really, really ni ni nice thing. So the, the pace uh, brought on by the turbo mode really reflects that. 
And one of the first things you're seeing me do, or you're, you're seeing me doing, is uh, throwing away protect rings. So this game has a strange mechanic where anything, uh, any special items that you don't necessarily get in battle, usually end up in the deal shop in the uh, weapons and item vendors in the towns. But by dropping um, the protect rings here in this fight, will cause them to also appear in the uh, deal section as well, and they'll be super duper helpful later on in the run because protect rings are pretty OP. Oh yeah. So I should note that the characters here aren't actually that strong, but the reason they're dealing so much so much damage to these enemies is because they actually have um, very enhanced gear on right now. So they've got like very, very good spears and also they're not, not taking damage because of those protect rings. Protect rings on equip give you plus five defense. And then uh, on use, you can use boost to kind of increase uh, defense and speed. So kind of helpful. Booster won't get used that much really, uh, as opposed to like others, but um, you know, it's, it, it, it is there. The idea we're going to use the three characters we don't want to use um, to lure in the enemies and kind of get them closer to us so we can then counter and kill with the characters we do want to use. So the characters we want to use are Velocity, Nick, um, and then a a Apis, son of Ken, actually a useful horse. Um, and then Most of the time Wendy. anyway. <laughs> yeah, again, massive quotation marks just in case. Um, and then... Uh, Wendy, so because um, she's a, a caster, ma magic is kind of helpful throughout this run because it's because it's a shorter game as a Gaiden, um, growth happens a lot quicker for a lot of characters, but HP and, and, and that for the opponent tends to stay quite low. So it's not too bad in terms of um, being able to actually be, be effective with magic's lower damage output. And also because these are bats, uh, they have a chance to put you to sleep. We'll see. <laughs> Sometimes I, get, now. sometimes I get lucky and sometimes I don't. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see funneling the experience into uh, Velocity, Apis and uh, Wendy, as I said. So the levels are going to be really important again because it, it's a shorter game. You'll normally see, at least in Shining Force 2 and other games like that, like one, two maybe for certain characters, stats up for most of the stats that, that, that the characters can gain. Um, but we're specifically looking for Apis here to get a lot of um, attack. There's your first one HP. Ding. <laughs> Check. Um, in case you don't know much about our RPG C, she loves to leave enemies with one HP. Oh. I don't know. It's just one of those silly quirks that she has as a speedrunner. Oh yes, um, it's my you know. favorite thing in the world to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we all we all have our quirks. As I say, it's one of those things. Um, but yeah, it's a, a decision that our RPG C made many moons ago and has stuck with her ever since. Bold choice, I must say. Very bold. See, the thing that chat might not know is that um, every Shining Force runner has their own little quirk. So mm -hmm. Bowie's might be dodges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seven in the first fight of Shining Force 2. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> was that attack two? It was attack two. Oh, wait, piss. All right. Don't get too, don't get too excited. He, he, he can hear us. Um, okay. <laughs> There's a dodge. Nice. But yeah, so I have dodges. RPGC has one HP survival. Uh, Just Johnny has um, really bad Peters in Shining Force 2. Attack one. <sighs> okay. Um, so yeah, Nick's an interesting hero. Uh, so the, the, the way that, that these games work is that if the main character dies, it's game over, you lose half your gold. But usually the hero units are pretty good and actually very, very usable, so you don't want to shy away from using them. Um, apart from Max. Um, but... Actually, Nick is kind of weird because he can be really good, but he can also kind of fall behind. So, um, Wendy's taking a sleep, of course. Good last. There are worse things. <laughs> yeah, there really are. So, Shade is hanging on a little bit here, but uh, we are going to uh, throw him to the wolves. Dodge, plus one. Let's go. Oh, dear, oh dear. There we go. Okay, cool. Shade's being going to get targeted now. I didn't and really asleep. want him to fall asleep, though. Did you take the ring off him? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, because I, I, you, like, you kind of like to bring him over to uh, fight two, don't you? Yes. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair script. He's good for luring in the, go the first couple of goblins in the second fight. Hmm. Oh, good yeah, morning, I'm, I'm Wendy. just used to throwing him to the wolves, sorry. <laughs> just <laughs> straight out of there. Oh, dear. Okay, attack one. Oh. So, yeah, um, 
people normally ask about, about Shining Force, you know, uh, are, do, are, are they random level ups? You know, what's the level up strategy in this game like? Now, um, if you, again, if you played Fire Emblem, it's just random and it's a, a hellscape of leveling up. Um, but actually for Shining Force, it's, it, there's a little bit of randomness um, in the guidance in two. However, one was a little bit more weird, but it has what's called ru uh, a rubber, a rub, rub, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> rubber band. Uh, M mechanic where the characters are looking for a particular value by a certain level so if you're not at that point the game will kind of you know throw extra stats at you to make sure you hit a certain amount of stats um so if you're say you know meant to be at 15 attack by level 10 but you've only got you know 12 it'll give you a big chunk uh, whereas the later games tended to have a bit more of, of, of a focus where everyone would get a certain amount, amount of stats but then they could get one more or they could get one less so it's a little bit more structured um, and a little bit more straightforward and makes for consistent growth like wow um <laughs> i blame makes this for on consistent you growth. i'm doing commentary the game knows <laughs> between the one hp queen and and bowie and his dodges uh yeah <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one the uh the estimate is very liberal, just in case. <laughs> like, we want, we want a little bit of leeway here. We need to be. Still not the worst fight one I've had, so. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's fight one. Oh, wait, what? The boat's being destroyed? <laughs> I never no would have expected this. Man, what's happening there? Jeez. So speaking of cool mechanics like throwing away the rings and how that works in this game, um, Gaiden won actually opens up really interestingly that you're shipwrecked on this shore and you lose all of your powerful weapons because again those those weapons are really really powerful because those enemies we were fighting were very very high level so you know lots of um you know defense and attack given to us to make us be able to get through that first fight now this is the actual first fight with enemies that are roughly our level and now the game gives us hidden weapons if you search the wreckage of the ship at the beginning of the fight, you'll find a, a wooden sword, a wooden um, staff, or a wooden spear for all of our characters. So Apis grabs the uh, the wooden stick there, making a brand new lance for him. Uh, and Wendy will grab a wooden arrow, and then a wooden sword over for Nick. So, or Velocity. Um, so yeah, you do get with these weapons, even if you like lose those powerful ones we had at the start, which, which I think is a nice little thing. To kind of circumvent the lack of exploration that this game has, in, in, for, in the form of, of a world map that Shining Force 1, 2, and 3 have, they made the battles a lot more interactive in terms of having things you can find and search and grab to kind of um, augment your um, experience in those, in those fights. So that was a nice kind of like a, a approach they had to kind of keep that spirit of Shining Force alive whilst having to shift focus based on the, um, you know, the hardware they were working with. I really hate so, that the goblins are still doing 2 HP damage to Nick. Yeah, he didn't get any, any defense too. So what's happened here is we pulled down the first goblin, Wendy will uh, damage and then Nick can clear, make sure to equip the sword. Um, and <laughs> yeah, Shade is kind of um, ta like, you know, gonna grab the other goblins, tank some hits in there as well to keep activating um, enemies. So the way enemies work in this game is that they tend to have like a line where the AO, uh, if you like cross certain points or kind of like get within a certain distance of enemies, they will activate and then come towards you or play a bit more aggressively. So we'll use Shade as a kind of um, target. Ha <laughs> ha! Get destroyed. But yeah, the, the sooner we can draw those goblins down, the better. Plus they'll tank some of the hits so that uh, Apis, who's going to move up first, does not have to. Oh, look at Nick go! Legend. Uh, level four, come on. All right, we oh, got some work. defense at least. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. okay with at least some defense. Yeah. To be fair, uh, Nick is, whilst he is good, oh, attack to Apis, this is good. Good start. This Cross is the fingers. kind of Apis that we want to see. <laughs> yeah. So ideally we get Nick and Apis to level five by the end of this fight. We get Wendy to level four by the end of this fight because she'll get the free spell when she hits level four. Mm -hmm. So magic damage in this game is actually set. Um, there'll be a range based on the uh, the move you're using. So Blaze one will hit for six unless they're weak against it, then it'll hit, hit, hit for seven and crits a plus one on top of that. Uh, Blaze two hits for eight to 10 um, normally and then 10 to 12 if it's um, a weakness hit. 
And then you've got freeze, which hits single target, eight for 10 with a crit, which can go 10 to 12, um, but it's only single target, whereas blaze two is kind of like a cross AOE formation. You'll see it when you first see it. Um, yeah, I think one of the things about Shining Force that makes it a very kind of uh, pleasing game to watch um, in general is that the, the UI is a part of Camelot's design that I've always really adored. Um, the UI is very clean and very um, like clear with you know good colors and obviously the HP bars getting uh, increasing as you go, which are a, a direct um, indicator of your growth and strength, which I think is a nice way of kind of feeling how strong you are um, as you progress through through these games. And the experience that you get from monsters in this game is kind of interesting. Um, as, your, as your characters get to be higher levels at earlier and earlier parts, you actually do get less and less experience, so it's kind of scaled a little bit to your level. Mm -hmm. Enemies will tend to have level caps where they'll be... Yeah, so you, you'll get, like, experiences based on uh, damage dealt and whether it, it's a hit or a kill. So you get a bonus for a kill, but then the damage you deal is also important in terms of how much experience you get. So the more damage you deal means the more experience if you're hitting, and then you'll normally cap out at 4 or at 49 as long as you're not hitting the enemy's level cap. Um, so again, if an, when I say an enemy's, le an enemy's level cap, I mean the level at which you will gain one experience for killing them, which means that you're the same level as them. So if they're level 19, or level 10, say, and you're level 10, you'll only get one experience from them. Mm. Damage is looking fine. Um, yeah, Wendo uh, has very little MP, so getting a lot of experience on Wendy and getting her to level 4, getting like those early levels before a fight ends is helpful because every 2 MP she gets an extra cast, that is a nice level up. It's an extra cast of Blaze. Uh, actually, the 1 HP on this goblin I'm kind of happy for because uh, oh. 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 Wendy can now get the kill. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> Thanks for the heart attack. Wow. <laughs> that was, we can count that. We can count that dodge, but at the same time, that was a bit scary because um, we didn't want that that kill to happen for Nick because we want to get the experience on to, on to Wendy, of course. Oh dear. Okay. So technically, this fight is uh, is actually a boss fight. So the dwarf that's up here, uh, if you actually kill the dwarf before you kill all the other monsters, the rest of the monsters will just completely uh, disappear and the fight will end. Um, not every fight is like that. There are kill all battles, but this just happens to be a very strange one where you wouldn't expect it to be a, a boss one, but it is. This guy's got a thing for attacking horses. Fair. That's all right. This is fine. Wendy didn't hit four, but other than that, it's all good uh, because, you know, there's plenty of, of chances to get good experience um, and Blaze is good enough. Uh, so, yeah, that's fight two down. Um, we're going to get a brand new character. This is Cray, and yes, he is Cray. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a monk, and unlike Sid, he's usable. <laughs> so <laughs> he starts off with very low attack power. However, because of being a master monk, he gains attack plus three pretty much on every level between like his first level up and about level seven, eight, where he'll start getting twos because um, he's just meant to be a powerhouse. So um, this next fight is all about feeding experience over to Cray. Um, oh, that also so depends go. on my luck because uh, yep. I've, I've seen a good bunch of plus twos in his early levels lately. Um, it's also really nice if he gets some defense plus twos as well, because he is uh, a glass cannon otherwise. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they kind of did have these shops involved as well, which is kind of nice. Um, and yes, this track is very Dragon Quest-y. Um, composer of, the, of, the, of this game is Motoaki Takanouchi, um, who did a lot of good work um, for the Shining series. And from the beginning, did like Shining in the Darkness, Shining Force 1, 2, and the Gaiden games. Um, and then, kind of, I think Sakuraba was brought in for later Shining games, but the early stuff was done by Takanouchi. So the nice thing about having Wendy uh, in these fights is, for especially for the first few goblins, uh, until Cray is able to get uh, a level under his belt, um, Wendy's going to be able to do the majority of the damage with the blaze spell to the goblins and allow Cray to just kind of come in for the kill. 
Mm -hmm. And that'll give Cray uh, a lot more experience. Plus, another nice thing about the Shiny Force games in general is that when you cast heal spells, you actually get experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. This is locked to priests and healers. There's something there's something about the class itself having access to... Um, well, yeah, when, when the healer or when a priest heals, it's kind of like you get 10 experience plus bonuses for how, how much percentage of the target's max HP you've healed, which is a very specific thing. Um, but yeah, I would go into it, but it's not really, really necessary because we don't use the healer in this game pretty much. Um, yeah, but it's yeah, nice to have Cray having heal in the clutch. Yeah. Yeah, he, he does come come across, but like, yeah, the, the healing that Cray provides will only be like very specifically helpful. That's not very good. I think Cray can still reach that, can't he? Uh, yep, he can. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't want to put him all the way over there. Yeah, so Cray would only deal three damage to the goblins at this point, so it's important to get that blaze off. Um, yeah. There we go. Um, so yeah, the first. So and you need 100 experience to level up. So 49 is just shy of an entire level. If you get two, it's 998. So you're just off it. Um, when you level up as well, you do have experience rollover. So if you get if you're at like 90 experience and you get 30, you'll have 20 experience into the, into the next level. Now you'd think, well, of course you would. That's not a th a, the case with Shining Force 1. They actually uh, used to have no experience ro ro rollovers. If you had 99 and you got, you know, tw 20 experience, you go go to zero still, so. I, I, I was so glad when they fixed that in, in Shining Force 2. Shining Force 2 has so many quality of life improvements over Shining Force 1. <laughs> mechanically things changed over the years. I mean, Shining Force 1 is like the, their first foray in, into this because, um, so Shining Force 1 and Shining in the Darkness were actually co-developed between Climax Entertainment and Camelot Software Planning. Um, so at the beginning, um, so Climax are the guys who, uh, they became, uh, God, what, what did they become called later on? Um, why can't I remember their name? They made um, Alundra. So Alundra, the makers of of Alundra um, for the guys who made like Shining Force 1 alongside Camelot. Um, Climax left after Shining Force 1. They only, only did Shining in the Darkness and Force 1 and then it was just Camelot afterwards. Why well, can't I remember the, the name they changed to? Because they also but made... Um, I would help you but I don't actually know the answer to that. <laughs> it's, I, I'm also not even sure if, if, if it's really relevant to say because we're playing a different game. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just going so, so like off topic. Um, That's going to be in my head for a while. I'll try and figure it out. Um, yeah. I mean, you could always Google Foo if it's really bothering you. I could. But that's the easy way out, you know? Um, so yeah, like, for example, here, a heal is a good thing. You get... To, he's got 98 experience, so the heal will probably, hopefully, give him attack plus three as well. There's a level up. Attack three. Good. Um, and like I said, it would have been nice if, if it also had... Uh, if it also had some additional defense, but... We can always hope that in future levels, Cray will pick up a couple of defense plus twos. But after uh, after his promotion, Cray gets like plus three defense for the first few levels after promotion. Uh, it's another reason. Wow, Apis, that's a level. Um, it's another reason that you want to try to promote earlier rather than later in this game because the post promotion levels in this game are fantastic, and so was Nick with that double. <laughs> mm. Probably a good time to talk about about that act actually. Um, so again, in something like Fire Emblem um, or uh, other strategy games like Advance Wars or even Wargroove, you'll see things like um, guaranteed counters, that when you engage in combat, you'll attack, the enemy will always attack, um, you know, given so, 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 as long as they're within range of doing so. Obviously, like, archers can't be can't be countering and vice versa. Um, but you know, you, if there's two melee going at each other, they'll, they'll b b both attack. Shining Force, again, do doesn't work like that. It's true turn-based, much more kind of like akin to the RPG um, element. So you, when you attack, it's your turn and that's it. However, there's a one in 32 chance, base value, one in 32 chance for a double attack, a counter attack, a dodge, or a crit. And then that changes with different things. Um, so just certain classes have a higher propensity to double attacks or one in 16. Um, flying units, you usually have a one in eight chance of dodging. That's a, I know that's a very, very high amount of chance of dodging, but that's roughly how it works. Obviously there's loads of bits in, in between that and then there's a lot more complexities, but that's all you really need to understand for the purposes of the speed run. Plus one. Yeah. 
With the one HP on the dwarf, though, I think that was a, a crit on Apis's behalf. Unfortunately, unlike with some of the other Shiny Force games, there's no sound for crit in this game. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> you just have to know. Like you, I think, yeah, if, if you run the games that don't have the, uh, the crit sound, you kind of get used to the rough um, damage values yeah, that your characters will be bringing out throughout the run, and you kind of get a feel for... Um, how basically how 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 much damage is uh, is going to be happening? And then you just got yeah, that's definitely a crit kind of thing. I would never have taken that much damage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, it takes it takes a, a while to get used to that kind of stuff. But once once you kind of get in the groove of based upon the um, experience gains, rather the plus twos or the plus ones, you definitely get a very good idea of where your uh, characters are. Hmm. Right. Um, I could finish so... this fight, but I really want to give Cray one more kill. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, again, we're trying to just expedite his 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 levels because he is such an important part of damage and clearing certain fights. Um, it, Cray has has to do some solo stuff as well in chapter two, so um, him having as many levels as possible does help. Um, oh God, <laughs> Cray, please. Yeah, he's only gone up, up one level, so with two levels, that's six extra attack, hopefully, um, which is a lot, so there it is, good. Yep. Yeah, so the yeah, next um, fight coming up, uh, we, we we really want Kray to have that extra, uh, that extra attack. Extra defense, mm -hmm. again, would have been nice, but it is what it is. Um, and technically, this was another boss battle, so when you kill the Cypress Knight, again, the entire battle ends. And we're going to be using that a little bit to our advantage in the next fight coming up. Um, there will be a Master Mage, the same one that was on the boat, um, and we will be gunning for her as best as we possibly can. It's a little bit difficult because um, she is surrounded by Cypress Knights and Archers, and the Archers can do a lot of damage. Damage. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the biggest part about this game as well. Is it like, when, I mean, especially for a game like this, where uh, in Shining Force Two, for the first half of the game, we use a fair chunk of healing to kind of get through it because they're longer fights. You know, they're a bit more brawly, but these these are quite short and sharp. And so, a, a big thing about mitigating, about speeding up, and it may may sound obvious, but it's just damage mitigation by clearing enemy turns. Don't let let the enemy have a turn. So. Um, Clearing turns where possible, even if it's not like the most optimal, does become a bit of a priority at certain points just to prevent, especially casters, um, from getting chances and those um, archers as well, as we we're saying, like dealing big damage. Um, so, not only, um, yeah, again, so not only um, are there certain things you can check, like chests in battle to get some stuff. So, there's a, um, a chest on the top right of this fight right now, um, which contains powerful wine, I believe, um, which is an attack increase of two to four. And we're going to be rolling for four. So, we might be resetting the game for a bit to get that plus four. It's kind of important. Um, as well as that, certain enemies also have item drops as well. So, currently, I believe Apis has in his possession the Protect Milk, which is plus two to four to defense. That was gained from an enemy in Battle 3. Yeah, he also so. has the uh, the Bronze Lance, which is a plus three attack on what he had with the Spear. Um, so that's also a nice little weapon upgrade. And, and a bunch of the weapon upgrades that we're going to be getting, especially for Nick, um, are going to come from treasure chests. But it's nice to hold on to the spear with Apis anyway, because the spear, as you can see, has a little bit of ranged attack on it. So it's good for hitting stuff that's not right up uh, in your face, basically. <laughs> yeah. Freeze. So again, freeze is a bit um, of ex extra damage, so nine damage. That's a lot cleaner just to make sure the kill for Cray happens, because we can't ever rely on Cray. <laughs> Not at, at the start. You give him like three levels, then he'll he'll be an absolute monster. But you just, you know, you can see how fast um, or how far ahead um, RPGC is pushing um, Apis. I was about I was about, about 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 to say Ken there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So Thank sorry, you. Apis. I was gonna say this is definitely not a this is definitely not Such a Ken a, thing. <laughs> it's a brutal insult, isn't it? My word. It kind of is. I didn't even think about it. I'm so sorry. Ken's a useless character in Shining Force One. No matter I, how I, much I'm, Ty tries to push him into the speed <laughs> run. <I'm> just... <laughs> I, was I was gonna say I was waiting for for Ty to just jump out of the audience and be like, <laughs> "Excuse me." <laughs> He's got that blimmin' ultra instinct Goku hair, Ken emote because he loves Ken so much. It's just a sh oh, it's an issue. 
So this fight is, aside from having a whole bunch of bottlenecks, as you can see, um, this fight also has respawning dwarves. So the, the two doors on the second level, uh, where the dwarves are coming out from, will respawn them uh, unless you have somebody kind of standing in there to block it. Mm -hmm. Well, I got defense, two. at least. Yeah. It's an uh, early level to start dropping down to the plus twos, though. I could have sworn, like, level six is, like, a pretty solid bet on your plus two, uh, plus threes. But hey. Um, it's been pretty yeah. variable. And as you can see, because uh, Apis is already... So you got me doing it now. Because Apis is already <laughs> <laughs> level seven, uh, which is uh, quite a bit higher than you would be if you're playing this casually, you're only getting one experience point from these dwarves. Uh, he'll get a little bit more from the Cypress Knights up on the top row, but uh, for the dwarves, not so much. Yeah. So again, just to kind of like remind people as well, in case, you know, just joining us a bit, a bit confused. A Shining Force CD is a um, a remake of the, of the Game Gear Shining Force games. Um, in using the Shining Force 2 engine. So this was only available on the Sega Mega CD or Sega CD um, attachment to the Mega Drive slash Genesis. Um, yeah, because they wanted to kind of bring more Shining Force over because, you know, it's a bloody good series. Um, yeah, and it uses the, the Shining Force 2 engine uh, and it has CD quality audio. Uh, but yeah, the Gaiden games didn't have an overworld like Shining Force 1 and 2 does, or Shining Force 3 as well, um, because they were originally for a handheld, so they had to scale back a little bit. But um, yeah, cool, cool looking little game. And uh, yeah, so these Cypress Knights, they have MP, and you're pr probably wondering, what are they going to use it for to annoy us? Uh, very much so. They have the ability to cast boost, and uh, that is a 37.5% buff to the base attack and defense value. Hopefully they won't Sorry, cast it. Sorry, defense and speed. Hopefully they won't cast it, but uh, mm. yeah, the chances of that are rather slim, especially when you have so many of them in one spot. And their AI is kind of stupid as well, because yeah. they will uh, cast it, continuously cast it, um, regardless of whether it's been cast or not, and you cannot stack boosts. Um, you can recast it once it's worn off, but you cannot stack it. Mm. I don't like that that archer just came over. No. Although Apis is very, very tanky. He's a, a chunky horse, so he <laughs> wouldn't be dying too badly there. Thank goodness. Um, dwarf has appeared. Right, let's see if I can get rid of this one. Should be fine with plus three attack, yeah. Nice yeah. So you can see a little bit more experience there. The, Cy the Cypress Knights have a, have a, a little bit more um, experience in them. They're a higher level, so. But yeah, the, the, it, was, it was a shame that Final Conflict never got um, a remake um, a la Shining Force CD because Shining Force CD has four books as um, RPC alluded to at the beginning of the um, event. So books one and two are the remake of Gaiden one and two. Uh, so Gaiden 3, Final Conflict, never got part of that, but Book 3 and 4 in CD um, are kind of like a little bit of extra stuff post-game, so Book 3 is kind of like a post-event um, kind of test for Nick to kind of like ascend the throne. Um, you'll figure out what I mean later on. Um, and then Book 4 is probably one of the hardest fights in the Shining Force series called uh, the Museum, which is kind of like a massive boss fight rush of like all the bosses. Think the secret battle in Shining Force 2, but just for everything in CD. It's nuts. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a pretty rough... Uh, it's a pretty rough battle, especially because... Second. Especially because it has that, uh, that Shining Force 2 mechanic where the bosses get two turns. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that like second to last lot of like with like the double demon breath and the bolt three and the, and the breath. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what? It's fine. I'm not at all scarred or cursed. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Cray's gonna uh, head over to the right there to go and grab that powerful wine, whilst everyone else is gonna slowly make their way around. So the Death Arch will probably be taken down, uh, but you can see how much damage mi damage mitigation uh, the Knights got from boost. So the fact that he used it kind of sucked. Um, velocity hit for two rather than, you know, five or whatever. So um, 
So the way that that at the buff works is it starts as a 37.5% buff, then it depreciates by 12.5% until it clears. So every turn the enemy get, you do deal more and more damage until you're back to the normal value. Um, but yeah, we'll get rid of the archer. Cray will make his way over to the powerful one. We cannot finish this fight until the wine is grabbed. Attack one, Apis, please. Did you have a chat with Apis before the run, by any chance? I, I tried. He, he just he wasn't. He wasn't receptive. He just wasn't listening. Okay. One of those days, mate. So there's a couple of different level thresholds that we want to hit as we go through the next couple of battles. Um, by the time we get to the end of chapter one, it would be really, really great if most of our characters could be level eight. Um, and then as we start to go through the first part of the second chapter to get them uh, closer to the point of promotion, which of course is level 10 in uh, in this version. Nick, Nick, why? Why do you hate me, Nick? <laughs> Oh, are you doing a run in front of the public and they're all watching and it's very, very, you know, high pressure? <laughs> also, Thanks, that, that, that feel when Wendy has more defense than Cray does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. The mages are great. Unfortunately, even though this is uh, kind of a direct sequel to Shining Force 1, the mages are not nearly uh, as tanky uh, as they are in, in Shining Force 1. Yeah, the Shining Force 1, like, magic in Shining Force 1 is just, like, un un unreal good. Like, Anri is probably the best mage in, Sh in the series, like, in the entire series. Uh, she is not good. Um, actually. All right, so I want to heal up. Uh, I want to heal up Velocity and Apis before they head around to the Master Mage because the Master Mage has Blaze 2 and Blaze 1, uh, and she can use them back to back as she pleases. Oh, you sucker bat. Ugh, no. So, status ailments are, um, you know, I think it's like one to three turns maximum you can have um, under the status ailments if you're stunned or asleep. You'll be um, away for maximum uh, three turns, but um, so that, that, that's one. Wow! <laughs> to be fair, Cray is level five still. I know, but still, it, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, there's this there's this there's this thing called Shining Force syndrome. Uh, wow! <laughs> You just got shining forced. I, I did. I did. <laughs> oh, I love this series. Oh, there we go. He's awake. Okay. Um, now, if you're a shining force two runner, you might be tempted to do the movement glitch. Uh, I'm not going to go too into, into too much detail, but you can essentially extend your movement by one right or down in shining force two by essentially trying to open the menu whilst moving through a spot that's taken up by a character. Then you can glide through it. If you, it is in this game. If you do it in this game, it crashes the game. Um, or soft locks it, so uh, you can't get out. So that's great. Um, but yeah, it's going really well, isn't it? Dark Mage got hit, hit for four. Nick um, is Nick is so behind an attack right now. He's yeah, he's he tanky, thankfully, but he's his attack is uh, is a little abysmal at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing is, this this Dark Mage is the mage we fought in the very, very first encounter. As But as I was saying, you know, every character had, you know, these increased weapons to make up for that first fight being the way, the way it is. Um, so, yeah. Wendy getting that kill, only 10 experience, wasn't too much there, but... Bosh. Fight should be over soon, though. Didn't even use magic, that's nice. I'm, I'm fine with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Plus one. <laughs> and this is why the estimate is very generous in this speedrun. Oh, and also to clarify on Shining Force Syndrome, that is um, the uh, the slow but I but inevitable breakdown you're going to uh, um, have because of the fact that you keep leaving things at, at one HP. And this, this strange relationship you have with the game where you're just like, <laughs> please, stop this. And it won't. Please. For me. No. <laughs> just once. No. I, I asked politely, you know, and it just it comes a, a circle. The uh, the uh, delirium you feel when pleading to the game. I mean, we haven't even hit the biggest source of RNG yet, which is going to be oh. coming up at the end of this fight. Oh. This is only chapter one of four, so don't worry. We've got. <laughs> that said, this is the final fight of this chapter. So um, yeah, this game is broken into. If Sh Shining Force One is broken up into eight chapters of like you know uh, three to six fights per chapter. 
Uh, but this is about four or five fights per chapter. I think the last one is one, two, three, six uh, for the final chapter. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, you know, not not too many fights. It's a, a much shorter, shorter game. But um, uh, as I said, yeah, this is the final fight. At the end of this one will be uh, chapter one over. Um, so again, we're going to see a new, brand new enemy, which I believe is the Incubus. Uh, they will use a bit of magic. So you want to try and, um, you know, be aware of that in terms of when you're like, you know, managing your HP, but they do give you good experience. So you want to try and focus the experience correctly. Top right hand side is a chest in which is a long sword, I believe. Uh, um, middle sword, I think, on this one. Middle sword? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that is a nice um, damage increase uh, for, um, well, for Nick, uh, I believe. Yeah, because Claude comes with one already, doesn't he? Yeah, um, the, the swords in book one are kind of, kind of chintzy. Uh, yeah. Basically, Nick gets kind of deprived of swords for a while because a lot of the upgrade swords that we get from enemy drops in the fights are all going to be going to Claude. Uh, and there is no longsword in this book. It goes right from uh, it goes right from middle sword to steel sword. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does. Yeah. That's nuts. Um, but yeah. So we, because we're only doing book one today, um, we, we won't be able to see the full thing. Uh, so. Uh, our RPGC was talking about the difference, and again, like Shining Force CD's book two um, is really weird because it's about the same length in terms of game size, but the they kind of wanted to like make it a bit harder, so they kind of buffed up enemy stats a lot. So like the enemies get really bloated on HP very very quickly, and it's harder to burst enemies down. Like in this game, where most enemies don't have that much HP really um so they kind of had to give more weapon upgrades in certain ways to allow consistent progress to be, to be made oh okay Not too I'm, bad. I'm very happy that that incubus decided to go and do a physical attack i'm fine with this anything yeah. that uses magic and decides to use a physical attack instead is all lovely <laughs> So a good thing about about magic and the and the reason why you know it's used as wherever possible. Attack two. This apis is. I don't want to. I'll jinx it. Hell. Uh, he's looking good. This is going to be great. No, nothing bad can happen from here on out. Considering that he is almost at level ten, uh, this apis is pretty good. I think we can safely say that now. Okay. Cradle up. Attack two. Yeah, he's, he's getting the consistent twos. I still would really like to see one more of those defense twos. Otherwise, we have to wait for the post promotion for him to not be uh, such a glass cannon. Hmm. But yeah, I'm going to try not to kill too much more with Apis, uh, just because he is already level nine and try to get my other uh, my other fighters up a little bit here. Hmm. Yeah, Nick's having a bit of a nightmare right now. Sorry, Vel Velocity is having a bit of a nightmare right now just because uh, low attack gains early on meant that when the enemy scaled up, he wasn't there with them. So, um, very and that and that combined with the uh, the weird um, weapon scaling for him means that, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a struggle. We do need to get him some levels, you see, because um, he'll be necessary towards the end of the game. All right, I'm going to lure this Master Mage over. Yeah, the other weird thing, uh, uh, the other thing with Book 2, it, there are, I think, only just a couple of extra fights, if I remember. It's like three or four extra fights in Book 2, but the, like yeah, Bowie said, the, the, the bloat on, on, on those characters, on those enemies, it's... <laughs> It hurts. It really hurts. But I will say that um, doing the endgame fight with uh, book two is nicer than doing the endgame fight with book one because uh, you'll see the mechanic when we get to it. But yeah, it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot less painful. So for reference, uh, right now the Dark Mage has 20 HP. That, 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 that's one of the highest HP values in chapter one. In at the, the final fight of chapter one in book two, the enemies have like 36 HP. And we're dealing roughly the same amount of damage. It's really a huge difference. It's, yeah, it's really, really weird. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> three, plus one. 
Wow, mage is really uh, gunning for my horse here. Yeah, I was I was um, I was practicing Final Conflict the other day um, for uh, a thing I have coming up, um, and. Uh, yeah, I found that Mead and Sylvia were just getting absolutely slammed by fire magic the entire time. I was like, can you stop attacking my horses? Please. I still wish that had gotten a, a Western release. Oh, yeah. it's, it's Honestly, Shining Force Far Final Conflict is probably one of the best Shining Force games. Uh, it's so good. Uh, nice counter from Apis. Uh, 25 experience is good. Um, so again, if you had, had actually got the main attack, you would have got more experience because counter is a, um, a weakened attack just to kind of deal a little bit back just in case. So it's not like the best thing ever, but um, yeah, it helps out a little bit. Um, okay, I have space in my inventory. This is fine. I'm going to go send Apis after that middle sword. Yeah, a a Apis is, is a good candidate for making that move because of the seven movement that um, knights have. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the brass loader over there is our target, um, but the the brass loader doesn't activate until you get inside that choke point or get close to the choke. Attack two! Oh, <laughs> Bowie Loom. Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna have to time my my post here because you know. Oh, nice ten damage. Mm -hmm. So again, the eight to ten, it does. It is nice when you get the extra amount. Oof. Okay, crazy. Good. That incubus is just gonna follow Apis up to the chest. <laughs> Which is a little bit frustrating, but it's all right. Look at his mad damage. Seven. Whew. Well, it's a lot better than he was doing, so yeah. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> all right, I'm going to have Wendy finish off this, uh, this thing. That way she gets her blaze two for the next fight. So mm -hmm. once you hit past the initial uh, magic, uh, you get the AoE effect. So for Freeze 2, for Blaze 2, you get a nice little uh, cross-shaped AoE effect. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't affect uh, uh, allied units. It's not like it's not like complete chaotic AoE. It's only for enemy targets. Yes, thankfully this game doesn't have friendly fire. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just. I need to just get rid of this thing. So you need to go now. <laughs> Apis is almost level 10 as well, right? He should be close. Yeah, ah, no he's going to hit level 10 a lot before uh, anybody else is. Yeah, chapter one. So this is Claude. Claude is a very, very large source of RNG for the rest of this run. He is going to be the Peter of this game, except less reliable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And trust me, I have done many things to appease this bird. I even have a lovely perler of him sitting by my, my computer desk right now. Another boat. Good idea, lads. But yeah, that is the end of chapter one. And I believe for the purposes of Tina's RPG show, I guess, um, we do want to take a quick break here, I believe. Yeah, this is a, this is a good uh, spot to take a break. Uh, we do wellness breaks because RPGs are long. Stretching your legs, getting a drink of water. These are all good things to do. So we can pause it right here then at the uh, save screen. Yeah, that sounds perfect. We will, we will wait for our uh, tech to let us know when we are good to go. But yes, we will be right back with more Shining Force CD. And um, yeah. And we're back and we're going to get right back to the to the game. But first, once again, I have to tell you these things. I've been told that these are important words for me to say. And as such, I'm going to say them. Huge news. AGDQ 2021 online. We finished it. It was super fun. I think that everybody in chat was probably there. 
So you're, you're probably aware that we raised $2.77 million for charity. However, all of GDQ's portion of subs, gift subs, prime gaming subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel for the whole month of January get donated to the Prevent Cancer Foundation as well. So it's $2.77 million with a big asterisk. And that asterisk says that you can change that number. You can make that number go up. You can make it bigger. So, you know, it's, that's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to know that, that things can only get better. Uh, through through the things that, that chat's doing. And I have seen quite a few so far. Cheers, subs, gift subs. Go rock. It's great. GDQ Hot Fix, which is what you're watching right now, is a series of shows that happens every week here on Games Done Quick. Uh, head on over to uh, gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix, and you can get information about all of the, the Hot Fix shows that we have. And there's a ton of them and they're all really cool. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to check out our live content, consider heading on over to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Consider using your Prime Gaming uh, sub to subscribe to the Games Done Quick Twitch channel. If you want to watch any previous hotfix shows, things that you've missed, things that you just want to get to relive, head on over to youtube.com slash games done quick. Check out our archive. We've got pretty much everything that's been on GDQ, period. It's great. And then finally, tomorrow, Games Done Classic is going to be happening at 4 p.m. Eastern, right here, twitch.tv slash games done quick. It's a podcast where Lat Mackey brings on guests to talk about classic GDQ moments, the sorts of things that you're never going to forget. And tomorrow, you're going to get to see the second part of a Taskbot discussion. Part one was awesome. Part two is going to be even better. Speaking of better, better than me going on and on and on. I like watching RPG speedruns and I like listening to people talk about RPG speedruns. Hey, RPG chick. Hi, Tina. <laughs> hey, would you would you like to do an RPG speedrun maybe? Uh, I think it would be a really good idea so to pick this one up because uh, this is only going to get more uh, RNG festively heavy. <laughs> yeah, about that. I actually, um, I, I called up Sig and I asked over the break if um, maybe you could have fewer dodges. It was weird. They dodged my calls. I love it. I approve. <laughs> All right. So Bowie, RPGC, yes. I'm passing it back over to you. All right. So uh, let's, so we're just between chapter one and two, if you're just coming in. Uh, so we just picked up Claude. Uh, let's resume in three, two, one. Oh, let's go. All right. So yeah, we're still making our way over to the Kingdom of Cyprus after Anri was poisoned by uh, Waldol of Cyprus, and we need to go and uh, find a way to heal her. Uh, on the way, we uh, pop over to Azrit Island, and we're gonna essentially keep on moving east um, to try and get to Cyprus as quickly as possible. So between chapters, the way that the game, this game works again, is a little bit different from other Shining Forces, is that whenever we finish a chapter and we start again, any dead characters or characters who are exhausted uh, are brought back to life. So Sig, Roos, Shade are once again alive. Now you'll notice that RPGC isn't moving right now. Um, we are not going to do anything just yet. We're going to quickly do an aggress and then prepare and then jump back into the fight afterwards. Um, so. I mentioned earlier as well that we grabbed a power water, which increases attack between two and four. Obviously, we want, we want that to be as high as possible. So, um, oh, speed three, nice. Uh, so we're gonna make a quick save, and just in case we use the power water or powerful wine, and it's a plus two, we can't accept that. Um, Honestly, uh, considering this is a marathon run kind of ish yeah. situation, I would prefer not to have anything less than attack four on my bird. Defense yeah. 2 isn't going to fly at it, though, so we're going to have to reset that. Okay, so... <laughs> Defense yeah. 3 is okay, um, but I need to have attack 4 on my bird. Yeah. Of course. So this is one of the reasons that Claude is one of the biggest sources of RP, uh, RNG in this run. Um, 
not only do we have to feed him two sets of uh, power wines and protect milks, but we also really, really need him to get at least one plus two attack uh, during the course of his level ups before promotion. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world if he doesn't, but it makes the um, snipes that are going to be coming up in chapter three a lot more difficult uh, to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we say snipe, we mean, obviously, there are, as, we, as we, we, we mentioned in Chapter 1 before the break, that there are two types of encounters you get in this game, which are uh, clear alls and uh, snipes. So, like, there's a boss fight where if you defeat the boss, the fight's over um, immediately. Um, so, if you give enough, if Claude has enough attack and all that kind of stuff, he can basically run up and one-shot the, uh, the enemies we're trying to snipe out. Um, again, because this game is a little bit shorter... Um, growth is is exp is kind of um expedited quite a lot and so enemies will also be a little bit weaker so we can f there are certain moments when we can get these snipes done um if you've seen shining force speedruns before you know that shining force one is all about you know um you like barreling attacks into the same enemy quickly um but you know having mul having m multiple attacks shining force two is about peter existing and then killing things um but it's going to be a little bit different for um this game oh. because claude is going to be our biggest um damage dealer now these defense twos are really not great um again we need this because claw's going to be going by himself and um plus one defense is really important so the way that damage calculation works in shining force is um that you have your attack first off and that has a roll between the maximum amount and i want to say about 80 percent of the maximum amount i think it could be 75 um percent of maximum so let's say your attack's 100 it can roll anywhere between 100 attack down to 75 it could be 80 again i can't remember numbers that's not that's not my forte then it's minus the defense of the opponent. Then the um, the damage dealt is then modified by the land effect. So there's three types of land effect, 0%, 15%, and 30%. So that's not defense increase of 15 or 30, 30%, that, that's a damage reduction. So let's say in, in a, an example, an enemy has a defense for, nice. An enemy has 150 attack and it rolls 150 attack then the person being attacked has 50 defense. The damage roll would be 100. Well, the damage calculation would be 100. If you're on a 0% tile, that stays 100. If you're on a, nice. If you're on a 15% tile, that goes down to 85, and then down to 70 if you're on a 30% on tile. So, yeah. Very important. Uh, I need to switch over my middle sword. Yes. So yeah, uh, so the I, it, yeah, if you if you if you saw me kind of going back and forth a little bit before going into the main menu screen, all I'm trying to do is progress the RNG table a little bit um, to get the twos to turn into fours. <laughs> yeah, because there'll there'll be like I don't want to say seeds, but there's like a thing that the game kind of does where you'll have these moments where. Um, if you menu the same way every single time on like a fresh reset and just like load up your file really, really quickly and you're always landing on twos, you're kind of set into a two zone and you need to advance the RNG by moving something either in the menu or a character to shift the RNG over a little bit. Um, so Claude has a move of six and he's also a flying unit, which means that he's not affected by the land type. Uh, he will be able to move his maximum distance as long as the spaces are clear. However, because he's flying, he never has any land effect, so he will only ever take the full calculation. I don't think um, we actually explained land effect. No, I, yeah, well, I mean, I semi did it in my uh, whole damage calculation thing, but yeah, 15%, 30% 30 or 0% damage modifier. Um, so, yeah, based on the, uh, the calculation that's made is then a 15 or 30% damage reduction. Um, at the end based on land effect. But yeah, so the land effect is mentioned in the top left, you'll see. Um, so like things like roads or like planes where there's no, like, you know, and if you're not in a mountain or forest, you're open, so you have no, no damage reduction. Um, that's the main thing. And then also move, like, tile types also have a movement like, effect. So there are loads of different types of movement, flying, hover, pathfinder, and then like normal and then uh, mounted movement and these all have like they'll be affected by different tile types differently so desert is like a mega killer for horses um if you have the pathfinder movement type uh, forests are not an issue at all you can move maximum distance in forests so understanding your units and kind of like how best to move through uh, the tiles and then also utilize them correctly for damage reduction is a big part of strategizing the fights Yeah. 
there's a lot of stuff going on, on under the hood. So you can see like Nick can move pretty well. Um, he's not he's, he's not Pathfinder. I don't actually know what his actual movement type is. Um, someone who reads the code will probably tell me, but uh, Bosh. Yeah, so that plus four attack on Claude means really, really good damage rolling um, in, in, increase. So the reason I told you about the damage rolling is just because attack plus four doesn't mean that he'll deal exactly four plus damage. He might, but he may not because of damage rolling. But it definitely makes him a lot more likely to do uh, the kill damage that we want him to do because essentially oh, yes. this split is called Feed the Bird because we need to get this bird to level 12 before the end of the next fight so that when we promote him uh he will be he will have a little bit extra attack on top of what you would normally get if we promoted him at 10. um mm -hmm. and it's kind of necessary for one of the fights that's going to be coming up at the end of the chapter which is going to be our first night mm -hmm. But yeah, as much experience as possible over to Claude. Gonna make him a, a big boyd. Additionally, by having the others kind of chip away a little bit. Oh. Darn it, Apis, why do you do this? Why is he only good when I don't want him to be good? <laughs> <laughs> he got attack two though. He did. He was a beast. He, uh, he did. This is gonna be a really nice Claude uh, and uh, Apis post promotion. Now, if only Nick would get a couple of more plus twos on his way to level ten, uh, we'd be we'd be set. Yeah. So, if you noticed, I'm kind of leaving um, Roos, Shade, and Sake off to the side. Uh, technically, I could bring them over and just have them used as fodder in this fight, but there's going to be a much more useful place for them to be fodder in the next fight coming up. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot easier to make them fodder for the next one because they're like a, a semi, a semi pincer that we can, well, not pincer, but a semi kind of like split of the force that we use um, to kind of expediate the fight that way. And this is when I was talking about Sig going by himself. Um, attack one is not a good start. As as RPGC was mentioning, we want to see one attack plus two minimum to really kind of um, ease the damage um like requirements it's one of those things that he can still do it but it requires a better damage roll so there are less rolls that can succeed and makes it harder to get the right roll which is uh, a thing if only ken was as good as this apis right i know what you're doing and i agree with it yes absolutely <laughs> It's one of those things where, you know, sometimes... Oh, there we go. Now another level up for Cray. Sometimes, you know, children are just great, uh, destined for the greatness that the parents could never achieve. And Apis is, you know, a, an, an, an exact example of, of that, you know. Our statements are 100% calculated. <laughs> <laughs> there may or may not be a huge Ken fan in <laughs> Love you, mate. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we just have to have a little bit of a joke around with the Shining Force community. Um, the, the, the Shining Friends are a. a uh, the Shining Force community is a, is a weird one because, like, you know. Shining Force is a very loved series, but it's not like the most known or most, um, you know, popular series around. So um, we like to uh, support each other wherever we can. But yeah, we're, we're uh, you know, it's one of those things that whilst it's never going to be like, like the biggest speedrun community, we're always ticking over, always playing the video games. I was wondering where the he when the heck this red flag was going to come on over. Yeah, just... <laughs> had a taste for horse. Apparently. Yeah. It's one of those things that it may feel weird, like not how, because like the, cur the curse of moving is faster than us moving them all the time and selecting menus. Oh, fantastic dodge. Good job, Bird. Plus one. Um... Cray. He won't kill it, will he? Uh, I don't know that he'll kill it, but I'd rather give the XP to Wendy and to Nick. Because they, have, they haven't hit level 9 yet. <laughs> 
And at least the rat flies are not like the bats uh, in the first couple of fights. They don't, they do not put you to sleep. Uh, and they're not like the bats in Shining Force 1 either. They don't poison. Thank God. <laughs> God damn. So uh, states the elements are a little, little bit different. They're actually a one in, tw uh, a one in four chance of happening, um, which is pretty high. Um, that might be a little bit different in this game. I'm not sure, but I know that is definitely the case for Shining Force 2. Um, but yeah, it, it basically acts like a super crit kind of thing. Well, in a, in a couple of fights anyway, we're going to be encountering the zombies. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so states the elements are a thing. I was, I was talking about mostly the turn denying ones, stun and sleep. Poison is a states the element that ticks two HP per turn used. Uh, at the end of the turn, you just lose um, two HP. It works a little bit different in Shining Force Three, where there are different values of poison. You get like a, you get like these like really powerful poisons that deal more, but you know, for the original ones, it was just simple attack two. Yes, thank you. Oh, that's and that's nice. The Incubus came over. Although, is there still experience for Claude to gain here? They're level caps nine, isn't it? Oh no, ten by the end of the fight. Well, no, I mean the Incubus, they're, they're level caps 9, isn't it? Or is it 10? Um, I think the Incubus is 9, so I'm not going to send Claude after it. I'm going to send Claude over to the uh, 3 on the other side of the mountain. Sure. Uh, let me get you out of there. That one. Yeah. Go on, Nicola. Bosh. He's Nothing. finally catching up on some of those plus twos, which uh, is really, yeah. really nice to see. That calls for another loom. We always loom when Nick gets plus two. All right, let's go after this mage first. All right, so uh, to remind our, um, us all of the, uh, the kind of the Shining Force canon, if you will. Um, so Shining Force one, shining, funny enough, shining, shining in the Darkness, the first game, which is actually a dungeon crawler, not a turn-based RPG. Um, strategy RPG um, is at the end of the timeline, but Shining Force One is you know starts off this storyline, and then CD One and Two or Gaiden One and Two take place immediately after Shining Force One. So after the events of Shining Force One, it's like a few years. Uh, we're playing the descendants of you know Ken and Ken, Wendy, Gong, all that kind of stuff. Um, Anri is now the Queen of Gar Guardiana, and she's been poisoned and, fall and fall fall fell into a, like a poison-induced coma. We're trying to heal her. Uh, CD Book Two takes place immediately after this chapter. Fantastic! Can you please <laughs> press one? Get 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 your ones in chat, please. I want to see all the ones because we have a master over here. <laughs> I'm just glad that this mage just turned around and bonked me a second time after that. <laughs> yeah. So, and then F Shining Force Gaiden Final Conflict is the third in the Gaiden series, which is like um, a little bit, like a, f a fair chunk after the events of um, CD, but it actually takes place in Grands. Uh, or at least you go at Parmesia and Grands, and it's kind of like a setup to what happens in Shining Force 2. So, Shining Force 1. Guidance 1, 2, and 3, and then 2 are all one long storyline. So it's pretty cool. I like that that thing is still going after Claude. I appreciate that, Brass Loader. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so, um,. People will normally see this and go like, oh, it's just a Fire Emblem clone. And I'll go, well, yes, Camelot did kind of design this because they wanted to make a game that had combat like Fire Emblem, but with a, a, a really strong RPG element to it as well, rather than just being more strategy focused. Uh, um, so it's kind of like a combination of Dragon Quest and Fire Emblem is the approach. Um, but there are many elements that Fire Emblem had earlier on that this, guy, that this game didn't because it wanted to focus on, again, more statistic focused um, strategy rather than anything else. Um, so it, at, at the beginning, it didn't have anything like, you know, arrows being super effective or like really, really good against flyers. That came in Shining Force 3, um, where like the weapon triangle thing became a bit more of a thing in that game too. But for early on parts, um, although the AI is still kind of like, sometimes has a bit of a, a tendency to do that. Like, oh, this character is what is considered the weak one of all my targets, I'll go after them. Despite <laughs> being this tanky hell beast of a bird. I don't want to risk that blaze critting. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Oh, 
one more for the road from Sig, Roos, and uh, Shade there. Well done. Well done, friends. <laughs> Level 10. Yes. Attack 2. Quickness 2 as well. Right, that's the first fight there. Uh, we're now going into Azreet Village, uh, where we get a... Well, yeah. We get introduced to a couple of characters in a little bit who are... They're really cool, but they just join at such a low level. So note that all of our characters are level 10. At the end of this battle, some of them are going to be level 11, maybe even level 12 if they get enough experience. The next characters to join, um, who join after this fight, um, they join at level 4, which is a real shame because one of them would be absolutely perfect. Um, because oh, yeah. they're be. really good. <laughs> yeah. But they just join way too low and require way too much work to become him. <laughs> Stock. Uh, uh, yeah, he's a really, really good archer. So as we know, in Shining Force 1, archers are rubbish. Hands, stop. <laughs> Diane, please, think about it. Um, <laughs> Camelot had this thing where they just didn't like archers for the longest time, until Shining Force 3, where they were like, Haywood, go forth. Hey, 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 Chester in book two, come on. Okay, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I, I mean, they... Yes. <laughs> Archers are good in, in Gaiden. They're not, they're no Haywood. They're no Haywood, but they are good. Um, yeah, so Stock is actually a really, really good Archer, um, but he joins at level four and it sucks because everyone's really, really strong. Um, and Bowie put this idea in my head about using Shade uh, from the beginning of the game, because obviously if you're using him from the beginning of the game, you get to build him up like you've been doing with the other characters. And uh, having having messed around with it a little bit, I have to say that um, it's actually kind of nice. The only thing is Shade has that same RNG problem that Apis has. If he doesn't get a lot of plus two attack boosts when he gains levels, then he falls off really fast. Oh, I. So, so using shade yeah. is a very reset heavy thing, which is why we're using Wendy for this because it's a little bit safer. But yeah, the, the big thing about archers is that they get three range later on rather than just two range, so they can hit like in L shapes and, and even longer distances. So you can create ni uh, nicer walls. So uh, the the approach to this fight, as we were saying, we're going to create a little bit of um, a target practice on the left for the uh, mage. Now we want the dark. The, we want the mage to use blaze two on um, this group on the bottom left to kill off all of the weak characters. So um, we moved Cray down to activate. Oh, you're gonna go straight through it that way. Okay, cool. That, that's fair. Um, the way I do it is I pull Cray back and just bring up the mage, but- um, Oh, this way I too. can get rid of the, 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 the rat soldier thing before- uh... mm. Yeah, so what this mage is doing to this, to th this group, because again, it had one HP because, you know, Wendy didn't hit for eight. Um, what that mage did to that party, we want the mage to do to the other party. So hopefully it will go up and not after. Good. Sometimes I've seen that that mage go after Cray, and it really is and is annoying. Um, it's not terribly often, thankfully, but uh, mm. the fact that she didn't kill any one of them is not nice because it's going to take an entire extra turn before I can start moving Cray over uh, to join the rest of the party. Yeah. Oh, actually. Ratman's gonna take care of it. I'm fine with this. <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. So yeah, now we're just gonna let that mage just wail on the uh, the weaker ones. All right, I do have a couple of herbs in my inventory that I can use here. Which is good anyway, because there's a couple of drops in this fight. There's going to be another protectional drop. Uh, there's going to be another power wine drop um, that we want, mm -hmm. because we're going to have to do that reset heavy stuff one more time, and then that'll be it, thankfully, for at least uh, those two items. Yeah. Yeah. So as I was mentioning earlier, you have like s some battles have search items and some have like enemy drop items. Uh, and yeah, one more powerful wine as RPGC said in this fight I mean that was going to go to Claude again as well so um I believe see again this is this might might be my Shining Force 2 instincts kicking in here um but do you use it immediately or do you wait for like to get a couple of levels in, on the off chance that a plus I, two can happen I used to use it immediately but um now I wait until after uh after promotion and use it then because i have had a couple of instances where claude would not get attack at level 12. 
double. Bad level, though. Yeah. He got his HP. That's about it. This is kind of nice. Plus, it also means that Blood doesn't have to have specific kills in the fight. Yeah. Because essentially, whoever kills the monster that's dropping the item is the one that gets the item. So if I wanted something to go to Claude, Claude would have to be the one to kill that particular monster. Yeah, that's true. Eases up the requirements in battle, and I think that's overall. And, he'd, and to be fair, the plus four isn't even mandatory for this fight. It's not. It's not, it's not like he's he's waiting on a damage roll. I oh, say that. Yeah, no. There'll be there'll, there'll be ones happening anyway, but that's not. You, you, he he could get attack plus four and still leave it at one HP. Especially when I'm running the game. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah camelot code is really weird it, it has this kind of if you ha if you have a look at that at the code in game it's always kind of like got um chance to kill equals 100 percent in brackets and if runner is rpgc minus 75 percent that kind of stuff it happens i don't know but yeah if you if you ever like break the game open and look at at, at the code 100 percent is right there all right, well, the only one who's not at level 10 now is Wendy, which is really not the biggest deal because I don't usually promote her anyway. I know some people who run the game like to promote her, but I, it, it's it's not terribly necessary. The main thing that um, we're going to be using Wendy for is to hopefully get her the sleep spell. Um, there's a fight at the beginning of Chapter 4 where that is pretty heckin' useful. Uh, so if she gets it, great. If she doesn't, it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, magic in this game falls off a little bit quickly with your party just because it takes so long to get the actual level three spells and do some major damage. Yeah, I think they really should have like given that to us a little bit earlier. Um, so here's a little fun fact as well about the Gaiden versus CD. They actually kind of fixed the CD in a, in a way. The Gaiden version of this game has a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a bug, I just call it a really like bad idea in terms of balancing. <laughs> Um, where Blaze and Freeze 3 um, hit for like 30 odd damage, which is a lot in this game, but have the have the AoE range of Bolt 2, which isn't a simple like crosshair. It's like, I think it's 13 spaces. So like of the block of nine with like the edges and extra space, it's this massive AoE. And they kind of made it normal where it was just like three range, but the AoE was a regular, you know, um, <laughs> was a regular crosshair. Um, I don't know why they, they uh, did that with the Gaiden games, but yeah, the ma but magic is like grossly busted. Um, but yeah, fun fact as well. Um, all three Gaiden games are available thanks to the Game Gear Micro that Sega released um, last year. The Game Gear Micro Yellow has Shining Force Gaiden 1, 2 and 3 all in one little, one little package and it has save states as well. It's great. The screen is also the size of a 10 pence piece. <laughs> <laughs> Unnecessarily tiny. Um, yeah, I really don't know. Even without your glasses on, I don't know how you play that. Uh, <laughs> with great difficulty. <laughs> um, no, uh, I think it's just pure fanboyism drives me. <laughs> I'm just like, I will enjoy this with like, the screen in my eye. <laughs> just like, I think I can see it. Oh, it's fun though. Oh dear. But no, like the, the biggest difference in terms of like visuals is because the screen's bigger, like the, the, the HP and MP gauges are a thing that they brought. This is like a thing that Shining Force 1 and 2 had and even 3, but they, they, they didn't actually have the gauges for the, um, the Game Gear version because the screen was so small so it only had numbers. Because uh, they had to try and fit as much information onto a tiny screen. So there was no HP bars, which makes me very, very upset. Because I love the HP bars. I don't know why, but it's like this visual that just will always stand out as an inherently Shining Force thing. I love these HP bars, man. God. Look at him. Yeah, unfortunately you don't really get to see too many of the really big fancy ones in, in, in this game. Yeah, just towards the end, like, bosses look pretty fancy, but... What's also really cool, actually, is that the Game Gear games are actually really advanced. They actually, uh, Gaiden, so the original Gaiden games, right, the Game Gear versions didn't have turbo mode for one or two, I believe, but Final Conflict did have a turbo mode, and it makes that game an absolute race car. It's so fast. You can't actually read the text at all. There's literally no text 
if you just like mash with the start button, it just it gives you one letter per line and it just clears. It's really fun. These games are so interesting. I think the Gaiden games are really, really weird because they had to kind of condense the Shining Force experience into such a small thing, but they somehow managed to do it. I was okay. really hoping he wouldn't do that. I would really prefer he uses heals on himself so that I'm guaranteed that Claude hits level 12, but it should still be fine. Mm, yeah. However, it seemed like he, yeah, he didn't take any damage, so... Oh, here we go. Wendo! We love Wendo. Her name's Wendy. We call her Wendo. I don't know why. I started doing it. She's stuck. <laughs> I mean, isn't that how I got my nickname? To be I fair... So. To be fair, I'm pretty sure that's how I got RPGC as my nickname. Yeah. I did, yeah, I think so. I don't want to take credit or anything, but I think so, yeah. I think you should take credit. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was a definitely a you thing. It was me! <laughs> yeah. I did it. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know what you're so, sorry for, but... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, we're just going to try and just... Yeah, the bird will just try and eat up as much as they can. Um... So yeah, I guess another tiny little history lesson again. Camelot stopped developing the Shining series after Shining Force 3. So Shining Force changed, or the Shining series changed after Shining Force 3, and that was when Camelot left, so... Um, Bird, please. Yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't a good damage roll at all. That was, like, 10 or something? Yeah, that was I mean, not a good damage roll. At least it's extra experience. So, again, promotion is level 10, so by focusing a few levels after level 10, we just get some... Ex extra stats like you know two or three extra hp um one or two extra attack and defense and it may not seem like a lot but it does add up over the course of it and especially for considering the fact that claude's gonna be doing a lot a lot of sniping and this game again stats are generally smaller and a lot more kind of like sped up so things are a lot tighter because of it um but yeah so stock's got a cracking nose um that's a powerful broad nose uh and uh we also get mayfair mayfair is a pretty sweet healer and has one of the coolest promotion sprites in Shining Force. It's also too bad that she starts out at way too low a level. Mm -hmm. But if you play it casually and you want to spend the time to level these two up, it is 100% worth because Stock is oh, yeah. a very powerful archer and May is a fantastic healer. Mm. And healers are a little scarce in this game. Yeah. I mean, the, f the fact that the majority of them are monks, and monks have like really incredibly low MP gain. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna. Put we are gonna first. go for our promotions first off. Um, everyone gets blue. Everyone just loves wearing blue in promotion. I'm okay why. with this. <laughs> blue, good one, Nick. And then we're gonna go and get uh, Apis promoted. I think he's the only one who goes a bit green. It's kind of like in Shining Force 1, everyone wears green in promotion. Everyone wears green. And then, like, everyone says, like, it's like blue is heavy here and so is green. Uh, like, Wendy goes blue, I think. Um, Wendy does go blue if I were to actually promote her, yeah. I think Shade goes even more blue. He does. There's a lot of dead people who are normally blue. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Cray goes green. Yeah, okay, Cray goes green as well. Um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Grinding in this game is a bit different from like other games. Like grinding is a thing that we do in... Funnily enough, in Shining Force 2 we grind. Um, but grinding is done... Technically, we have a spell called Aggress, and when you aggress, you flee the battle and start it again. With all the experience you had, you keep it. Um, so, yeah, that, that is nice. Now, the running pimento that was used there, that's a move plus two item. So that increases um, Claude's uh, movement range by two. It's important to always use running, running pimentos after promotion and the reason we do that is because whenever you promote characters there some units have a shift and change in their movement range um so just as a rule i would always recommend to always use running pimentos after promotion because when let's say nice wow first time that That's was actually really good lucky <laughs> that was good um yeah, so normally if there's a shift in movement, like say, for example, in Shining Force 2, this is the easy, easiest example I can give, it does happen elsewhere, but it's just the easiest example. Peter goes from move 6 to move 7 when he promotes. 
but that's not a plus one to move. That's a replacement. It's an overwrite. Six gets overwritten by seven. So if you use a running pimento before and it goes from six to eight, then, then you promote him. It goes from eight down to seven because it's not plus one. So waiting until promotion to use pimentos, always, always a safe idea. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, I am going to pick up a couple of safety antidotes because there are zombies in the next two fights uh, and they're really good at poisoning me. Yes. Yeah, this fight is a kind of a hard one. Um, I keep forgetting it, it's a clear rule as well because uh, I just do. Um, it, f it feels like a fight that should be a snipe, but I sniped everything that's unique and it's never a clear rule. I mean, it's never a snipe, it's always a clear rule. Um, we get a big weapon drop. We get the steel sword here. Um, weapon drop for Claude. That's a big, big upgrade. Because, um, yeah, there's no long sword, so it's like plus six attack or something, or plus seven. Um, I think it's so plus it's six, but yeah, I don't remember offhand. So Wendy's a little bit, um, she's level nine. I mean, if you can promote her, you can, um, but yeah. So the skeleton has a steel sword. I believe it's the priest has the cheerful bread? Yes. Yeah. Um, so the priest has cheerful bread. Cheerful bread increases HP by two to four. And I can't remember if this keeps the whole revival property as well. Um, the I've what? Tried. In Shining Force 2, if someone's dead and you use a, the cheerful bread, it, it revives them. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever used it that way. Yeah, well. So Mayfair um, is going to be our slight distraction here for the monsters that are on the left-hand side. Um, we're going to keep Stock in the background. We're not going to use him for this fight, but, then, but for the next fight coming up, he is going to uh, acquire a very important treasure chest for us. <laughs> My eye. So and is it also important to be careful of that Master Mage? That Master Mage has Blaze 3. Um, I believe. Was it Freeze 2? Uh, no, you were right the first time. It's Blaze 3, yeah. and it, it, yeah. it, it'll, it'll take a really decent-sized chunk out of, your, out of your party if you place them in the wrong formation. <laughs> nice dodge. Hell yeah. Oh, of oh. course it doubles. Just in case you thought you, you, you got away <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, game. Um, so zombies are very, very tanky physically, but they are weak to magic, so fire damage will be increased. So Blaze 2 will deal uh, 10 to 12 rather than 8 to 10 damage. Um, so if you want to kind of like kill them that way, you can. It's not the main thing because we do have a very strong Claude. 19 damage with the uh, extra um, plus 4 again. Yeah, this is going to be another fight that's going to be a little bit slower than it could possibly be because I need Claude to hit level 3 before the end of this fight. Mm. Um, preferably uh, having Apis gain a level here as well to get some extra defense would also be really, really, really nice. But yeah, there's the zombies, the master mage, the priest, and the skeleton up top are going to be the things that I need Claude to get the kills on for the experience. Um, the dwarves and the cannons and the rat flies at, the, at this point are only going to give Claude uh, maybe 10 experience, 10 to 15 experience, uh, at least for the first level. And then once he hits level two, then it's down to just one experience point. Oh, stock. I wish you were useful. I know, right? Yeah. So this is a cool new animation that our character, they get like a sprite change and animation change for things. Um, Craze, <laughs> Craze uh, promoted animation is so funny. Just praise the sun, punch the sun. <laughs> um, it's such, it's one hell of an angle. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, how I want to punch people uh, if I, I was I, to ever punch someone, I don't know. I mean, Cray is literally one punch man of the game. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't, you can't knock that. Oh yeah, uh, he is funny. So yeah, we're going to angle him nearer to those enemies because, like, again, we have what we want to try and kill off as much as we can. Um, oh, there we go. Mayfair take, taking a hit there. So yeah, the, the, the game's going to change a little bit as well because, as we were saying, snipes are going to start being a thing and they're going to become a lot more commonplace where there are bosses in the, these fights. It happens every now and then, but this is the first time where it's like, Bosh, we actually have, you know, a chunky amount of enemies to, uh, to snipe rather than having to kill everything. Um, Clear rules really stress me out. They just take so long sometimes. Oh, 
we go. Check it. <laughs> oh, oh, and the double. The double. <laughs> uh, God, he's showing up today. <laughs> am I on? Am I on G G G D Q? All right, here we go. <laughs> Stretch, boys. Bosh. Okay, 14's not bad for a 30 percent tile on the dark dwarf thingies. Got a different name in this game. Evil soldiers. Hell oh. soldiers. So, um, it's really weird, certain spell names. Um, so, there's a spell that's called Hell, and then it gets called Blast, and then it gets called Hell Blast at some point. And I don't know why, but it changes up all these different names. Um, yeah, I remember playing, I think it was in, well, yeah, I remember playing one of them to be like, what on earth is the Hell spell? <laughs> Just cast Hell, oh, damn. That's, <laughs> that's quite, quite epic, but and then wind comes out. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Claude all the experience I can here. Yeah, it may not seem like seem like, like a lot, but until we start getting to the point when enemies give us a chunk of experience, so th th this is still chapter two. So you know, and again, because we're funneling experience, everyone's really over leveled. So it's actually kind of hard to get experience right now for our characters, because um, it would normally be shared a lot, a lot amongst a lot more people. Um, but when, when we get into chapter three, experience will start flooding in again. So actually trying to push for these level ups, um, especially for um, promotion, because again, promotion, the, the whole thing about, about promoting your characters is that you get back onto experience curve. So in this game, levels two to 10 is on experience curve. And then anything above that is just like extra and it's not beholden to the general growth curve the character has. Um, so the promotion growth curve for Claude is that Claude will get like, I don't know, plus three attack. And he's a, a sword user. So that's really, really good. Um, stat until up until I get unlucky. So oh, I'll, ho well. I'll hope that that won't happen. But uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's try and not let's try not not to will it into existence as well. <laughs> <laughs> let's not make this happen. <laughs> Thank you. I was waiting for it to come on down. Oh my god! It's a zombie. I was also waiting for that. Thank you. I had to. I, I haven't said it all day. <laughs> That's one of the main reasons that I invite Bowie to do commentary with me, just for that. <laughs> just so every now and then I can go, oh my god! 15 damage, nice. 13 experience, oh, flying! Literally. The good thing about this party is that they do have a, a, a pretty decent chunk of HP, so when the mage does come down and blaze one of my characters, uh, it's not completely detrimental. Yeah. But I'm, as you notice, I'm trying to keep my party staggered so that she can't really hit any more than one at once. Yeah, so um, like checkerboard formation is quite a, an, inf an infamous strategy with Shining Force, just to kind of always put your characters in this checkerboard formation so that they're not um, you know, in range to get like bodied by several uh, blaze blaze hits. Um, it gets a bit trickier when you know enemies start getting things like you know bolt two and those kinds of um, like AOEs. But checkerboard will always be quite a popular formation. All right, I think this will be a level. Yeah. Okay, good. We got the attack, attack three. plus three. So for the first for the first few levels here, it's um, it's very beneficial for Claude to get uh, attack plus three because mm -hmm. it makes the snipe at the end of chapter two uh, actually doable. I'm gonna heal yeah. you so that you don't get bodied by a blaze crit. Yeah, so blaze three hits for like fourteen to sixteen, um, or it's fourteen to eighteen, one of the two. It's a lot. It's scary. Um, so, that, might, that might be a dead Apis. Uh, it's not going to use magic, don't worry. It's just going to use melee. That's not good. Nope. Oh, Claude. <laughs> the Claude already leveled up, yeah. Um, he'll be fine. I believe in you, Apis. You have your father's blood running through your... Wait. <laughs> Why does this bird hate me? All right, let's remember do one in thirty-two. Let's get him out of here. Oh, these games are great. 
All right, this is, uh, this is fine. Okay, good, now Apis won't die. <laughs> Is this fine? Is this totally fine? Oh, jeez. Where is that rat fly going? Thank you. I was hoping one of you would come down. Nice cre nice oh, counter. Look at that, Apis with the counter. Apis has uh, got some pretty powerful attack which i'm happy about he just got poisoned but that's fine that's why i have the antidote uh, I'm gonna oh this is really tricky yeah, yeah i was gonna say this might be a a, a bail for now this is like oh hello that was a crit that was definitely a crit even at although though zero percent tile and you hit for like 15 before plus you got an attack plus three it could have just been a max roll maybe maybe yeah i don't know All right, that mage has one more uh, blaze three in her. And after that, she's useless because all she can do is bunk. Oh, I forgot he was poisoned. Okay, yeah. So again, I was talking earlier about like ac activation tiles and what I call a sphere of influence. Um, and with it, with, when you're not inside that sphere, sometimes the enemies don't get too antsy. It does... Apis still has his... Uh, that's, that's too much damage, I think. The spear won't be enough, will it? Ooh! Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I would like my horse to live. <laughs> yeah, though, I was just... There, there was a part of me that was kind of like... Um, going full eyes emoji at the idea of a, of a, of a blaze two into spear throw to kill that master mage but oh, it's well, fine he's she thinks playing a... nice yeah yeah oh, oh legend yeah. one in 32. <laughs> i am fine with this all right let's go eat this we need to get you a level hopefully I need to make sure that um, Claude has an empty space in his inventory because I definitely have not done that in the past. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun one. It would, it would just the the item would just go to the deal shop, but it slows down a bunch of stuff if you have to kind of like you know. Well, it's also kind of pricey, so. Yeah. Having that money okay. available for. Uh, uh, for protect rings and later on in the game the heal rings is much more preferable good level up two three one one apis is continually continually trying to get that level up there it is defense there's that three. defense no, yes that's what i really wanted i wanted him to have that defense going into chapter two mm. <sighs> nick i would really like you to get some attack honey <laughs> <laughs> let's go hero oh honey <laughs> Okay, Cray punches things, they die, he gains a lot more attack. Defense 2 as well. I would have preferred the defense 3, but it's fine. Mm. Yeah, again, this is why any, any kind of like extra defense in non-promotion helps, just because, you know, it takes pressure off, things like that. Okay. So again, skeleton with the steel sword. Okay, I have plenty of space. There we go. So that's a nice chunk of uh, of attack upgrade. And again, with the running pimento increasing move range, um, we're actually going to be focusing. There's a very particular enemy in the, in the next fight that we're going to be pushing a lot of kills onto Claude with to like, exp like just jump him up loads of levels. So on the top right of this map is going to be a Pegasus Knight or three Pegasus Knights, and they give a nice chunk of chunk of experience. So flash getting warning, Claude by the way. <laughs> hmm? Flash warning. Oh yes, yes, flash warning. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I know that's a particularly bad flash scene. Yeah, yeah. 
Camelot had a thing with that. Casting spells and abilities like that always tended to have flash. Shout outs to the El Elbesim Orb of Scenario 1, Shining Force 3. So attack 50 now, which may not sound like a lot, but that's a uh, pretty huge amount. Uh, so we're going to have our party members running to the right hand side. And again, um, RPTC was saying that Stock has one final job to do. And that is, there is a, there are chests like around the map right now. I believe the one we want, obviously main one, bottom left, is the uh, the quick ring, plus five agility, that, which is very good. And I believe there's also the power spear as well in here. There is, but I don't usually bother with it. Fair enough. It's, too, it's, it's very far away, to be fair. Yes. But yeah, my, I think that's top left, I think, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah. So, Master Mage first. <laughs> you are a master of your craft, uh, RPGC. I, I am. I am. At least, uh, no. at least I'm consistent. Also, yeah. how dare you poison my horse? That's not okay. No one leaves him at one HP like you. I, like I said, at least I'm consistent. Every time I think it can't keep happening, it keeps happening. It's like, surely not this time. Like, it's just not. It's going to be fine. The good thing, at least, is that Claude has that extra defense from the Protect Milk, so the uh, the, the skeleton is not going to do more than one HP damage. Can I get a level on Nick here? That would be kind of nice. Nick has good level ups in promotion. He's uh, the the heroes in Shining Force CD are tanky, tanky lads. Uh, Deanna and Nick, like for, again, they just they just generally they won't get just won't take damage. They just take uh, like physical damage is just a non-event for them. So all right, great. Yeah, the only huge. bad thing about Deanna in book two is that Deanna's HP growth kind of stinks. I wouldn't even say kind of, it's just straight up awful. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, yeah, I, I remember I completed chapter one once and uh, Deanna gained one HP. It started at 12, ended at 13, and had like, it was like level six. <laughs> come on, come on, pal. <laughs> it's quite special. It's frustrating, though, because... He, once once he's promoted, he actually can get some really decent HP gains. Oh, yeah. Plus three across the board almost. Hello. Oh, Hello. Wow. They're coming down early. Yeah. Honestly, this is kind of better to have them come down because it's less turns that I have to take to move Claude around. But whatever, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, only... Normally, again, you'd kill the mage and then you'd move up. Yeah, um, the only bad thing about this is them. that they might attack part of the other party members, but I still have Cray to heal, so it's still fine. Yeah. Stock right. is just waiting to just... grab that chest at the end of the fight. Let me kind of clear a little bit up. Um, going to grab it um, incenses the mage and its accomplice at the bottom left to kind of get aggressive, so um, we want to leave that until later on. Nice! Yeah. So the reason attack three is a, is a big deal, um, okay, is because normally there are two types of fighters. There's weaponless fighters, and then there's, you know, fighters who have weapons. So generally they'll have weapons augment their attack power, so they have less of a raw attack growth because the weapons make up for it. But this is why Claude is nuts in this game, is because not only is Claude a weapon user, but Claude also has a ridiculous native, like, like, like inherent native, an inherent stat growth for his attack. So he's just a large lad. Um, There's that defense. Yeah, very nice. So yeah, it's just super important for that to happen, really, for, for, for that reason. Um, you know, attack threes like that in this in that kind of like quantity is only really reserved for Peter in Shining Force 2, who is an unholy level of like broken character. These things are still doing a lot of damage to Cray. I really need Cray to gain in one more level here. Would you give him a hit on the Pegasus Knights for the experience? Uh, I'm hoping he can go around and kill the Deadlyborn. No, not the Deadlyborn, the Skeleton. 
I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm, yeah. Uh, how much is left on this thing? Yeah, I can get one more whack in here. Oh, well, he missed anyway. <laughs> so, doesn't matter. Uh, he cannot reach it. Like father, it's... like son. <laughs> but that's all right. I'll heal up my Cray, and then I'll have him kill the skeleton in the next turn. Because Cray has a heck of a lot more attack power than, uh, than Apis does right now anyway. Ooh, Pegasus Knight, what are you doing? It's getting really aggressive. It's my own fault. Uh, I moved the bottom heroes up too far. So that's on me. I mean, it's not your fault. Claude left the Master Mage with one HP. That's what this boils down to. Because Claude would have flown up if he didn't, you know, not kill the enemy. All right, let me make sure that Prey can kill this thing. I'm going to start moving the rest of them over to the side. Um, mm -hmm. I also would really like Cray to heal uh, Claude before I move Claude over as well. And that 3-3 is what he should have gotten in the first level up, but he got a 3-2. Never uh, happy, are you? <laughs> like, that's what you should have gotten. Oh, it, right, yeah. It's what that's I should have gotten. <laughs> That's like, oh, that's, like now. that's like Claude getting a plus two when I want him to get a plus three. Yeah. I'm not saying you're not right about that. It is silly, but at the same time, like, <laughs> he's just sitting there going, can't you just be happy for me? I'm trying. Like, it's not good enough, Claude. It's, it's not, <laughs> okay, okay, it's not. <laughs> you, you don't know the pressure I'm under. I have a timer going, mate. <laughs> All right, let me heal this bird, and then he can go off uh, to the left-hand side and hook up with Stock. Thank you. Apis is... Apis is one hell of a thumbs-up up emoji today. Like, he's doing really good. <sighs> Thank goodness he got some decent plus twos before promoting... <laughs> See, like, he killed that one brass loader that all the skeletons have run away in fear. <laughs> this is kind of true. That was all why right. they ran away, because Ken's son just showed up. All right, so I'm going to try to use this bottleneck to my advantage, and I'm going to put Apis out at the front and try to lure them into a nice uh, into a nice T formation so that Wendy can blaze, uh, blaze the group. Oh, uh, oh, ah, hmm. The only bad thing is that the skeletons all have medical herbs and they can heal each other. And they do. Yeah. So, yeah. It, a, a bunch of times, especially, uh, there are loads of times when, like, when enemies have items and then don't use them. But they actually fixed it so that, that Gaiden and CD, the AI does use the items they have. That is not limited to just medical herbs, but also to uh, healing reins as well, which is fantastic. Yeah, there is one snipe in uh, in chapter three where one of the enemies has a healing rain, and while it would be possible to just do this, the snipe in two turns, it'll turn around and use the healing rain, and it stinks. <laughs> All right, Apis, your your time is now. That was Hell beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. I like this Apis. Clearly, uh, he was adopted by by Pele uh, you know, uh, early on. <laughs> Ken was like, I can't deal with this. Can you just take him from me? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Pele's like, all right, I got this. He shall have a powerful chin and good growth. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. Could you imagine after like another level up of like, or like I after been... another six attack, he still couldn't kill it? I would have been so salty. I'm sorry, I would have been so salty over that. 
I do sometimes think that enemies in this game do have a kind of like a, like, like a last stand mechanic, where it's just, you know, they'll stand, they'll survive with one HP regardless. So at this point, I can finally bring, uh, I can finally bring stock around to give the quick ring over to uh, Claude for the next fight. The um, the archer is gonna have to be killed by Claude for him to get the last level that I need him to get. Um, but the rest of the party can kind of just destroy everything else. The thing is gonna be left with one HP. I don't know if I have enough for Blaze too. Let me see what I have. You're so close, Stock. So close. No, I don't have enough, so he will have to be left with a 1 HP just because it'll only do 6 damage. Oh, no. Uh, 7. Okay. Dead. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Sometimes I I get it with the skeletons, and sometimes I don't. I feel it's a little bit wonky, but uh, I'm not going to knock it. So yeah, this is another, another kill all, so... It's a weird, even though there is like this archer who's like sitting there going, look at me, I'm shiny, I'm new. He's not a boss. Um, okay, here's the ring uh, giving over to Claude. So again, plus five agility. Now, this is really good um, for, you know, being faster on the turn order, but actually if you unequip and re-equip the item in battle, you can use it as like a as like a, like a a turn order m manipulation tool. So if you know that a character goes really, really late in the turn order, you can... Um, kind of like you know, let them go first. I like have it unequipped. Then they'll go late in, late in in the turn order. You then get their turn, equip the quick ring and attack. Then they'll go faster on the following turn, um, which is quite a cool little mechanic um, in 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 the game by like utilizing the quick ring. Um, it has its it has its it's like th that shines a little bit more in others, but like yeah, it can be used here. Anyway. Also, here if the sniper wanted to kill off Wendy or or or. <laughs> or uh, stock, um, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, so moving around the back just to stop the priest getting to um, the archer just so we can, you know, prevent the heal, but also it's gonna die anyway. Apis, level up! I wish you would Defensory. get, I wish you'd get a little bit of but uh, it's fine. See, earlier what you did though is you were like, yes, he got the, he got the defense and that's all I was worried about. And he was like, okay, great. I'll just not bother with the attack then. <laughs> So, you know, be careful what you wish for. Come on. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Here we go. Bosh. Here we go. Nice. Level five. Attack All right. Three. And we got the attack three. All five levels, which is exactly what needed to happen for this fight to go optimally. Okay. Cool. So, Final fight of this chapter. Yep. Because and this is going to be a huge snipe. Uh... Uh-oh. I was gonna say what happened to the game. <laughs> I know this is DD, but don't 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 pull PlayStation 1 things on me, game, because I'm gonna be very, very angry. <laughs> so we're gonna move our, our ever lovely bird uh up to do our snipe, and he's got the quick ring. Um he's got the extra attack. And uh Essentially, he needs to be at a certain attack power in order to do enough damage to kill Bazoo up here in two turns. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, um, you have a Master Mage there with with Blaze 3. Bazoo has Bolt 2, Bolt 2, no, Bolt 1. And uh, both of them will do lots and lots of damage and kill Claude very, very, very quickly. Yeah. So this is kind of where the sphere of influence type thing, um, you know, comes in handy. We're actually going to like stand outside of, of a range and move in to attack once, and then finish up a second attack before we die. Um, so like by, by staying in like a certain position, we can pretty much uh, like certain enemies at, at the top won't aggro uh, um, won't aggro really early. They'll only aggro when you get past like the staircase, for example. Um, so. I don't know what's, what, what what Claude is doing with these counters, but I'm here for it. Yeah, you can see the enemies in the center didn't activate, but the ones behind did, because like each turn you take, you're kind of like 
breaking into a new zone, like the different floors of, of the tower have like their own activation for enemies on the map. Um, so the enemies there will now be kind of like, um, you know, ready to go. Um, so you can see placing um, Claw just at, at the mouth of the stairs there um, to kind of move up. The very helpful but, um, <laughs> yeah, boost there. Thank you for I'm damaged! Running. Quick! Hurry up! Thank you for wasting the turn, basically. <laughs> now, that's like a hypochondriac knight. <laughs> like, <laughs> took one damage, just, ah! <laughs> like, <laughs> just throws heels at himself. <laughs> just covered in, in like plasters and band aids everywhere. <laughs> just like, I'm safe, I'm fine. <laughs> oh dear. But again, this is another reason that we really wanted to have plus three or plus four on those protect milks, uh, because Claude does have to withstand a few attacks as he climbs to the top of the tower. Oh, you're gonna herb your friend. How nice of you. It's very kind. Yeah. I think it's being, men in, being, men being mentioned in chat, but I never had it, but I only ever seen it was the Sega tower, uh, the, the Sega power tower, whatever it's called. I think we've got like the thing on top of the CD, which is on top of the Mega Drive. This massive tower of like additional things. <laughs> I really wish I like, had had that as, as a kid. Wasn't that like the 32X that was the top part of that tower? 32X, yeah, and then the Sega Mega CD. And then the Mega Drive itself, yeah. Okay, so yeah, two hits on Bazoo. Now, whilst this looks scary, they're not doing anything because again, we've just breached their zone. So they're gonna activate on the following turn um, and get aggressive then. And hopefully we just can like, um, not have too much to worry about. So yeah, two hits. Uh, there's the quick ring as well. So we went like, hopefully go a little bit faster. So Bosh over half HP, a double attack would end it. So if we get a double attack, thumbs up. If we don't, hold on to your butts. I almost had a double attack once, and then I and then and then he dodged. <laughs> oh right! I thought I was like, what do you mean you almost had a had, had a double attack? <laughs> he kind of did. He kind of flew up, but then never came down. <laughs> There's the blaze. Oh dear. Yeah, she always does this. This is one of the reasons that we have to have the quick ring equipped. Um, Bazoo usually goes at the top of the turn, but with the quick ring, Claude should go at the top of the turn. So. <laughs> Don't put a question mark in front of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not good. Um, I mean, the nice thing about Shining Force is worse comes to worse, you repeat the fight. Um, you just kind of get warped back to the town that you were in before the, the fight started. So worst happens is you redo a fight. It stinks, yeah. um, but at least it's not dependent on like the saves that you do with the uh, in between chapters. You don't have to repeat the entire chapter, thank goodness. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think I'm trying to think of a game that doesn't do that. I think all of Camelot's R R RPGs do the whole um, return to village, half money gone kind of thing. Again, it's very Dragon Questy, and that is the end of chapter two. So this is Bazoo, by the way, one of the mages of Cyprus who's uh, stopping us to, trying to get there uh, to Waldo. He's a mage and he's scary. Um, but yeah, we had to infiltrate Bazoo's tower. So yeah, we're going to have just a little bit of a cutscene here, uh, just to introduce another character and a little bit of plot, and uh, and then that'll be the end of chapter two. Oh yeah, should note that, th that this old man with us, by the way, really old 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 guy, is Low from Shining Force One. He's our advisor, and this is Yisha. Um, she's a mage, and uh, she knows Nick because Nick's just some random warrior, right? Right? Well. That would be all too uh, too much of a, a weirdness. So of course, this is a very important character. Turns out that Velocity, Nick, is in fact the Prince of Cyprus. Also, I the will say that uh, this ending, uh, when we get to the save screen for between books, uh, chapter two and three, would probably be another good place to take a, a little break. That sounds good to me. Uh, so yeah, it's, Gosh, halfway through the game. Um, just so far, this has been super comfy, super, super, super fun to watch. I, I am coming to realize that this is basically a one game at this point. Hmm. Definitely. Nothing at this point will go wrong. 
No. Nope. Nothing yeah. like one HP. Nope. No. 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 Nope. No. Certainly not ever. But yes, so now is a great time for a wellness break. So I encourage everybody, stand up, stretch your legs, get a drink of water, get the blood flowing a little bit, and then come back. There's going to be more extra comfy Shining Force CD right after this break. And we're back. Welcome back, everybody. I hope that you all enjoyed that break. I certainly did. I've got a fantastic glass of seltzer here, and I am ready to just sit down and watch a couple of my favorite streamers play and talk about a super comfy game. But first, just a reminder for anybody who showed up between uh, the last break and, and right now, just, you know, some quick announcements. Number one, AGDQ 2021 online. It went pretty okay, went pretty well. Uh, we raised $2.77 million for charity, but that number might change. Just remember, all of GDQ's portion of subscriptions, give subs, Prime Gaming subs, all of those, and bits cheer in the GDQ Twitch chat for the entire month of January also get donated to prevent cancer. So you all have the power to change that number. You can make it go up. And unlike our speedrun times, we prefer that the numbers that we donate to charity, we like those to be high. The speedrun time should be low, but the number that we give away, that should be big. GDQ Hot Fix is a series of shows like this one right now that happen every week here on Games Done Quick. Information on all of those shows is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. There's a ton of them, and basically no matter what kind of speedrunning content you're into, there's going to be a show that's really exciting for you. Head on over, check those out, to plan your week around what you really, really want to get to, to watch. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to support our live content, come on over to twitch.tv slash games done quick. If you have an Amazon Prime account, don't forget, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Consider maybe using your Prime Gaming sub for GDQ. It's a good, good place to put it. Also, if you're watching live, which everybody who I've been interacting on with in chat is don't forget that we do have youtube.com slash games done quick you get to check out all of our archived content just about everything that's ever been on the games done quick channel is going to be over there you can watch old hot fix shows you can watch old gdq runs anything that you want to get to relive or anything that you want to get to catch it's over there and finally tomorrow 4 p.m eastern we've got games done classic it's a podcast with Lat Mackey. He brings on guests and they talk about really, really classic GDQ moments, things that got everybody excited at the time, things that are still fun to talk about. Tomorrow, we're going to have TaskBot discussion part two. Part one is already done. It was great. You should check it out if you haven't seen it. That way you can show up tomorrow and enjoy part two. And we're kind of at part two of this speed run. We've, we've finished the first half. It's, it's time to start the second half. RPG Chick, take it away. Uh, thank you. So yes, we are right in between uh, chapters two and three. So chapter three, assuming that my look is better than it has been so far, uh, we'll see a lot of snipes. Uh, I might see some workarounds to some snipes as well. It just depends on, uh, it depends on the bird. Entirely depends on the bird. So let's pick this up in three, two, one, let's go. All right, welcome to chapter three. We have now um, docked at the port of Cyprus and making our way to the main um, castle now. So the party's a little bit, um, you know, sh shaken up now, uh, kind of dumbfounded by the by the news that uh, Nick is in fact, or Velocity is in fact, not just a random soldier and, and warrior wanting to support Gar Gar Guardiana, but is in fact the Prince of Cyprus, the uh, the nation at which they are at, currently at war with. Um, what else is he, is he hiding from us? What's going on? It's all a little bit shady and a bit worrisome. Um, so yeah, what's going to happen? We don't know. Um, but yeah, so Nick has kind of fallen into this, in, into like a silence. He's a bit um, you know, unable to, you know, really convey what's going on because of everything like that. Edmund, his, uh, uncle, shows up and is like, let me have a look. Ah, it's the Prince Nick. 
Uh, because he's been thre- he's been like thrown out of the uh, the kingdom because uh, Edmund kind of like usurps the throne and thinks that Nick's here to steal it back from him. Um, yeah, we're going to quickly use a quick ring to egress and then just uh, get everything sorted in terms of item setups and healing and all that kind of stuff. Um, we've got a, thing, a few things to do. So this is a fight with two halves as well. Um, you've got the lot, the lot who are on the boat and those who have already crossed the checkpoint before the uh, combat started. Um, you know, by these protect rings, this is a big part. Again, defense plus five for everyone who has them. They also cost a lot. But yeah, this is a very, very helpful item. So yeah, we got Claude on one side and Cray and Apis, so like all the big damage dealers on one side and then everyone else on the other. Uh, Yisha joined the party, as I was mentioning uh, um, at the end of the uh, last chapter. Yisha joined. She has a spell called Slow, which is anti-boost. So rather than a 37.5% buff to defense and speed, we get a 37.5% um, decrease. And what's really cool is you can kind of create uh, a little um, nook and cranny for... Um, both Yisha and Nick to hide in and then have all the enemies kind of attack you and you know, like blaze and slowly whittle them down whilst the other side deals with their side on the right hand side. So Claude, Claude's going to run around one shotting things, everyone's going to try and get past the checkpoint. Yeah, this is also why we picked up the protect ring because we're going to put Nick in the front uh, and hope that he can tank long enough for the folks on the right hand side to move over and uh, save their butts. <laughs> yeah. Once again, the uh, the characters who have no place in this story must be uh, sent away to a farm. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Ideally, we want Claude to kill off the, uh, the lizard men, but killing off the mage so that she cannot decimate the party is also kind of nice. Introduce some new enemies up there as well. Sorcerer and uh, Evil Bishop. Sorcerer has access to Freeze 2, I think it is. Uh, which is pretty much just as powerful as Blaze 3. It's not as powerful, but it's uh, slightly, slightly, slightly cheaper, so it's not too bad. Um, yeah, with the Protect Ring on, completely fine. The Lizard Man will technically do a little bit uh, more damage than the Knights will, but... Uh, not, it shouldn't be by too much. And if worse comes to worse, you can always, again, as Bowie has said before, you can use it as an item to give you just a little bit of extra defense for a few turns. Yeah, so by moving, like, hard, like, north and then west, that activates those Pegasus Knights as well, because everyone's just kind of, like, drumming for, uh, Nick. So, again, we're going to use the slow spell. Slow, um, is, it's, it's an incredible spell. A lot of people normally go, eh, it's not so great, you know, it doesn't always work. But it's like when it hits, it just makes it, it like tanky enemies just get destroyed. Like lowering their defense is such a huge boon um, to kind of like dealing more more damage and also lowers their speed. So you can normally outturn things that you normally wouldn't have a chance to. So it's actually a very, very good spell for that reason. Uh, so never rule that that particular spell out if you're playing a game with, um, you know, with or playing a character with, with slow, use it. Because most enemies are actually susceptible to it. I would be surprised if these three enemies that are here don't just get slowed. They really should. Um, if not using the slow strat, you can just use Blaze 2 because y y Yisha has Blaze 2 and that works as well to kind of like, you know, whittle them down slowly, slowly, but, but, but surely. But one, two, three. Yeah, they just get caught by it every time. Yeah, so. usually, it's usually uh, you're going to find that bosses are immune to that kind of stuff, unfortunately. And, and as you get into later fights, uh, a lot of the monsters become a little bit more immune to it. Hmm. Look at that. 12 damage. Hell yeah. So yeah, we're going to have the rest of the party. Oh, hello. Counter. Okay. I respect it. This is the... where Blaze 2 becomes helpful as well, because like with um, Claude following up the rear can deal damage to the back uh, Arch Knight, and then Blaze will probably be able, be able to finish it off if, if Claude can't himself, and then the damage um, extra will probably be helpful for Nick to maybe finish up the other one. 
I'm trying to remember if boosting that just counteracts it or completely reverses it and actually gives you the gives them the defense buff. This brings it. Oh god. <laughs> it's just a just it's just it's just gonna happen and just accept it at this point. Hmm. You can either you can either sit here and cry, uh, or you can just laugh at it because I'm just I just expect it. I just expect it now. Yeah, something something feature, not a bug, right? <laughs> <laughs> God, that really is upsetting. <laughs> oh, it's rampant. It never stops. <laughs> it's just oh. always. Mm -hmm. Look at that damage. And defense. Nick picking up some extra defense for the next fight uh, is uh, is a good thing. Yeah, this next fight is a... Uh... Well, it, it, it exists in the game, and we have to deal with it. Oh, counter! Wow! This is unreal. Unreal quality. Oh, come on. Nope. Claw, please. <laughs> All right, now if Claude wanted to counter this to get rid of that one HP, that would have been nice. <laughs> that would have been nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would have. It would have finished what he should have finished the first time on a low damage roll. Okay, Pegasus Knife's getting antsy. I think, actually, Wendy is in danger here. Not in, like, mega danger, but she might get targeted. Yeah. Hmm. Thankfully, she's already level 11, so she's not too much at risk. Good job there, Claude. We're really proud of you for dealing the damage that you needed to do to finish that fight. <laughs> I mean, I promise you, we do love these characters. They, they don't always disappoint us brutally. <laughs> Just most of the time. Oh, come on, Yisha. <laughs> if she hit that for ten, then she should have like she could have blazed one the uh, the lizard man afterwards, and e easing that uh, the damage. Um, well, like, the necessary damage to do that. But uh, give this attack two. Okay, defense three. Those nice. That's not bad. Yeah, I, I, I ideally, I really do want uh, Cray and Apis to have a decent amount of defense going into the next fight. Um, Apis is technically very useful for the snipe in the next fight, so I'm not going to complain if he's got some extra defense to go up there with. Hmm. <sighs> One no in counter. 32, my friends. <clears throat> That's what they say, at least. Uh, I... <laughs> It's always a bit confusing. Okay, so yeah, um, again, Claude can probably like if you if he wants to get that experience, he can, he can because of the <laughs> both of them ran out. Um, yeah, I guess they just counter each other rather than uh, anything else. Yeah, yeah the lizard men it, are, are. Yeah, the lizard men. Oh, good job, bird. The lizard men are Did the only things giving Claude experience pretty much in this fight, except for the priest, I think. Of course, I think the only way he gets experience is if he uh, does this thing called kill them. <laughs> all right, at least Wendy's hit level 12, so she's going to get the sleep spell, which is all we needed her to do. Uh, I'm going to leave you there for now. Okay, now, if Nick wanted to suddenly get some more attack, I'd be okay with that. <laughs> really, I would. Come on, Claude. You can do it. Thank you.
might also give Kray some experience here and get people healed up, and then I can move up to the to the top. It's kind of nice uh, having a, a, a uh, counter to dodges in one HP. A one HP is almost akin to a, to a dodge in that regard. So I mean, it's 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 really back and forth with these, um, but like. As, as a reference, Shining Force 2 is like a, let's say, a five and a half to six hour run. And this is, the average, like, dodge count in that is like 25, 26. And for two hours <laughs> of this game, we are currently on good pace. Oh, 11, nice crit. She doesn't really need the level, but uh, I'll take it. Uh, yeah. all right, let me heal my bird so he can go and kill some more stuff. Until sniper goes down. If you are interested in Shining Force or like 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 the look of this and want to try it out, um, while CD is a very very rare game on a very um, obscure um, piece of hardware um, and never got really really re released anywhere, Shining Force One and Two are available on Steam um, on the as part of the you can buy them individually as part of the Mega Drive collection, but you can get the games individually for like a quid or something, which is nice and cheap. Um, yeah, they're also available on consoles and stuff as like part of the wider Mega Drive collection, which is a pretty cool collection because there's a nice variety of games from, from this era, all the kind of stuff. But, you know, a good place to start with these games if you're liking what you're seeing. The collection is really nice for Shiny Force 1 and 2 because it has that, uh, that fast forward function, which is, it, it kind of helps with some of the monotonous longer fights. Mm. Defense three, no attack again. Has Apis got any attack in promotion yet? No. <laughs> Ladies no. and gentlemen, the son of Ken. <laughs> All right, the bishop is the last thing that is, is actually going to give uh, is going to give Claude any XP on this battlefield. So I will leave the kill to him. Uh, he's not gonna do much damage to it. Yeah, keep healing yourself. You're just gonna give the bird more XP. You thought that you could come over and hit my master monk. Oh, you're funny. I have all these, I have all this arcane of forbidden magic at my disposal. <laughs> right, good job. <laughs> I love, that's got to be a trope somewhere in like some kind of like show where like it's like, there's got to be some kind of like fantasy comedy where like this like super powerful mage just like gets into like a slap fight. It has to be a skit about that somewhere. Attack two! Oh, there we go. Let's go. Having, uh, having Nick, Apis, and, uh, Bray at level four for this fight is actually going to be kind of nice. Mm-hmm. So this is, uh, Gyan, or as we also call him, Gyan-Cat. gyan 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 Um, so Gyan is a, a beast man, and he's huge, but, um, doesn't really do much in the speedrun, um, he also has a secret outfit in book three where he gets like a massive teddy bear outfit. It's great. It's so, it's so adorable. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, Gaian, Gaian hangs out for a bit. Um, he is quite powerful, but he does require a little, a little bit of work to get, get, get going properly. So steel sword, finally, plus eight for Nick. He actually gets some attack going now and, and then big upgrades to everyone else. Plus nine for Apis. This is the thing. If you don't get the, um, you know the power spear that we hit that we could have got in Bazoo's tower. You have to kind of forego this massive, um, like, like, extra attack until after this fight. So it's kind of a, a weird one. So damage will be getting dealt again. All right. I'm also going to buy just a couple of safety healing seeds, uh, especially for Apis and Claude, who are going to go across the battlefield here.
and I'll throw in a couple of extra ones. Again, just for the safety's sake, uh, it doesn't hurt. And there are some, uh, there are going to be some worms on the battlefield, which are also capable of casting poison. Uh, we're also going to be ideally looking for the, um, for the mages to kind of get killed off here, as well as Gaian. Uh, I'm going to use that on Nick. Okay, let's go. So uh, certain games had these kind of like fun little um, like nods. Um, if anyone's ever played a quintet game, uh, Soul Blazer or Terra Nigma or Illusion of Time, Illusion of Gaia, um, they had this really, really cool thing that when it came to the staff, um, they would always kind of like showcase, they would always like tell like, you know, the male and female staff would be with blue or red names. So you've got the blue, the two blue, blue, blue tents for all of all of the guys and the red tents specifically just for the girls. There's a... Uh, Kind of fun that they kind of just made that rather than just putting them into random tents they've like had this specific color coding <laughs> god we're also going to be making a very um nostalgic pickup in this fight ah yes um many fans of shining force one will be very excited and then they use him <laughs> <laughs> ah hmm. not quite as it, it's sad quite. and it's true un unfortunately yeah, so there are secret characters um, hidden in these games where you search certain areas in battle and they'll join you. Um, these could be ninjas hiding in the walls, or they could be, um, you know, that wasn't really what I wanted magical to do. creatures. I was really hoping that uh, that lizard man would have moved out of my way, but it didn't. Oof. Bold. So the Deadlyborn is our target in this one at the very, very top. There's a Deadlyborn. Um, pretty cheeky, uh, pretty huge, pretty tanky. Um, but again, these the weapon upgrades will help everyone deal this damage. Boost is going to be going to be applied so that Apis can also make as, like, as much of a move as possible. Can I get this? Um, I don't know. is enough. Maybe. Nope. Oh, well. Oh, I, I thought it might um, be, but... Yeah. So yeah, the, the Deadlyborn just absolutely cheeses it all the way to the top and you have to, you know, why are you running? That's honestly fine, because I want the Sorcerer to go downwards and I want the Bishop to waste its magic. Because there is yeah, another can... Bishop up top anyway, so... Okay. Okay, Bear Rider, I see you. See, that's after a boost. These enemies hit hard. There's a sudden shift in um, enemy quality here, which is a bit bit, bit scary. Um. The uh, the bow riders in particular, uh, they're 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 pretty heckin' brutal, honestly. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is why I have healing seeds. Yep. So yeah, here's freeze two, seven MP. A little bit stronger than Blaze 2, not quite Blaze 3. Wendo is hanging in there, bless her. Yeah, but she's going to be a casualty, and that's honestly fine, because when we get to the next fight, I want to have as few characters left as possible. Oh, yeah. This next fight is a bit... Uh, it, it can be a pretty fast one, as long as everything goes in your favour. So, yeah, this is one of those ones where you just soak the damage as much as you can, as, for as long as you can, whilst, you know, the main force go and take out the enemy the main snipe here, and everyone else just has to survive. Uh, I really... Ooh. I feel like I should get rid of this thing. Oh, yeah. More like force the MP gone. Yeah. I mean, you might as well, because you... I, I don't think the, dead, the deadly born goes back any further. <laughs> 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 Alright, then I'm gonna do this. Stupid bitch. You just spent like a, you spent like so long strategizing. Like, okay, what can and I do? Then, like, and then the bird I'm gonna misses. do this and that. And then yeah, the bird and, then and that would that, be a genius play. That'd be godlike. And you you spend so long thinking you're gonna come up with this like amazing like way to counter the game and beat it up, and the game's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> oh Jesus, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that that doesn't count as a one HP. No, no ticker. No. No, no, no. <laughs> right then, Velocity, what you got for me? Is that... It is! 
as Domingo, the magical creature, has joined the Shining Force. Oh, Domingo. He is going to be useful, though. Like, don't, don't, don't mistake that. Oh, yeah, he, he helps. All right, having one of those bull riders gone is actually going to be pretty helpful. Oh, he only heal one, man. Oh! No, oh, congratulations. You cast boost. I think it's really funny, though. They have 17 HP, so they're literally one shy of being able to cast it twice. So it's like, what, what, what was the point? <laughs> what was the absolute point of that? Look, check this out. Ugh. You call that? Uh, you call that the Glasgow kiss, right there? <laughs> Just nut him. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really fair because when you pick up Gaian in book two, he's pretty heckin' tanky. Yeah. Well, well, it's actually really cool, Gaian, because like, yeah, he like nuts enemies when he like non-promoted. <laughs> but when he promotes himself, he goes for, like a drop kick. He does this. He does this kind of like roundhouse like dropkick thing. It's so funny. It's got really good animations. Dear, dear. Oh, that's... That's the other bad thing, is with the gargoyles. Yeah. Yeah. They're not quite belly -ols, but they, uh... But they're not, uh, they're not nice. Nice dodge. Keep him alive yes. a little bit longer. Oh, here we go. Oh. All right, so I am going to kill off one of these gargoyles, hopefully. Thank you. And I am going to risk Apis. Do I have a healing seed on you? Yes, I do. Let's use that instead. So healing seeds are 20 HP um, regen. Um, in Shining Force 1, um, it was roughly 10 and roughly 20. So you actually may heal less than that. Um, but it's like, in they kind of changed it so it was guaranteed 10 and 20 HP re um, restoration, which is kind of helpful. Um, I'm also going to move Nick a little bit down to see if I can lure some of these things uh, downwards. Okay, here we go. Ow. This is interesting, actually, because the worms might block. Yeah, the worms might block. Okay, that's interesting. One, two, three, four. I don't think you can reach the deadly born if the worm cat grabs the the top side. Yeah, this fight is uh, yeah is a bit is a bit of a uh, a mess. Sadly, it's it's just one of those really tricky ones. You need to just hope that certain things happen. You can take it slower and kill things, but it just adds a chunk of time that you don't always have to play with and, and again like if you do get lucky you don't have to worry about this about, about about this at all anyway in the first place so yeah sometimes you get lucky sometimes you don't yeah the big thing the big thing here was that the the uh, the worm spawned above and to the right in that corner so um there was like a slight there was a slight shift to the left which had to happen in terms of just like length and distance got um, moved Oof, that was kind of lucky um Maybe yeah, get out and try something, but could potentially reach reach the bishop. You see, yeah. Yep. There we go. Cool. Okay. So at least, um, at least it won't. The bishop won't be around to heal the the deadly born. Velocity going absolutely in on the south there. You got this, Cray. Yes, he does. Right. 
Remember, Claude is a big boy, so it's fine. It's kind of nice of the Deadly Born to come in to attack as well. Yes. It's got a chunky amount of HP, but it should probably... I mean, 20... was it? 28 has got left now? Mm-hmm. 20, 28 or 26, tight. yeah. It's tight, but it's doable, I think. It's never your counter. It's always their double. Always. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> So strange. <laughs> so weird, isn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm fine with this. If she wants to come in and just uh, uh, melee me, uh, I I'm okay with that. <laughs> And I now have, we're going to reveal to you the double counter. No. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be nice. I, I, I'd be, I'd be in favor of that. All right, what can you do, bird? Oh, bird oh. is in for the kill. Oh. 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 That Thanks. is a kill. <laughs> Thank you, bird. It kind of, it, yeah, good ending after a bit of a, a messy middle, but yeah, not bad. On to the next one. Um. There is an enemy in this fight, and its its name is legitimately Magical Mush. Now, I know many of you are going to find that endlessly hilarious. I know. <laughs> magical Mush! Um, <laughs> but they are magical mushrooms, and they can throw spores at you and do all kinds of annoying stuff. They're also pretty good for experience. Um, but this is a two-attempt battle kind of thing. We're going to send Claude down to the uh, southwest part of the map, first of all, to grab the critical sword. And then we're going to aggress and then start the fight again and go up and kill um, the um, god, the ghoul. Uh, the critical sword is a big increase in damage, but it has a special property of increasing critical chance. Now, I was talking earlier about how it goes where there's one in 32, one in 16, one in eight. Um, chances based on things like it all changes however it doesn't immediately work like that it, it upgrades your attack to the next type and and there's actually multiple types of crit chance so there's one in 32 chance for a regular crit um, and then there's one in 32 chance for like a super crit so like a crit of more damage than a regular crit then it goes one in 16 of a normal one in 16 super one in eight normal one in eight blah, blah. so it sometimes doesn't actually increase the chance that you'll get to crit but actually the quality of your crit um, I believe for um, Claude, though, it is up to the next type. So it goes um, 1 in 16 chance to crit for Claude, I think. Um, I don't remember the exact chance for him, but yeah. Crit's an interesting stat. Well, I will say you're better at the numbers than I am. So if, if you don't know, I unfortunately don't either. Yeah, the... Uh... Also got the evil pixies as well, upgrades of the incubi. Except they don't have any magic in this. I think they actually have magic in book two though, which is really weird to me. Critical sword. There we go. I believe, if I'm not mistaken as well, isn't the critical sword? No, it's the broad sword I'm thinking of. The what? critical sword's still still thin in this, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Because like there's two there's two two types of long sword. You get the long thin swords, and you get the chunky broadsword ones, which are really really fun. Um, so straight back into the uh, into the battle. These next two fights don't really require um, many people. We are, we're probably going to do the next couple of fights before we actually revive anyone. Yeah, I'm not going to revive anybody until we get to the uh, until we get to the barracks. Yeah. So yeah, we're still as as I said at the beginning of chapter three, we had made, we had like sailed to and made port at. Uh, the port of Cyprus, which is the kingdom we're trying to get to, to defeat Waldo, to save Anri, who has been put to sleep at the beginning of the game. And uh, yeah, so we need to go past, um, I was about to call it Ur um, Uran Batol, but that's Shining Force 1. Uh, we need to get past the barracks here and uh, get past uh, Dantum in order to get to the outskirts of Cyprus and then close in on uh, the final kingdom. But, uh, a little bit, a little bit to go. I believe on the top right as well is the halberd in that top right chest, which you don't need. Um, no, it's not the halberd. Is it the halberd? 
You know, There's I never get that there. chest, so mm. honestly... I could have sworn it was the halberd, but then I'm thinking that that, that that comes later on. I think you're right. I think it comes later on. Is that an axe in there? I can't remember off the, off the top of my head. Again, we never open it, so who cares? Um, the ghoul is a target. The ghoul can run onto that set of bones. The bones are a 30% tile, and the floor is a 15 so actually, if it's on the bones, it's kind of annoying because it's hard, harder to kill because of the damage reduction. And but it's still always killable. on the bones. Oh, it's it's heckin' always on the bones. <laughs> yeah, they move in like set ways. They always move like down right or like up left, then right down, up left, the back and forth. But it's fine. It's dead. You defeated the mushroom traps. I am a little bit worried about the minotaur because that snipe is very reset heavy. Um, and yeah. sometimes, sometimes you just don't even get the crit. <laughs> yeah, should be fine though. I mean, he, Claude's got a fair chunk of attack threes, and mostly not disappointing. Yeah, this is this is definitely the biggest uh, reliance on Claude getting a, a little bit of the extra attack, and we're going to end up doing a, a mid battle save to try to hopefully minip. Uh, good enough RNG to get the snipe on the Minotaur. Of course, the Minotaur is always on those tiles in the back, so... So we were talking earlier about an, about enemies using items. There's an enemy on the northwest of this map that has the Healing Rain. Healing Rain is a full heal to the entire party, wherever they are on the map. It doesn't matter, it's just guaranteed heal for everyone. So no matter where you are, where the enemy is, they will. if you damage that Minotaur, um, the... Uh, bishop up there will use its healing ring. Um, so, yeah. So these gargoyles suck. They will sit there and use blaze too. They can also dodge and hopefully Claude manages to kill one. But we'll see. But yeah, in battle saves, a beautiful thing. It's really great when you don't have to lose, you know, an hour's worth of progress on one one battle because one person got hit, hit, hit too often because you can only make bookmark saves. That's a great idea, not looking at any any particular RPG series for that one. <laughs> um, I don't know if Claude can reach it on this turn. Uh, he might be a little strange. bit too low. Yeah, I kind of feel... Yeah, so, yeah, um, the way that positioning at, at the beginning of battle works based on who's alive. So um, Gaiden takes over after him. Um, two in this regard where if anyone dies they shafty up one space and there are set positions like set starting positions one two to tw like one through to twelve based on where like, who's alive and who's in the party um, all right let me so, see how cause... far the bird can go all right so the bird can, can reach okay. yeah all right so let me we're gonna suspend it we're gonna save it and at least for the first one i don't have to completely reset because it's a little bit faster <laughs> than just resetting the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I learned Sonic, that from you the other day, actually. <laughs> oh, I? Watching you do the, the CD practice. I didn't realize that yeah. this was a, a, a faster way to get out of that. <laughs> Mm, I think it was really weird. I thought I learned it from you. Um, I think uh, I just remember it. I just remember because like the loading screen at the beginning, it just takes so long. I just remember that whole like like the Sega CD like startup screen. <laughs> oh, look at this! Yes! <laughs> Little is, does she know the reckoning will come soon. <laughs> it will, but that was the worst snipe in the game. So the fact that we got through it in one shot. Yeah, that's good. Uh, <laughs> That's honestly really, really good and nice to get that first time. But I'm just saying, something wicked this way comes. I mean, look, we, we, st we, still have, we still have the Dantum snipe and we still have the uh, the other Minotaur-ish type snipe coming up, so. Yeah, indeed. <sighs> yes, indeed. So yeah, this is Gates, the gladiator. He's a beast, but we're not going to use him. Well, wait, we can use him a little bit in this fight. Hey, hey, um, excuse you. I love to use Gates, actually. Okay. He's a pretty. He's once you get him a couple of levels, he's actually pretty big. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. I mean, makes sense. He is helpful. I just kind of like don't put him straight into the. Uh... No, I I love it because this fight especially it it's good to get him a uh, at least one level. Yeah, so sure. uh, I'm gonna take. Uh, I revived Apis. Apis is the only one I'm gonna revive. So even though my healers are helpful, um, I don't need them here. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring Domingo into my party. So there is gonna be um, an interesting bit of mechanic coming up with the next fight, and uh, that will be the reason that I'm not gonna bother to revive any of my mage users. 
This is a very, very cool thing. Again, like, it's really weird how the Gaiden games have these really fascinating features and fascinating uh, mechanics in the battle. Um, so this is the the barracks, and this is Frabel and Dantum. Um, we've got a massive tiger guy. He's pretty cool. Big sword. And Frabel, axe demon. Um... I love Frabel's design. She is one of my favorite demons. Yeah, she's really cool. There's always one. You've got Camilla, Frabel... Uh, Barbara. Shayla, and I can't remember Book Two's name, um, character name. Isn't it Barbara? Is it Barbara? Oh, Barb. <laughs> Something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bunch as of very per. Scary demon ladies. Yes, as per usual, uh, we're going to send Claude to move up towards the top. So, uh, for Bell is talking about her fizzle ball, and the fizzle ball, until you destroy it, will block all magic for the entirety of the fight. Um, and then I'm going to send them and go around to pick up the movement ring uh, that's in that treasure chest on the left hand side. And I'm going to send Gates and Kashing over to the right um, to deal with just a couple of the deadly borns. Yeah, um, so Kushing and Gates, they can pretty much deal with these things. They will just slowly, slowly wail away on the right hand side. You can see that we're going to try and force most of the enemies to come around to the left, but uh, yeah, they, they can deal with the right as much as they can. These brass gunners give a good chunk of experience as well, um, despite how you know buffed up Claude is right now. He's still getting good experience. For some reason, they are afraid of attacking birds. Pacifists, helpful. I'm fine with this. <laughs> and the fact that uh, that Apis and uh, Nick are both level four and have a good chunk of defense is also going to be very helpful in this fight. I do really wish Nick had a little bit more attack power though, still. Um, yeah. He's been picking up the plus two attacks, which is good. Uh, so hopefully he will continue to pick up a few more. Hi. Uh, so I believe Kashin comes equipped with a power spear, so a range one, two weapon. Mm hmm. So, uh, so yeah, after this can... fight, uh, he will get robbed of it, and it will be given to Apis, because uh, Cushing is um, Cushing's pretty worthless after this fight, except as a meat shield. <laughs> okay, brass gunner one, Dean. Good look at that experience. Forty nine. You love to see it. I do love to see it, especially because it'll mean uh, more attack from my bird coming up for the Dantum fight. Uh, oh, I'm gonna hold a here. Situation. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, hold these... there. Yeah, it was smart because of, like there's all of these tiny bottlenecks, and they can you can easily get get caught in one and just struggle when you want to be having all of your um, melee. Oh, it didn't heal. Okay, uh, I believe the other one might then. Um, yeah, have the melee units kind of like surround and be able to deal big damage. Like that's so tempting, but then you'd only have like you know the one space. So yeah, if it works out, it works out. But um, I am gonna try to move Cray up and around though. Yeah, that's fair. Go on, Gates. Nice. Yeah, having Gates get both of these kills is uh, is the ideal situation here. Did you poison my horse? I think you just poisoned my horse. Yay or nay? <laughs> nay. I'm not sorry. <laughs> just, I'd be lying if I was sorry. Maybe if I said I was sorry. See, so, and another reminder for those who may not be kind of um, sure what this game is. Uh, Shining Force CD is a... Uh, and a Shining Force 2 engine remake of the Gaiden games. So Shining Force Gaiden, um, the Game Gear games. Go dodge, plus one, let's go. Uh, only Gaiden 2 ever saw um, a release in the West, Sword of Hadra, uh, which is the uh, book two of Shining Force CD is Sword of Hadra. And yeah, we never see it. We, we, never, we never saw book one, um, yeah, part one um, on Game Gear. Or part three on Game Gear, Final Conflict, which is a very good game. Like, on real good. Yep, I thought they poisoned my horse. I think I still have an antidote somewhere. I'm fairly sure I do. Did you just double poison my horse? <laughs> the good thing poison doesn't actually stack. Oh, yeah. 
Nice dodge. So the, the, re the reason you can tell is there's a, like a slight delay in the animation of the game. So we turned off battle text at the very beginning of the game, by the way, that like the first thing we did was increase the battle text speed and then turned off battle text. So any text that does appear, because there is some like experience gain, level up text, all that kind of stuff. So the text can run as fast as possible whilst also get, getting rid of the like the majority of it. So whether you got poisoned it, is turned off, um, things like, uh, Someone's attack is ready to go. They dealt 19 damage. All that kind of stuff is turned off because we don't need to. We can see how much damage is being dealt because of the lovely UI. Oh my. <laughs> Easy now. Bird, bird, we're going to have words with each other. Just because you did well in the last fight doesn't mean that you can suddenly miss everything. What did I say? <laughs> Look, okay. Earlier, we, did, we, 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 we made two things clear. That you're running the game, and I'm doing commentary, which means we've got the queen of the 1 HP, and we've got Dodge Central over, over here. We're also, we're also combining our RNG. Now, I'm not sure if you know this, everyone at, at home watching, but there's multiple kinds of, of RNG, depending on where you're, where you're from and who you are. Um, there's the typical French RNG, perfect. Never-endingly perfect. Just perfect <laughs> RNG, first try, easy. Okay? Then you've got German RNG, which is 50-50. It's all or nothing. It's either going to be amazing or it's going to be absolutely garbo that you never want, want to look at it. 50-50, you know? No in between. You know? Then you've got, you know... I guess you've got... I would, I would I hasten to say something like the, the Nordic RNG. It's like, you know, pretty good RNG all round, you know? Comes and goes. You know, not too bad. Normal, regular RNG. You've got American RNG, which is exactly the same as normal RNG, but, you know, much bigger and much louder and, you know, complained about more, even though it's exactly the same. Then you've got British RNG, which is the only way I can describe it is karmic. <laughs> if something good happens, oh, oh, watch out, because something's <laughs> coming, something bad, <laughs> something you've never thought could be could be uh, possible is coming. Um, so we got the one-time snipe. Watch this dodge right here. If that had actually dodged after you said that, I would have ended you. <laughs> just just so we're clear. Uh. <laughs> uh. This is really unfortunate, yeah. This is kind of tricky. No healing for Cray, but that might help, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the same RNG, just in uh, in metric or something, or, or, or sorry, in imperial. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, the let's numbers get look bigger. That's exactly the same. <laughs> oh god. I think Ape still has a healing seed, so I might be okay. I was just thinking, why don't you just like blaze with Domingo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Domingo. Oh. <laughs> Bro Mingo can't really help us out here, sadly. The fact that the ghouls did come down to the right hand side uh, to deal with Kashing and Gate uh, is actually kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. I'm very happy about that. One damage. Oh. Nice dodge. Ooh. Could you imagine if you hit if you hit that by five? <laughs> Just like, wait, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh god. Yeah. Stranger things have happened. No, well, I mean. I don't know. Alright, that should be Attack heal three. three. No, heal three is level seven. So one more level and Craig will get heal three, which would actually be really helpful for the Dantum fight as a safety. One defense three. You see, as I was saying, they're just brick walls. The heroes in this game, they can't do anything, but they're brick walls, which is good. <laughs> Makes you wish they could, though. Yeah, <laughs> you'd be you'd be so helpful if you know. Oh, attack two. All right, so now Apis is finally hitting uh, some extra attack, which is which is great. That's what we want to see. And now, Gates has plus six defense from the last two levels, so he is a nice tanky little dude. Uh, 
But yeah, so the, the reason we we like to count dodges and things like 1 HP survivals and all that kind of stuff, like, you know, the bear survivals, is because it adds turns to these fights. Every time you have to a a spend expend another turn trying to kill an enemy that we've already killed, kind of just, you know, it just adds time. And, you know, th both of those deadly borns would probably already be dead, all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, all of this would just be, you know, there's more enemies for everyone to worry about because, you know, people get held back because of, the, of, of a dodge. Um, which is a bit smelly. Oh, look at this. So just, ju just so chat knows, um, this game is not actually available on, uh, on Steam. Only, I believe, Shining Force 1 and 2 are available in the Sega collection on Steam. Indeed, yeah. The, the only kind of like modern way you can play these games, as I mentioned earlier, is the, is the Game Gear Micro. Well, there <laughs> it's is... It's in Japanese, but you know. There is a Mega SD, uh, which works like an SD2 SNES kind of thing, except uh, it includes Sega CD capabilities. Uh, it's a little oh yeah, that is true, actually. It's a little bit pricey because of that, because it does have that capability, but uh, I'm not wasting this kill on you. Um, I, do, I, I do need to get that one, actually. I've been meaning to for a long time. Luckily, I have a very, very nice partner who gifted me one last year for my birthday. Some serious points there. Congrats. <laughs> he's, he's just sitting there just like brushing his shoulders off. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of nice to have. I mean, I have the, mm. the Sega CD and the version of it, but uh, it's, it's still nice. Um, do I have a healing seed? Okay, good. So we can get Cray moving again. So I am going to hopefully get Clut up to that fizzle ball. Yes. And now Kashing and Gates basically don't have anything else left to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as soon as I clear the right hand side, their job is done. Another level up, level 11 now. So, so Claude's now past level gro uh, past gro growth curve. So won't really be doing anything in terms of uh, we'll, when every level up now will just kind of be either like attack, defense, maybe one, maybe two if they're lucky. But there's no kind of like real pattern to the growth. It's not like you know here's you know a bunch of threes and a bunch of twos guaranteed kind of thing. So um, a thing to be aware of. Yeah, definitely once you hit that level 10 in promotion, and that's true for anybody, not just Claude. It's just that Claude happens to gain most of the levels uh, throughout the run. Yeah. Shining Force has got a really, really weird, really weird history with with um, releases, by by the way. There's like a bunch of times we saw like, you know, stuff gets released. Oh, the one shot on the fizzle ball. You love, love to, to see, see it. it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, because like Shining Force 3, which is an incredible game as well, never actually came... Only only the first part came west. Scenario 2 and 3 never came west. Um, and Scenario 2 is... And 3, right? Just absolutely insanely good games. Like, oh. uh, if I can, I think I'd really like to give this kill to Cray. Is he just shy of a little? Uh, he might be. I will check when we get back down to the bottom there. Because if he is and he can pick up a uh, heal three before the next fight, uh, I would that would be good. Because I think he gets heal three at level seven. I'm pretty sure. Don't always remember, but I'm pretty sure. All right, let me see. Uh, no, it's not going to make a difference. All right. I thought it might, but no such luck. Here's where we can always throw out the idea that the next kill would have made a difference if you had fed him that kill as well, but, you know. Yeah, it's still hard to get him uh, yeah. kills there's even not, in the next really, fight, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so this next fight is actually very cool. Uh, this is the Dantum fight. So um, Dantum, our little lion man over here, our ti tiger, tiger boy, um, he is powerful and he is, you know, fast and he has a lot of HP. We're going to be getting a new accessory in this next fight. There's an enemy that drops. I think I believe it's the Minotaur again at, mm -hmm. on the top right of the lower floor. There's two floors. Um, yeah, there's like a big staircase in the center that goes up and round to the sides. Uh, Dantum will, when we make moves, he will start uh, fleeing to the right and to the south. So he will be like on the top floor away from us. Um, but because we can fly with Claude, we can, we can actually reach him. However, um, it's going to be hard to actually kill him in you know two hits. He's also very, very powerful, so we have to keep Claude alive. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab... Um, we're going to kill the Minotaur for a very particular item called the Power Ring. The Power Ring on equip is plus five attack. Um, but when used, it casts the attack spell, which is an attack boost of 37.5% buff to the raw value of the enemy, of the character's attack. So all the plus threes and plus twos uh, um, will mean that um, Claude's base attack is pretty good. So it's going to allow us to do extra damage. So yeah, Danton will run around to the right uh, at the beginning, and we're going to try and chase him down. Um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go and kill the Minotaur, part one. Part two is buff Claude. Part three is finish the fight with Danton. Um, but we also have Domingo as well, and Domingo is a, a little flying jellyfish magical creature thing who can hover up to, the, to that, that spot as well. So um, up goes Claude, deals some damage, then Domingo will go into Pepper with a bit of magic to guarantee the kill, whilst also being a target for damage as well, if possible. Danton will probably go after um, Claude, but this is why we also have the Protect Ring as well uh, on hand, or, or, or Cray on hand to use the boost spell. We will have to make sure that Claude is at 100% before we send him up. Yes, absolutely. Dantum hits very hard. Even, with the, big even with the boost spell, Dantum hits really, really hard. <laughs> yeah, and you can see his HP bar is uh, mahusive as well. He's got 80, um, 80 HP, so quite a nice chunk. Uh, again, in this game, you, you, you yourself as yeah, the characters don't see much in the way of, you know, massive HP bars, but, but the enemies do. So you do get to see um, some HP bars, but you never get to feel the power of having, you know, a billion HP in this game. All right, let me just make sure I have space. Because that, be yeah. that would be the end of the run. Okay. okay, so power ring drop onto Claude. A piss, a piss. Wow, three levels, two attack each time. We're gonna, we're gonna make sure Apis is a nice big boy for the uh, last chapter here. Mm -hmm. Reminder: This is the last fight of chapter three, so we're coming close to the finale. So, although we get, a, I, I'm, I'm, you gonna do? I, I'm like use powering strats. You're gonna just kind of, gonna try and go for the. Um, for the damage roll. I assume we're going to hand off the ring to Domingo, right? And then Domingo huh? buff. No, Power ring, I'm wondering I if usually, you're using it. Or... I don't usually use it uh, as an just item in this fight, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, so the, essentially uh, you can use the attack, spe uh, the attack spell part of the ring or you can just equip it and, and, and attack. Both, both options really do work. Um, so, yeah. So freeze three is powerful, as you can see. 16 damage. D Dantum doesn't have any resistance to uh, freeze, so yeah. Yeah, don't mind my quietness. I am just trying to <sighs> trying to do this. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of kind of risky because Dantum's got a lot of, um, of HP and he's very powerful. So we need to make sure that he, because he's going to keep running down and run away from his healers, and this is kind of important as well. Um, at this point, Cram, Claude should be in a position to be able to reach Dantum, but we want to make sure we get this boost off first um, because that excess defense is really nice. There it is. Uh, 
belly holes, they suck. So yeah, having heal three is kind of nice because essentially Cray can reach uh, in the positions you're going to usually be in in order to actually kind of connect a heal three onto Claude after he takes a stunging. Because yeah, Danton moves up there. Now that priest can normally be in the way, so Domingo can probably be put on top to kind of like block the priest here. Or oh, that's not a bad idea actually. Thank you. Because if Domingo dies at this point, it doesn't matter because that's his last biz burst of MP. Equip the ring there. No, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, it kind of does, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I'm also going to move my characters to the right to kind of stop them a little bit. It's always a double. It always is. Uh, I, I believe Dantum does have an increased double chance. I'm not sure if it's 16 or 8. <laughs> it certainly feels like 4. Honestly, but, um, Dantum almost always double attacks, just like Edmund. Yeah. Yeah, Domingo will come back, come back to life at the end of the chapter anyway. It's just this prevents the priest from being able to get down to heal Dantum. It, it also uh, gives the uh, other monsters a little bit of distraction. <laughs> Yeah, because if you if like you know, a belly or got anywhere near, I was gonna say Balboroy there, uh, Claude, <laughs> and was just like, hey, have a bolt, and you're like, thanks. Nice dodge. Big dodge. Ooh, only one attack. First time for everything. All right, let's do this right this time. And there we go. Nice. Chapter three, Dunzode. I can't kill you. I may have served your father for so many years. I can't kill you, Nick. Well, we can kill you, mate. <laughs> this is Shriek. He's got a beautiful purple beak. Um, he is good, but imagine, like, imagine paper, right? Imagine paper. <laughs> Now, throw that paper in some water, and then get like a gale force wind. A shriek. All right, this will probably be. This is the last uh, chapter break, so this is probably uh, a good place to have a break. Well, that sounds good to me. Um, this will this will be the last break, so make this one count, everybody. You know, do do <laughs> do some do some squats, maybe do some jumping jacks. Get the blood flowing, get a drink of water, maybe get a hot cocoa because this has been that comfy. And we're going to be right back. And we're back. Welcome back, everyone. It's been, it's been a long time so far and we've got just a little bit more to go. We're on the final stretch. Shining Force CD, book one. But first, reminders for everybody who's been here this whole time, and some news for everybody who's shown up since the last time that we had a break. AGDQ 2021 online is complete. It was a ton of fun. All of us ruined our sleep schedules, but it was worth it. And we raised a total of $2.77 million for now. Just as a reminder, all of GDQ's portion of subs, gift subs, Prime Gaming subs, and bits cheered to the GDQ Twitch channel for the entire month of January will be donated to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. That means that you can impact that number. You can make that number go up. And that's a good number. That's a good direction for numbers to go. GDQ Hotfix, which is what you're watching right now, is a series of shows that happens every week here at Games Done Quick. You can get information on all of our Hotfix shows at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to support our live content, head on over to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Consider using your Prime Gaming sub with the GDQ Twitch channel. If you want to watch any of our previous Hotfix shows, any, any previous content that's been on GDQ, 
you can head on over to youtube.com slash games done quick. Check out the archive of, of our previous content. It's great. If you miss something, if you want to just get to relive a moment, that's where you want to go. And finally, tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, tune in. We're going to have Games Done Classic, which is a podcast that Lat Mackey does, where he brings on guests and talks about classic GDQ moments. And tomorrow it's going to be TaskBot Discussion Part 2. And with that, I think that it's time for you to take us home. Are you ready, RPGC? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> really so. convincing with somebody, are, are you ready? The runner goes, ah, uh, <laughs> it's the first thing out of their mouth. Hey, come on, you know as well as I do how uh, <laughs> how bad this chapter can be. So yeah, this is the last chapter of book one, and uh, we're going to be starting with actually one of the most brutal fights in the entire game. But uh, let's get started. We can talk about it as we go in three, two, one, let's go. Good luck. So Bowie, do you want to talk about the Edmund fight? I am going to have to egress out of here anyway, but we can still talk about it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this fight is really bad. Like, oh God, um, unholy levels are bad. If you played Shining Force 1 and you did the second fight in the game and you had that entire thing, uh, that whole like, you know, terrible movement type that no one could get through, imagine that for the entire thing. Um, there's like two layers, a ring on the, in the outside, or a, ring, a ring on the outside, ring in the middle of just woodland and mountain range. You cannot move in this, in this fight at all. Um, on one side is you, and on the other side is Edmund, who is surrounded by a big healer and a, um, a very, very powerful wizard who uses Freeze 3. So ha and that has three range. Very, 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 very powerful, very, very scary. Uh, we are going to stock up on healing seeds, I believe, here. We're also going to be shifting around certain things. Um, sell the Black Ring, we need a bit more money towards the end. We don't really use the Black Ring, it's fine. Um, yeah, and probably going to buy, be buying some healing seeds. Um, for the purposes of keeping our um, carries alive. So Shriek is going to support Claude in terms of being, um, you know, very, very able to move because obviously flying doesn't get affected by the movement. So Domingo, uh, Shriek and Claude are kind of the big main strap for pushing down the center and then um, going, kind of going towards the boss. We're gonna have everyone moving into the inner ring then down towards the bottom side. Um, and then trying to snipe Edmund. Edmund is incredibly high on the, on the defense and he does stand slightly out of 30 percentile. So you want to try and like get him to a position where he stays within the 15 percentile and not on the 30 percent to mitigate as much damage loss as, as we can. Uh, so yeah, loads of healing seeds are going to help to get through this because again, the main character is going to be running really, really far ahead away from the healers. So they're going to have to sort, sort out the healing on their own. Um, which is kind of like a big part of this. There's a lot of dangerous enemies in here. Belials are going to be casting Bolt. We're going to have golems appearing when we get to a certain point in the fight. The two two sets of golems. I think it's a set of three and a set of two. Uh, we're going to be introduced to Dullahans, who are also very, very annoying. There's a whole rigmarole of just loads of stuff that sucks. Um, so this fight is just... I'll, I'll, I'll just say it, a bit of, a bit of a ball ache, really. Um, so yeah, healing seeds onto Claude and onto Shriek to, to keep, and to Domingo to kind of keep everyone alive as we're pushing forward. Um, Power Ring probably goes over to over to Shriek to use that on Claude to buff him up to be able to do certain one shots. Uh, protect Rings as well onto Claude to make sure that he survives. Um, because again, the five defense is really, really good. And Gaian has some. Gaian's kind of like a nice auxiliary unit. He moves very well. He has pathfinding movement, so he moves very well through. Uh, the forest so he can kind of keep up somewhat um they'll fly ahead then whilst they're dealing with enemies guy will catch up and then patch up any wounds with healing seeds uh, want to give him an extra healing seed i'm also gonna i have i put the defense ring on the wrong person so i'll just have to go back and swap that real quick which is fine yeah. i'm also gonna put yeah. some healing seeds on some other people as well just uh for the sake of staying alive <laughs> mm-hmm yeah, it's there's a lot of damage coming out out right now, and, and as I was saying earlier, Shriek is literally just wet tissue paper in in a gale. So like he does die quite quickly if I've left alone. But he's still powerful, so it's like you do want to try and put him out there. He's not as powerful as Claude in any respect, um, but yeah, still still very useful despite that. So all right, here we go. <laughs> right then. 
So I do want to be a little bit careful with Claude's placement as well, just to try to keep him relatively out of the reach of the Belials at first. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I also did a little something else for safety, uh, and that is that um, I put the movement ring and the quick ring on Cray so that he can kind of sort of follow us a little bit. Mm. So you're going to see me switch between them, uh, between the two rings uh, quite often. The quick ring obviously for speed to be able to kind of go early on the turn order and that running ring when it comes to difficult movement tiles like, you know, Forest is like a is like two movement for Cray. It'll make him move three. And that just adds up. Like that's just so good for help for helping him stay relevant in this fight. Um, because of the way that we take the, the the way that we kind of approach this fight and the way that we approach, you know, breaking it into like waves of like, you know, the Dullahan and the two Belials and then the Golems and the next set of Golems and Dullahan, then the final bit. Um, it, you don't need the running ring on those who actually can move a lot anyway. They don't need it. it doesn't matter. So um. yeah, that extra that extra space or two that that Cray can move makes all the difference in the world. Why? Yes, thank you. I will take an extra level. There we go one belly all down. Hopefully it doesn't use Bolt. Bolt's a pretty powerful spell. Um... <laughs> the trepidation was shriek there. <laughs> I know, I just, I don't want him getting sideswiped by anything. Cause that, that, that is, uh, it, it, the fight is still doable, but uh, I will tell you, it, it makes it so much more difficult. Melee from the belly ult, that's nice. And a counter, oh boy. That's nice. Good start so far. So yeah, um, the... I keep calling it a sorcerer. It's the Demon Master down, down there, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the Demon Master has freeze three, and that has a range of three. So um, it covers pretty badly. Um, Mayfair is going to just go, gonna tank a hit. Because the enemies around the edges, so on the outside ring to the northeast and southwest, they are quite aggressive. Um, and they will move, uh, you know, against against you pretty hard. So having them see a target that might move, if they're trying to move towards you, and you can kind of like bait them away for one turn, gives you so much breathing room. Yeah. Prey is still taking a lot of damage, which I very much do not like. Yeah, that is a bit of a question mark. All right, okay. so I'm going to move Shriek over here. I don't want to put him into the melee, but I would like it if he could finish off the Dullahan. Again, because he's paper. Shriek learned from... Well, I, I'm not sure who learned from who. I'll say like Shriek learned from the uh, Ivan school of tanking. Anyone who's been Golden Sun knows what I mean there. Okay, so Domingo has magic. And he will use it. Bosh. 14 damage is good. Honestly, one of the reasons to have Cray follow you down there is uh, just for a little bit of extra healing help as well. Plus, mm. uh, if something if something really, really bad does happen, Cray is pretty OP. Um, so he can do a good amount of damage to Edmund if he has to. All right, so I'm going to... Oh, good. Good job. Good job, bird. You're you're taking right after the other bird. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, one HP working in my favor for one. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been excited to see one HP? Yes, when that <laughs> happens. <laughs> All right. Mayfair getting smacked. It's okay. Um, unlike some of the other Shining Force runners, uh, all right, bye, Domingo. Oh, 
That is... That's very mean. Yeah, that's not good. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's honestly, yeah. it's fine. It's just kind of a pain in the butt. Level five. Is it level five that he gets... No, it, Deanna gets bolt at level five. What? Right. I can't remember the levels for... Good or go on, Jan Cat. <laughs> Do that whole damage. You got it. Uh, I need to get this Cerberus out of here. I just All like right. it when people try, try, try their best. That's just the best part of this, you know. You tried. That that that's what this amounts to. Is is uh, you tried? <laughs> the big old star. You tried. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. The, the, if there, if there's any kind of quote unquote meme that I'm like, you know, not too uh, perturbed by, it's those kind of things. What are you doing? <laughs> My best. <laughs> <laughs> Do like that. It's good. Oh dear, Cerberus is in. It's okay. Cushing. Okay. The thing about Guyan is uh, as well, it's like the with the, with the Gyan pronunciation, it's like in certain parts of the UK, saying like "Go on, son," it's kind of a thing. So I get kind of just I always like rang in my head as like "Gyan, son," when he gets in there. I don't know why. Again, completely irrelevant. Doesn't matter at all to the speed run. It doesn't help commentary at all. But just a nice little anecdote for you there. Yeah, the, the, I, uh, I I love the the fun side things like that. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Wendy's just like, don't really want to go after that Cerberus, let's just <laughs> run around this corner. Maybe he can't see me if I can't see him. <laughs> Peekaboo! <laughs> Cerberus shows up. God. <laughs> they ask, they move so fast, they're so aggressive. Like, again, they're Pathfinder movement, so just look, oh man. God damn, that sucks. 12 to 14 damage on the fire breath. <laughs> That's the one railgun. <laughs> Even the star had an attack. It's just an attempt. Uh, sorry, you guys can't see that. Sorry. Um. <laughs> oh no, Wendy. Oh no. Oh man. So, we haven't really talked about it, but this is a good point to start talk talking about it. Everyone's really tanky. Physically. Physical tanky tankiness is a thing that what characters have in spades. They do not take damage from physical attacks, but magic is is classed as piercing damage. It just ign ignores defense. It just the damage roll that it has, or the damage, um, you know, window that it would have, you know, six or so eight to ten, twelve to fourteen. That set. That's how much damage it deals. This is okay and manageable for things like blaze one to three, freeze one to three, where it's you know anywhere between six and sixteen, right? But when you start getting to the powerful spells, we're talking like the really big hitters. Um, here's looking at you, I'm on my, my good friend Demon Breath. This Packing is where it becomes breath. a bit of a question mark. Where Demon Breath hits for mid 20s and higher at level one, then level two Demon Breath hits well into the 30s. He's if you can see a character with enough that. HP to survive one of those, let me know. Like, it unreal fear is struck from Demon Breath, because, yeah. Oh, here we go. Shlee! Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's it, she's Woo. done her job, she's good. <laughs> That's her job, is to put the, the, the Cerberuses to, to sleep, if she can. Bosh. So yeah, like, these guys are big, but they just hit Claw for nothing, and he's completely fine. Until the Demon Breath arrives. Yeah, and, and Shining Force likes this thing, has this, this weird tendency for all final bosses just to love the Demon Breath. Loves it. Big fan. Me, not so much. No, I'm not terribly fond of that myself. I could do without Demon's Breath. Oh, Balahan get destroyed. 
So there is another one of those um, aggro points over here, which I'm going to be really, really careful about because if I set foot past it, I'm going to aggro the Demon Master. And I don't want to aggro her at all, honestly. Um, I want my people to be ready to go and just one-shot her. Yeah. But there are still going to be two more golems that are going to appear in this little bit of a bottleneck here. It's, it's just so annoying. It's just, it's just insult to injury at this point. You know, you're just trying to get through. This is a clear. This is nice for Yisha. Cool. Go on. One half. Um, level up. Hell yeah. Two level up up, 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 up for Yisha. That's got to be the strongest Yisha out there. <laughs> mages are they're such a shame with mages, you know, because like, they could be so much better. Um, after, I mean, I think they had to tone it back because Shining Force 1 mages are just nuts good like unreal levels of good and as i say unreal is the best mage i think in the shining force and even including shining force threes and like marky in shining force three is very much a smiling face emoji um and like even like masculine and synthesis are all amazing hadoba oh quality characters but after anri they were just like whoa <laughs> whoa nelly <laughs> like, <laughs> rain it in because like they were so powerful So you have so such a way with words, Bowie. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it, honestly, I have to tell you, it, it, I love it. It's fabulous. All right, so I am going to get my bird ready to go for the next turn. So I'm going to power him up. I'm going to try to heal up uh, his HP and hopefully get a boost off as well. Thankfully, the golems uh, just can't move in their own in their own terrain, so that's fantastic. Um, it's really weird. Like mountains are actually really uh, there's there's such a difference um, between mountain and, and forest. Like um, like what is good in one moves in one movement type is actually completely rubbish in the other. Like gates can't move through forest, but mountains he's completely fine. Not completely, but you know he makes good good uh, good distance. Yeah. Yeesh. And the, these two yeah. are hopefully going to hold the line for a little bit longer here. Uh, I can't reach, which... Oh, wait, yes, I can. I can do this. Uh -huh. Fabulous. Okay. Honestly, that gives a boost to everybody down here. Uh, I'm good with those. <laughs> mm -hmm. You also get four experience per boosted character. Uh, yeah, it's five in other games, and it just means you get so much experience if you buff the entire party. Go on, Gates. Still holding in there. Uh, yeah, so so uh, Gaian is just uh, a, a, a seed dispenser. It's just like, he's kind of like a Pez, just for healing seeds. <laughs> <laughs> just hit the back of his head and... <laughs> Bosh, okay. So a buff onto the Demon Master. Kill the Demon Master, thank you. No freeze three. And I believe that's... Is that outside of Edmund activation range as well? Uh, don't... Mm, it, not, I don't think so. I think it's still within... I remember where his range is, because he's really weird on his range. I think it's still within his range. Nope, nope, we're good. Okay. Mm. I thought it was like two from the, uh, from the grassland. But this is nice, though, because... Uh, it's kind of weird, right? Um... You kind of... No! Uh, I was hoping Gates would get one more hit in, but... Um, I think... Yeah, if you move in one space, he gets he gets aggroed here. No, so, like, as we were mentioning, like, bosses have two turns. So... Oh, Evil Ring! So, yeah, not only do you have to deal with uh, the uh, Freeze 3 from the Demon Master, that guy has got a, an Evil Ring. Evil Ring um, casts, I believe, Bolt 2 in this game. Yes. Um, so not as bad as the other evil, e e evil rings, but yeah, this is why Claude's so, so so important and boosting is really important for him because then he doesn't get completely destroyed. Because Edmund is very big. That is good that he didn't die too badly there. Well, that is with the running ring on. Uh, yeah, let's equip that quick ring, get another turn hopefully, and then be able to get in there to heal. Yeah, if I can lure Edmund back onto the uh, onto the grass, that would also be really nice. Okay. 
He's not going to be able to reach, but I can lure Edmund out of the way. Uh, can I reach with this? I can. Fantastic. Thank goodness for heal three. <laughs> you just got it as well. <laughs> I did. Oh, I did. Man. The previous turn. <laughs> Serendipitous. All right. All right. Come on. Let's see if I can lure him up here, especially because I'm going to need to get uh, power boosted again anyway. Yeah. Quickness. Uh, uh, the Oh. Nope. No such luck. Well, That's, then. It's still um, okay. It's still fine. It's just gonna... It means I'm gonna have to use uh, Cray a little bit, which is also fine. Yeah, I mean... We need to go back to re Revive, I think, anyway, with Domingo down. I think Domingo's using the next fight. Oh, yes. That's no, right. we're gonna have to do some major re revivification for the next round. <laughs> Oh, that's what you're gonna do, huh? Uh, that's not good. Oh, double attack! Oh, for... See, I want to take you back about 10 minutes when I said this fight sucks. Mm-hmm. I'm and okay with that. End. I mean, at this point, I'd be tempted. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of like to... put Shriek in a position. Oh, I don't want to do that either. I need, to, I, need to, I need to do the damage. I really mm -hmm. do. Uh, and I'm gonna throw out another... another Protect here. Yeah, this is a good idea. Putting Shriek there as well might also incense um, Edmund to go, ooh, Flappy Bird, yes. rather than Tanky Bird. Yes. All right, let's uh, let's move you up here and distract this Cerberus a little bit. Okay. There we go. Yeah, nice. That's with the boost. This is why he, this is this, this is what why we call him paper. Like, just it's it's a lot better once he gains some more levels. But yeah, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. nice level. Defense two. Any bit of attack now is just a little bit of, of, of extra. You know, yep. it's helpful. Shriek, sadly, not quite as uh, impressive. Nope, but uh, he did his job, and that's all we needed him to do. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it, it's one of those fights. It's not like it is. It's not like the hardest thing around. It's just very laborious, and it just it, yeah, you just need 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 to grind it out, and yeah, it makes sense. But it, it, it can just feel a lot worse than it is um, because it's just frustrating. It's not. Is it, you know when like fights, you know they they go fast, they feel fast, and everything feels great about it. It's not one of those fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you. It's straightforward enough, but it's just antagonizing enough with the way it works. And Edmund is down. Nice. Oof. Bad timing. So we've got, this is the first fight of chapter six, uh, four. And we've got like six fights in here in total. So um, we're now basically, this is, Edmund was, uh, you know, the current king of Cyprus who was well, like, yeah, yeah, kind of like took over the throne and threw out Nick and, Nick, and then Nick came back. Almost, it was kind of like hamlet in a way, um, you know. He, my, my nephew is coming back to usurp the throne after I usurped it. How could he? Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're, we're now going to um, enter Cyprus. We need to get to Cy Cyprus um, Castle Gates first. So um, we got to the outskirts or to the village of Cyprus. Now we're going to get past the village to the castle. And then we have like four fights at the castle. Um, so we've got a few more demons to break through to get to the uh, the true heart. So I should probably do a little bit of story stuff here to kind of like, bring it all together. Because you're probably wondering why on earth are we even going to Cyprus in the first place? Um, so after the events of Shining Force 1, uh, many years after, let's say 20 years, why not? Let's say that. Um, Anri is queen of Guardiana and everything's living peacefully and all the original Shining Force have had kids. That's who all these are. Um, like kids and nephews of the original Force. Um, Anri gets poisoned. Uh, Waldol, a messenger from Cyprus, comes to Guardiana and then poisons Anri. I was like, ah, yeah, come to Cyprus. Um, because they're after something. They, they need something very, very important. And this, this whole thing builds throughout um, book one and two um, to the revival of like a... We're not going to see it, so I might as well talk about it. The revival of like a larger demon called Ion. Um, 
he's like a big baddie. Um, and essentially, um, they want... Cyprus is kind of like um, home to a very, very powerful weapon called the Sword of Hadra. Um, and yeah, it's... it's, it's the, the story about this is not necessarily a direct... It is a follow-up from Shining Force 1, but it's almost like a link all the way over to Shining Force 2. Because um, so the Sword of Hager is a very specific weapon that has a very different name in Shining Force 2. It's called the Force Sword. Um, and it how it's kind of like the Gaiden games are about how the Sword of Hager gets to Grands, and that whole kind of like story kind of comes in. So Cypress has the Sword of Hager, um, and we essentially we just needed to kind of like stop um, Waldol from taking over Cyprus. Nick needs to reclaim Cyprus as a kingdom, stop Waldol, um, and kind of like the overall plot is to stop Ion from reviving. So that's why all this is going on. But yeah, so I mean, I think someone asked, does this take place in the same world as Shining Force 2? Uh, yes. Um, although uh, Rune, which is um, where Shining Force 2 is, is a little bit different from where Guardiana and Rune Force are. Um, it's a different continent on the same world. I think it, I would hate, he I'd guess that it's further east of Rune Force, um, but it's never really clarified. At this point, RPG is just doing prep for the next fight. Um, yeah, because final it's... weapon pickups and then. Yeah. Uh, was a little bit short on cash, but that's honestly okay, because we still managed to get everything we needed. Okay, let's go. So this is also going to be uh, a snipe, kind of, sort of, a little bit. Um, it's a really, really, really dangerous one, though, because there are a lot of magic users in this fight on the way up, uh, including the Demon Master and the Belials uh, off to the side. There's also a Valkyrie that one of the Dullahans is holding, and uh, I would really like to get my hands on it. Also, uh, all of these rings have now been given to Shriek, uh, both for additional movement to power up Claude and for his own uh, defense sake. So there's gonna be a lot of switching back and forth of rings with, uh, with Shriek for a little bit. But yeah, a lot, a lot of the stuff in this fight is uh, very dangerous. <laughs> yeah. One important pickup here as well is the, uh, the Valkyrie, which is going to be important. Well, so we have the best horse as well now. We do. Apparently. We have Randolph, and Randolph is the best horse. Just making sure um as i get further closer to the monsters i am definitely gonna start swapping into the defense rings at the uh, end of the round for shriek so hopefully he doesn't die a horrible screaming death because he's still paper <laughs> and unfortunately the spear of influence doesn't work terribly well in this fight uh as compared to some of the other fights All right, I'm gonna also do this additionally for just a short term. Yeah, at this point as well, like because um, experience will be a, will be like uh, like rarer and rarer for certain characters. Being able to just kind of like push certain characters a little bit more experience, like Cray in there, for example, getting a level up here and there might help. So I believe the yeah the right side uh, Jobby has the Valkyrie. I think so. Yes. <laughs> Confidence. Uh, Bosh, there we go. Yeah, we'll give that to Randolph, because Randolph is a HUGE boy! Except I didn't check the one thing I should have checked. So I might not have gotten it anyway. Which I'm uh, a little worried like... about. <laughs> Item inventory. I, th I thought you did do that. Maybe you are just, like, looking at your equipment. Yeah. I was just looking at the equipment to make sure he had a defense ring on. It's not the end of the world, honestly, if you don't pick up the Valkyrie. There have been plenty of runs that I have been through that I haven't been able to get it. It's just, it's nice to have kind of a thing. 
That's all. It's a nice ranged weapon to have. But it's not a run killer. This lady, on the other hand... I don't like this lady. No, she's not fun. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting actually, because like that's the same same thing in Shining Force One. Actually, the uh, Valkyrie at the Tower of the Ancients is not mandatory for the speed run. You have nice follow-ups. It's so much easier to get. Uh, I think at least the halberd in uh, in the second one, because the halberd is uh, in book two. It's in one. Of, it's in the treasure chest with the uh, EM statue. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. The halberd and um, and one of the one of the cannons. You do not have any healing, so as, as kind of like slower paced book two is because of all of the uh, the like the bloating the like the HP bloat. It's still really good. Yeah, it is. I, I love the Shining Four CD games personally. Yeah, they're really good because like they're just smaller experiences. Like, the mainline titles, 1, 2, and 3, are just longer. Shining Force 3, in particular, that is a whew, big game. Um, each scenario is, like, a 20-hour-plus experience. You know, they are chunky. But then these games are, like, bite-sized versions, and they just, they, I think they just, like, they feel, they, they, yeah, they just, they, they cleanse the palate nicely, I feel, when it comes to, like, you know, you want, like, a, a short, sharp experience Nice and like, you know, tightly put together, bit of fun. They get the job done. Do you want the full kind of, oh, plus three attack. There's uh, there's the uh, attack we've been missing for a while. It's the, what it is, is it's the presence of Randolph. He's like, hmm, so this is what a good paladin is meant to be like. <laughs> and Randolph goes, yes. <laughs> who, who is your father? And he's like, <clears throat> Ken. <clears throat> oh, my. Young man, you've been led astray. Come with me, come with me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Just, um, I can just hear like Ty's typing intensifying, just Ken <laughs> <laughs> <Get> is a saint. <laughs> oh dear. Alright, I don't like this. Yeah. This is why belly will suck, by the way. Because bolt is not okay. Oh. Attack two. Bolt, and, there is level... And the bolt spell. Oh, level six, jeez. All right, show off that new X. <laughs> See, I love it. You get a couple of levels under Gates' belt, and, uh, and he starts uh, smacking things pretty hard. I said you sold me on him. You sold me on him. Okay, so I need to. This is just a massive issue. Sure yeah, this is not. This is not good. Um, Can I reach with it? Mm, I cannot. Mm. Trying to think of what I want to do here. I might just go back and go back up, because that might be the safer bet right now. Wait, do you have enough energy to do it twice? You do. Okay, you gotta be killed. <laughs> You need to go bye-bye. The other Belial is gonna come in, but... Uh, I can't do too much about that. If I can get both of the birds up to the top, then uh, they can finish with the Executioner up top, the Blue Minotaur thing. So I'm trying to play it a little bit safe. It's it's a little bit extra time, but um, in the long run, it's probably going to be worth it. Hopefully. All right, 
let me... <laughs> heal up my bird so he doesn't die. Very important that if you want to do 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 this fight, the claw do, does not die. Um, so yeah, the, the boss we're looking, are, we're looking for is the um, the executioner at the top, the, the, basically a blue minotaur. Um, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you can just like rush this a little bit faster, but it, it can just, it's much riskier. And again, when you're doing marathon runs, you want to kind of make sure, it's always about adapting these straps so that you can get these things done correctly. Um, because, you know, losing these fights it's not like if you if you're consistently taking these risks and consistently losing the time um, um then you know it just adds up all right um, i'm gonna put you over here actually do i wanna i, I kind of want to just get rid of this other belial just so it doesn't have another bolt to bolt chance Okay, and I kind of wanted that attack to wear off anyway, so that we can get it at the top of the turn. So, one thing that's really nice about this game, actually, compared to other ones, which I've always found has been such a nice thing, is that the rings just don't crack that often. I, I think they can. I have, they, don't think I've seen a crack, in all honesty. They it's can. really consistent. Yeah, right? they, they can, but luckily yeah. it's, not, uh, it's not very frequent in this game. Yeah. As opposed Shout to Shining, Shining Force, Force 1. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. It was, I, uh, how many times does that ring randomly crack in the middle of the fights? Um, well, the, the most I've seen, um, I think I've seen Ty reset 3-2, I think about, I think, I think the most I've seen is like 13 resets. To get it going because it just kept cracking and uh, he was, he was, I remember one of, the, one of the, he's like I'm doing a no reset I don't care how long it takes <laughs> plus like, like plus 25 minutes by the end of chapter three and it's like it's a no reset I swear <laughs> <laughs> you can see the life slowly drain from his eyes <laughs> over the course of that, of that third chapter oh, I mean we, we can't all be no worries right <laughs> oh yeah yeah he must have some French heritage somewhere in, here, in, in his noble line. <laughs> that RNG. Nah, he struggled as well. But it, I mean, loads of games have RNG, and, there, it, and an RNG manifests itself in many, many ways. But Shining Force is a particular beast where it's just. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, I can't quite. I mean, RNG is it's just random, of course, but it's just the way in which it affects your turn. Like a dodge is just plus one turn, which is usually plus one minute. Right, and that's it. And that's all there is to it. Um, which is really frustrating, but, uh... Mm. Alright, I'm happy to give Gates some more XP. Oh, with a double, very <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm happy to take it, thank you very much! <laughs> Let's go, Gates. <laughs> hey, the tankier he wants to be going into the last bunch of fights, uh, I'm, I'm okay with this. Mm-hmm. Bromingo getting in there, just helping kill the Executioner. That, that, that extra damage is honestly really helpful because this land up here, is, I think, is actually a 30% tile, so it actually really helps the Executioner's HP yep. here. Um, are you going for safety, by the way? If you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Or not? I'm confused, what? This this next fight, are you going for the safety? Oh, wink, wink. yeah, I, I always do with with this fight. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, So, yeah, Domingo's cool. But what if there was two Mingos? <laughs> two Mingos. <laughs> um, yeah, Domingo's got a friend, uh, and uh, yeah, and her name is is Amigo. She, you know, she, which which really bugs me because of the pronoun uh, matching to the to the ending of that word. But whatever. <laughs> yeah, you you you'd think it'd be Amiga. Uh, she's, a, she's, she's a pink Domingo, basically, and she's like uh, a healer version of Domingo. She's very, very helpful just to kind of like um, add, add a bit of safety towards the end of, of, of the run. Um, but she's great. So there's Geppel. Um, Geppel is not the hard part of this fight. Uh, mm. it, getting to him is the hard part of this fight. 
Yeah. And so there are two demon masters in, in the course of this battle with a lot of range that are just going to come over and freeze three, uh, freeze through me. So I'm going to try to keep staggered at the beginning just until that one that's on the left hand side right now comes over and does her thing. So she only affects one person rather than a whole group of people. So, yeah, Geppel's line of um, aggro is actually the bridge to him. So, you, you don't actually, uh, although he's like got like a billion HP, he, so the wraparound HP, the green bar, very exciting times when you get your first green green bar in Shining Force 2. I'm like, ooh, green HP? Um, but yeah, even though he's like hella strong and you're not that far away from him, he won't actually act activate and get, get aggro on you until you go past that bridge line. So, <clears throat> you can actually deal with everything that comes first. Uh, the Gonagonians will get aggressive, um, the, the, bow, the Bowmasters at the top will get aggressive as well. We normally save um, Shriek and uh, Screech, um, Shriek and Claw to deal with those. The, uh, the Wyverns as well are pretty tricky because they have Ice Breath um, and they hit pretty hard too. So if they get involved then we're... Yeah, we want to try and like pull them onto the, t like the HP tanks and then finish them off as quickly as possible, if, um, where possible. Attack three. Now this is more like the Cray I know and love. All right, so hopefully that will lure the heckin' Mage Master over. The Demon Master, rather. Uh... Oh, Assassins, sorry. They've got so many names. Oh, God, Claude, you're so huge. This is a good bird right now. I'm very happy with him. Mm. He showed up. Well, we're gonna give them the give him the attack boost anyway, just so he can completely destroy everything. Well, what, what a tiny little thing as well that I just really love about, about, about this game. I wanted to talk about completely irrelevant again to the strats, but when you get the secret characters, uh, like not like the whole like uh, party members joined a force like fanfare. When you get the secret characters, they, you get like a little like guitar. And... At, at mm -hmm. the end, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I love that so much, but I do. It's Just nice because it's bit. different, you know? Yeah. It means that these these are secret characters, so have a little listen out. There she is! I'm happy to have friends to play with. All right, Demon Master. Come on. Oh, that wasn't Ooh. the target I intended, but honestly, it's still fine. Because word. Cray has <laughs> uh, Cray has enough to uh, take care of it, so we're 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 fine. Still scary when you see like someone's HP just get halved by a demon master. Mm -hmm. right. You better believe it. All right, I'll let you. Please. Velocity. Yes. The upgrade of the uh, broadsword gives uh, gives our hero a nice boost of attack that he was sorely missing. All right, you can go up here because you're just uh, a meat shield anyway. All these meat shields. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the other assassin can wait really. Like, there's magic and there's shriek as well to help deal with that one. But again, magic is piercing and is more more dangerous um, than you know a powerful like physical hitter. But uh... I'm gonna pull Apis back just because the other um, the other demon master on the other side of the bridge can just come down and do the same kind of nonsense. Uh, and I would really rather that she didn't. Uh, at least not on somebody that's not full HP. Do I really? I don't want to put Randolph out there, actually. Uh, I, I the like my Randolph. <laughs> yeah, the Wyverns are getting close. They are uh, mm -hmm. hefty. Yes. Oh, and Shing, the... no! Oh, no. Because Shing died. You should have like, uh, you know you know that sound effect in, in, in Lemmings when you kind of like... I'm not sure if anyone's played Lemmings, but there's a, there's a function you can do where you can kind of like just cause them to just like go up. <laughs> it's explode and they go, oh no! 
Like, and I just think that. Is just, <laughs> I'd love to like have have a mod of that sound effect whenever characters die in this game. That would be pretty amazing. Uh, <sighs> not gonna lie. Uh, and I'll just blaze the wyvern, and then somebody can come in for the kill. Team Wyverns. Oh, I can do this. Domingo, my son. That was a nice 21 uh, set of damage there. Honestly, you can mostly bypass the heckin' assassins, because once you're out of their range, um, yeah. they're stuck on the wall. <laughs> and there's so much more, as I say, there's so much more danger. <laughs> ah! We were doing so well for so long. I blame you, Bowie. Sure. Okay. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Wendo, no! Well... She did stuff. What is that bishop up there doing? Having a great time. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Having a great time. Uh, couldn't Randolph have taken out the wyvern there? I didn't think he could reach it. Uh, I'm just nervous about it. the... Oh, you can bolt it. Um, it's the demon master. If I put Nick over there, she's going to bolt through the entire group. That is true. I mean, freeze through the entire group. That is true. You're not wrong. Wow, 26 damage. Wyverns are definitely a balanced enemy. 100%. All right, let's... Should be able to do this with a... Oh, good, thanks. Thanks, input. I mean, granted, the bishop has to die before I can get to Gipple anyway, but still. Yep, there she comes. Oh. I don't like that she's all the way up there, though, because I can't... Yeah, that really is. It's not a good spot for her. Mm, I mean, that's good for Blaze 3 with... Oh, Cray, please. I'm worried about you, Cray. Uh, I need somebody with a healing seat to take care of Apis so I can start moving him up. There's some more defense. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm gonna let somebody else handle this wyvern, and I'm gonna see if I can get rid of the bishop. That's a defo, that is. Level 15, attack 1. I cut, yeah, it'd be really nice if the demon master decides to slap uh, Claude here. Yeah, Paul's not ag um, angry just yet, because again, we haven't hit the, um, the bridge, okay. which is where usually Gepple yeah. will start getting aggressive. Yeah. So one bar of HP is 100, by the way. When you get 101 HP, you get one pixel uh, of green, and then you build up green HP, and it keeps like rolling over uh, yellow, green, blue, black. Still fine. Thankfully, Gates has gotten a lot of defense over the last few levels. Uh, I can't reach for... <sighs> oh, I know what I wanted to do, actually. I wanted to do this. So that actually works just fine. A JIC right there, just in case. Ooh, okay. Nice. Another level for Randolph is always nice. Randolph is pretty good, but the more levels you get him, obviously, the better he will be. Oh, hi, Isha. Nice dodge. I didn't want to say anything till it was over. There's the slap as well coming out from the from the demon master. Yep, it's good. Good. 
Honestly, this is fine. Yusha was there to kind of get uh, Amigo, so. All right, let's get rid of this lady before she decides she wants to freeze three again. So the Delahans will uh, respawn, but at least they'll respawn at the top ends of uh, either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they take some time, but they do move full full distance. So yes, um, I don't want to bring him up there just yet because uh, I need him to be power power ranged first. I don't want to send Claude up to Geppel without a uh, power ring and maybe a boost if I can. Oh, nice. Thank you for that. Yeah, so Geppel has the Atlas Axe and uh, the Atlas Axe can do stuff like that. We don't use them a lot in this run, uh, especially not as much as you do in Shining Force 1, but there are, uh, there are items that can use uh, magic effects. All right. Utility items for the most part. Oh, oh there we go, Randolph. So yeah, Geppel's got 140 HP. Um... Yeah, this is um, the gates of Cyprus now. Inside is our finale. Um, three more fights. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I kind of like, oh, okay, no, no double, that's good. Um, probably still going to lose. Randall? Unless, yeah, probably. He might go for the double, unless someone can get in there with, like, a heal three or something. By someone, I mean, Cray. <laughs> Who is fairly far away, but can do it. Can reach if he gets the turn. Yes. All right, another level for Nick. I'm, 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 I'm good with this. Yeah. Uh, maybe oh, I can put Domingo me? into lore. Oh wait, he might have a healing seed still. Let me see. Yes, he does. Okay, let's heal up our horse. I mean, that doesn't mean that Geppel won't come out and do stuff, but uh, Geppel is Geppel. Alright, well, let's bring in the big boy. It's a lot of damage. Just a little bit. Yes, you couldn't reach that. What an absolutely <laughs> shocking move. Move value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's really weird. Like the grass in in Cyprus really stifles movement for some reason. I don't know why. Just... Here we go. Power spear. Emphasis on the power. <laughs> Let's go, Apis. And protect my bird. Always a good thing to protect your birds. Yes. Okay, Randolph is probably going to bite the big one. Yep. Yeah. Still okay. This is just casualties of the fight. Uh, I'm just gonna put Domingo over here because why not? It might distract him. Be like, oh hey, yeah, you have one HP. Uh, I can kill you. I should do that. <laughs> Alright, let's get him in here the right way. Pow. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know. Oh, you always promising. think with the pause that it's gonna be it's gonna be the counter, but uh but no such luck. Good job. Geppel's down, one of the demon um, swordsmen who is protecting Cypress. Um, we've got a little bit more to go. Now, it's going to be quite a surprise, our follow-up fight, because we do know that that, that uh, Frabelle is left. We have to deal with Frabelle. Um, she's still uh, hanging out. And, but first, we're going to meet again Waldo, the guy at the very beginning who poisoned Anri. Um, we have uh, met him finally at long last. And, uh, wait a minute, who's this? I recognize that frame. <gasps> He's 
back. That is such a, a, a gloriously hideous portrait sprite, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So, Frabel is here, and she's joined by um, Bazoo 2, Electric Boogaloo. Um, Bazoo is somehow isn't dead. Uh, so he's now blue. <laughs> blue Zoo. <laughs> I don't know how many times I can do it. Bazoo 2, ele ele Electric Blue Galoo. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Um, yeah, so he's back. He's even stronger than before. He's got Bolt 3? 2. Uh, bolt 2. Um, and... And... Frabel hits like a truck. So... Luckily, we're really physically tanky, which is a good thing. So you have to fight both of them. They both have a lot, a lot of HP, I believe. Frabel has 120, and Bazoo has 100? We'll Something find out. like that, yeah. I just, mm. I don't remember offhand. Um, do I have anything that I need to move around? I think not. Okay. Oh, I need to, I need to put Ami Amigo into the, into the fray. Throw one more healing seed. The unfortunate thing about Domingo is while he does have Blaze 3 and Freeze 3, he has such little, uh, such little MP. Uh, and he can basically only get two off before he runs out. Uh, let me get Gushing out of here. All right. All right, let's do this fight. <laughs> Uh, I believe we have one of the. Is it? Is it, this is? I can't remember. That I have to remind myself of the music here. This is the one that. This is the same one as the final boss fight, right? The really good track. This is called. I think it's just called Track Thirteen. It's fantastic. If you look at the uh, Shining Floor <laughs> CD soundtrack, it's called Track Thirteen. Um, hasn't got a name. It's amazing. Uh, okay, so these Skull Knights are upgraded versions of the Dullahans. I say upgraded because they're going to just fall over in a second because they've got no HP. Get Nick some more ex uh, some more experience too, which would be really good going into the next uh, couple of fights. Yeah. So normally the way most people will do is you only have to beat the two main demons to finish this fight. You don't need to kill everything. Uh, most runners um, will probably just go push up the left, the right hand side, push up the right, move into the center, and kill, and leave the chimeras to themselves. Granted, the Chimeras in this game are not Shining Force 1 Chimeras, which are, um, I don't know, they are issues in enemy form. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the fact that we were able to kill Geppel before the Chimeras came down in the last fight is pretty much what you want to happen out of that fight, because when it doesn't, uh, yeah, they unleash some mighty breath attacks. So this is getting to the point, too, where, um, unfortunately, as much as I would like slow to work here, it doesn't. Almost nothing is affected by slow here. Yeah, they're, more, they're kind of like, because a lot of them like, are undead or like demonic enemies. There's, there, there's normally a, a kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? There's usually a property that the enemies have that kind of gives them a certain thing, so... Um, Things like Desol, which is like an instant kill spell, will normally um, like ha ha has a chance to hit anything. But if any enemy has the word demon or devil or something like that in its name, immediately immune. So that kind of thing applies here. Like a lot of enemies at this point just kind of have like this property or auto attached to them, which means that they don't get they get resistances to stuff, which is. What is such a high level? He's not getting experience. <laughs> He's been doing good. It. He's been doing good. And honestly, it's okay to use the magic down here because for Bell and Bazoo are not really weak to uh, magic, so you're not going to do a whole bunch of damage with them. Oh, can I have another level for Randolph, please? Oh, well, no. I, I must be pretty close. I love that the top of Amigo's like jellyfish head is kind of slanted. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the she's uh, the uh, the giga brain over there. <laughs> so we have to be a little bit careful coming up the right hand side, of course, because not only the wyverns, uh, but the assassins as well. 
and uh, yeah, none of them, none of them play very nice. I love that Bazoo just kind of walks back and forth. <laughs> Yeah, the, the enemy AI in this fight, because you have to fight both of them at once, they kind of wanted to approach this style because this is a thing that's kind of in, um, like uh, indicative of uh, the way that Shining Force CD or Shining Force Guidance generally work. You have a lot of fights in CD, I'll say specifically, um, where you do fight two at once, in, especially on, in the museum, my lord. Um, there's a lot the, of The museum three. is its own brand of... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I know what you want to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, agreed. Yeah. But yeah, they, they, they do this a lot, but because of it, they have to kind of strip back the aggression of the AI at first to kind of make it a bit more palatable. Uh, that wasn't my optimal target, but honestly, the other Wyvern can't get to Shriek, so it's fine. got a few fights left now we're almost there oh that's not very Amigo. nice Whoo. okay she's fine I, she's I put a, i put a nice tanky apis up there for them to just wreck and then they just completely ignored it i'm for it it's fine freeze now he's gonna pick up bolt no that's the next level because I know he gets bolts pretty soon mm -hmm. after uh, level ups. Okay, let's get rid of these. Goodbye. Ah, oh, level up. Defense two. I'm not going to ever complain about Claude getting extra defense as I go into the last few sets of uh, fights here. Uh, how much did he? No, I need heal three. He took a lot. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just... I wanted to make sure before I waste 10 MP. Yeah, that's what I meant. I mean, you were fine either way. It was, it's just so much. Yeah, it's like 25 plus damage for that for that ice breath. And again, as I was saying, that's not the strongest magic um, like piercing damage we get in the game. Demon breath is coming. And that breath there, like the ice breath that Wyverns did, is single target. Uh, so uh, I was mentioning that demon breath has like two levels. I'll, I'll let I'll let the levels speak for themselves because it is some kind of nonsense. Oops, I keep wanting to use the power ring and I keep not putting my input in. Oh, uh, okay. I'll take another level for Shriek too. The tankier he is, uh, the less likely he is to die very quickly. So it's fine. Assassins. Yeah, I do not like the assassins. They're playing rather conservative. All right, I'm gonna also start to deal with these uh, knuckleheads on the side. Oops. These bozos. Yeah, that's a good word. I like that. It wasn't quite the one I was thinking, but uh, I'll take it. Evil Bishops, uh, they have a move called Aura. Now, Aura is AoE healing for, obviously, um, higher MP cost. So they have Aura 3. This is the good thing about, funny enough, this is the good thing about Amigo, is Amigo has Aura. So um, when you do take massive damage from, you know, massive, like, a AoE, Amigo's there to clean up. Yeah, she is, she is a, a good safety to have for this run. I don't want to put him up there. He's still a little low on defense. But Honestly, I can... at this point, yeah, like Claude could just like hold it. I can do this too. Make sure. And hopefully lure both of those assassins down. Uh, Apis too, because he's got a light, a nice chart, large chunk of HP. I'm quite surprised uh, that Wendy actually survived that. Good on you. She's a uh, pretty high level for a Wendy. No lie. <laughs> I'm not used to her being quite this high a level. Uh, I don't want to move him too far out of the way because I will need him to power up uh, Claude again at some point. 
All right, one came down. I need the other one to come down too. Apis has got some decent defense. This isn't too awful. He's been doing. He's been doing enough. Mm-hmm. That's all we can really ask of him. Randolph with that humongous damage, and you love to see it. Yeah, he's a big boy, he really is. I'm so glad that you get to use Randolph in book two. <laughs> Dodge. I oh, was trying not to double double. Oh, <laughs> Oh, tried to step to him, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the heckin' double dodge just destroyed oh, it. I man. love it. It's great. It's <laughs> like, you've sullied the name of my father long enough. <laughs> I will save my lineage. <laughs> Ken with a tear. <laughs> like, that, that's my boy. <laughs> Wow, a level 14 Wendy. Uh, I don't know what to say. It's kind of a thing of beauty. You don't get to see it very often. I can't believe you didn't even promote her. Yeah. Still getting so much experience with these assassins, even, even at level 16. So part of this is to start luring for Bell over because you want to see if you can take care of for Bell before uh, before dealing with Bazoo. So if you can get her over to the right hand side of that platform, it makes things a little bit easier, a little bit safer, um, because mm. Bazoo also has an aggro point. All right, bye, Wendy. You you you, I salute you on this one because holy heck, you were fantastic. You were beautiful. Ape is still getting attack. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> All right, Shriek is going to probably need to buff up uh, uh, Claude after this turn. No, don't go that way for Bell. For Bell, what are you doing? So yeah, this is the thing, right? Um, enemies will move in patterns, so. They kind of they like cycle around the same few spots, um, and then so yeah, the tendency is that they'll move in into these cycles, and then you want to wait for them to be in the middle of a cycle when you kind of like go on top of them. So Frabel will, yeah, m sometimes move like he'll stay in the center, and then like as, 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 as you saw there, um, our RPGC running around the right hand side kind of pulls Frabel over to the right a little bit. So you can see back and forth between the two two same 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 spots. You need Frabel to kind of come over to the right and then, you know, jump. Oh, okay, this executioner is putting in work. Yep. He's going for, 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 for that raise. There she goes. Okay. All right, let me power up my bird. I still would prefer if she was a little bit further over to the right, though. Or that. That works, too. I basically just want her to be away from Bazoo. That's that's kind of the important thing here, is to get her the heck away from Bazoo. <sighs> Gates, please. This thing has so hecking much MP. Pretty soon, it won't even be worth killing it because he's just gonna completely run out of MP. Although the extra experience for Nick is kind of nice. Yeah, any extra level here will help just in small ways. Okay, so for Bell's come down, Bazoo's far away. Um, aggress, 50 damage, that's nice. Okay, so yeah, she does hit hard. <laughs> but Claude's beef. Um, but yeah, she would actually deal some damage to others if uh, she actually had a chance to, but 
Do you got the Valkyrie? Did you, or did, or, or did, did you have a full in inventory when you? Yeah, I missed out on on the Valkyrie, unfortunately. Mm. I wish that were not the case, but it is unfortunately. Oh, you're funny. You thought you were gonna go damage gates. <laughs> that's good. that's adorable. The only thing is, is there's another bishop over there. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sucks. Um, I mean, it should be fine, because like on this next turn, it's definitely going to be a dead for bell. Oh, this bishop. <laughs> Just give up, mate. <laughs> Just give up. <laughs> It's honestly, not going to end well for you. Honestly, at this point, I'm just amused. So let's get rid of the executioner. Oh, good. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> I love it. I, I say let's get rid of it and you and you just dodge. That, that's good. That's great. That's how this run should go. <laughs> that's oh, how this dear. run has gone. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I say. You have to laugh at this because the alternative is to sit here and cry. <laughs> I, I think I, I would have loved, right? I would have absolutely loved if, you just, if Nick just leveled from it. <laughs> it would have been the icing on top of that cake there. <laughs> just, I got a level, yeah. Progress. <laughs> that would have been that would have been pretty fabulous, yes. Oh dear. That's <laughs> really outstanding outcome. Uh, I'm gonna wait for that, actually. I'm gonna hold Randolph off to the side for the time being. Because I would like to bum-rush the evil bishop that's up top so we don't end up with the same issue that we have right now. Thankfully, Bazoo is, uh, nice and far away, so not too much of an issue just yet. Chimera's gonna look- start looking at some, uh, potential interest there. I mean, look at this point. Domingo doesn't have any magic left, so he's unfortunately a little bit useless. Good job, Gates. Heckin' love Gates. He's so beautifully tanky. I'm gonna put you over here. Just so it's one less thing I have to revive. Oh, that was very bizarre. Yep. I mean, uh... Yeah, bolt two. So that range, right? Keep that in mind. That range was huge. Yeah. So um, the range, well, the range of three, and then an AOE of like three as well. So that's what I was saying about um, how in the Game Gear version of uh, Gaiden one and two, they actually kind of broke magic by blaze three and freeze three, having that AOE and hitting for like mid twenties. It is ridiculous. You can you use it to your advantage, but at the same time it can hurt if you, if you have, to, have to take that damage as well. Um, so it was I a bit weird. I, that was I, I, I think that was a, a crit on uh, on my bird, too. Hmm. The big double. I would like Amiga to take her turn and cast Aura for me. That would be helpful. Just giving up healing at, that, at this point. <laughs> My last stand! <laughs> oh, Gates, you're beautiful. Okay, this is what I wanted. So let me. Oops, not items. Let me restore most of that MP HP that just got taken away. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. We have another one of these stupid bishops up here too, which kind of is annoying, but... I don't want to waste Claude's attack on the bishop, so... We're gonna go after Bazoo with him, and hopefully somebody else will get a turn here. Unfortunately, we can't reach, though. 
Ah, uh, Randolph sure. can reach. We're good. We're good. No more bishop. Goodbye. <clears throat> this one, on the other hand... <laughs> He's giving one... it the old college try, isn't he? <laughs> this one just does not want to go down. But Nick got another level out of it, which is going to be good for the... Uh, not the next fight, but the fight afterwards. <clears throat> I'm going to keep Amiga up here in case I need to do Aura again. And let's get Gates up there so that he can do some massive damage. Okay. So we like this when Bazoo, you know, just suddenly gets a bit scared of the idea of using his, you know, ultimate cosmic power. No, he does that same thing that uh, that some of the others More do, where others. he does the magic one turn and then the attack the other turn. Uh... Yeah, I'm so happy that that, is, that is, is the case. You can still get wrecked by it, you know, but, you know, at the same time, the fact that it does that does mean there's a little bit of leeway. We'll talk about that when it becomes relevant. But um, there, there's two more fights after this one. A very, very short kind of, um, like, beginning fight and then the final fight. They have to be done in the same, like, stroke. You can't do one and then aggress and do the other. You have to do both in the same um, uh, attempt. Which does make it a bit trickier than it, than it, than it seems. Um, because you need to be very, very conservative in the first. But, yeah, aggressive enough that you can get through the fight. Um, whilst also... Oh, I don't have enough for that. Check. Yes. Yeah, she's got enough for two, which is really weird, actually. Yeah. All right, in that case... Uh, I don't know if that's going to help him, but we'll, 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 we're going to find out. He'll survive one more ball with that, I think, yeah. I think so, yeah. Oh. Hi. Hello! <laughs> nice to see you. So those Chimeras are massively nerfed. Uh, the ones in Shining Force 1 have 65 HP. And their breath can hit twice. Okay, this is looking a bit dicey. Hopefully someone gets a turn. Cray, I salute you. You fought the good fight, Cray. So, um, based upon what happens in the next fight, uh, I'm going to get set up for it, but based upon what happens in the next fight, I might have to reset it because there are certain things that I cannot progress through the fight without. Because as Bowie said, um, they have to be done back to back. So that means if, if somebody that I really need dies, um, I, I can't, I have to, I have to reset it. main damage dealers can't die so the, the goal of this one is to defeat the evil monster waldol is in this fight as well he's got 50 hp um he doesn't do much but he does have demon breath level one demon breath level one has the simple cross um the five space you know just you know one in the middle and one on each edge um so the cross formation aoe um damage and it deals you know as i said about high 20s damage it's very very powerful so waldol whilst easy to kill does have a lot of damage and he's quite scary. Then we want to go after the, the evil demon or the evil monster. The evil monster has bolt three, um, but we need to clear him. So there is the evil bishops around. Evil bishops need to get cleared to stop the healing on the monster. Waldol needs to go down to stop demon breath. Uh, those are the main things that we need to worry about. And it may seem like that's a pretty easy thing, thing to do, but there's, because there's so much damage, we have to space out accurately. It's very easy to kind of get wiped if you're a bit... Uh, a bit too overzealous, I guess. So we're selling a, lot, a bunch of items because you can see that you can buy healing rain for 20,000. So that item that we were talking about that allows uh, anyone to heal uh, fully, re regardless of where they are on the map, our characters can use. We're 174 gold short, so there might be... Um, white no, ring as well. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up a white ring for yeah. for Nick instead. This is better. So this is defense plus ten, I believe. Yep. Um, and it also has aura two, so fifteen HP, heal for you know the massive AOE. I'm also very, gonna very give helpful. the I'm also gonna give the protect ring over to Randolph so that he can survive a little bit longer. 
because as much as I love him and he's a powerhouse, he can be a little bit squishy. Uh, and then the rest of it is going to be healing seeds. So basically, we're just going to fill up everything with healing seeds. Yeah. They're a really helpful item here. Again, like, you know, the HP values that, that we're dealing with, you know, 20 is a good chunk of healing. Um, I think only a couple of characters are over 40 HP, so it's hard. It's hard. But uh, yeah, this 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 final fight is pretty cool. And again, track 13 or whatever it's called. Blaring. I'm also going to make sure that the power ring is intact. Yeah, always nice to confirm. Actually, let me do that just in case. Since I'm right by Shriek in the inventory. Okay, that's it. All fixed. Uh, right, back to the healing seed. Let's go. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, because there really is nothing to pick up in this last fight. Uh, there's one thing that you will exchange with somebody else, but uh, you don't really need to have an empty spot in your inventory for it. They're talking about one of your favorite uh, characters, Karna, Bowie. She's okay. I'll always pick Tyrion at Creed's. Always. Tyrion is a massively powerful mage. He's huge, yeah. He's, he's like an amazing wizard, but also he's a really good sorcerer as well. I mean, you're, you're throwing away Freeze 4, but he learns all of his uh, sorcerer spells like a level earlier than Kazan. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and, much, and he gets Atlas much earlier than Kazan as well. But yeah, Tyrion's good. Um, you know, Karna's good. She's a, she's a really good, like, casual character because of boost and the, the level buffing. It's, like, really easy to get through with her. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put Apis up here to lure down um, Waldol because Apis actually has the HP to tank uh, a demon breath. Randolph technically does too. Um, I just feel a little bit safer doing it with Apis. This is, yeah. So Waldol, I am big boy. Oh, here we go. I don't like that these executioners came down. That was very yeah, rude. That was extremely rude. Please stop. It's like so rude. Like stop. Sorry, I don't know where that came from or why I, it came out. I I was a little curious myself. Well, it's like so totally like this thing. I can just like do, and it's like oh. Here we go, Demon Breath. I, it hits a lot, by the way, just in case you didn't know. That's level one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. So, yeah, also, uh, Bolt uh, 2 and 3 that. and stuff like that goes a big distance. Uh, it goes 3 and then obviously has the range outward of a further 2. So, like that. So we need to be careful. So yeah, Waldo is like our first main main target. The thing is, is that we need to try and pull him away from, we need, we need to get into, into a position where we can attack him that isn't going to incite Bolt 3 as well. Um, so attacking, I think one space up from the left of the Executioner is where it is. So basically attacking Waldo from the left-hand side or above is going to probably get bolted. So you need to attack him from below or- Yeah, from... I can't do that in this situation because of the, because of the heck and Executioners though. Yeah, that, I think it's gonna be, yeah, it's just worth it to get rid of Demon Breath. Uh-huh. Like, um, and again, Claude is, is tanky enough that the executioners won't deal enough damage to kill him, and the Bolt 3 won't kill him either. I believe the evil monster doesn't count as a boss, so he only gets one turn as well. Um, I think. Thank goodness. Yes, you are correct on that one. Just, just making sure. Um, oh, Randolph. Randy! <laughs> Alright, let's get you out of there. He did his job. He tanked the demon breath. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 25. That's a lot more damage. I'm probably going to bring Claude back down just to heal him up before I go back up. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Could you imagine the uh, cataclysmic outturn? 
Did, well, shouldn't have brought it up. Um, uh, <laughs> well, now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> well, now I mean that would be that would be an automatic reset. You cannot you cannot do this without Claude. Yeah. Shriek didn't. Okay. Uh, freeze three, good damage, good range, stay safe. So yeah, you, you can attack the uh, the evil monster from like melee sides, but then that would kind of incur the wrath of Bolt. So you can kind of normally create these like three part or two part attacks that will keep everyone safe so that he can only actually target one person per um, thing. Sadly, we haven't got any um, spears, like we didn't get the Valkyrie. So normally you maybe have, you know, one of the, you know, Domingo, ah, Domingo, um, Claude on the left or right, flying over the hole that's been left where the evil, e evil monster is, and then um, Randolph probably one, st one tile away on the other Cardinals, uh, so that you don't get hit by the Bolt 3. Um. Oh, that was scary. Yeah, I'm a little worried right now. It'll be fine. Because, like, wow, that's an out turn on Claude. Oh, no. Oh. I, I blame you for this. All right, we're going to have to egress out and restart, which kind of stinks. But, again, this is why we have the generous estimate. <laughs> Sometimes these things do happen, and we got kind of unlucky with the two executioners coming down anyway. So it's all right, though. At least... Club was the only one that died, so it's not a huge chunk of money. I'll call that a uh, a big old my bee. Gosh, Polly. Okay, stop telling him to me, me to revive Koshing, because he sucks. <laughs> I don't want Koshing anywhere near my party. Uh, let... Mm, All right, if, I think if I move Apis one square down from where I had him, then I don't think the executioners will come down. I think I just had him up too high. And that was my bad. Yeah, there we go, that's better. I just had him up too high, and that's completely my fault. That's more like it. Ah, <laughs> uh, silly damage. Again, that's level one, remember. <laughs> oh, demon breath. It will, it will never be okay. It really won't. Even in like, I mean, like, I'm thinking about other Shining Force and Shining Force 2 and like you have, you know, 100 plus HP at the end of the game and it hits for like 47 to 50 and you're just like, why does it always deal like half my HP regardless? Oh, hello. That's why I healed my horse. Mm. I don't know what the heck is going on with Claude, but uh, I would really He's like having... it if he stopped getting outturned by everything. <laughs> having one hell of a mare right now. <laughs> and thus I die. <laughs> yeah, get over it, mate. <sighs> that was glorious. That was the best death rattle I think I've ever heard. Okay. Execution is getting a little bit antsy. Honestly, if they would come down now, uh, I would be okay with that. Because they would be out of the way up there. Yeah, I think... Sadly, that one didn't come all the way down to attack Claude. Just kind of came over to the right with the intention to do so. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold off on this. Because what I really want is I want the other one to move down. Um, so that... I don't really want to waste the other 10 on that. Um, but yeah, so Claude can kill the bishop and then can focus on evil monster. 
Now, if we can get the other one to do the same, that would be absolutely glorious. Nope, it did not. Why you do this to me? Uh, I think I'm safe here. Yeah. Am I? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was, but uh, I'm bad at math, so. <laughs> Willow. Beauty. So, yeah, Bolt is a spell that heroes get. And there's your max. And another level out of it. Mm. I am okay with this. Nick needs to be tanky to go into the next fight, the last fight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Indeed. So there's a, I guess we can start talking about the mechanic as we build up up to it. Um, so again, the Gaiden games came out, out before Shining Force 2. Uh, these actually were made first and then made, made two later. Um, so there's a reason why uh, they kind of went full ham on the, on the concept in Shining Force 2 with Taros. Um, they kind of like, tease the idea here where in order to fight the final boss fight uh, we need to um, actually damage or attack the the, the boss Waldo because yeah spoilers Wal Waldo is not done yet um, he's still hanging out um, we are going to we in, or, in order to fight him we need to basically break his shell and only one person can do that Nick if he dies, the fight's over. Uh, and the fact that, you know, Demon Breath is a thing that Waldol can do immediately after, you know, this is, 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 is a scary thing, but Nick needs to get the first hit on. Doesn't need to, doesn't, doesn't do the entire fight, just the first hit, um, it, like breaks the shell uh, with the uh, with a very special weapon that we get in a bit, so. Okay, waste your magic, please, by all means. Bring. ain't moving and it's situations like this that make shade an interesting shout as well because this is something we do at the end of book two when we have chester and graham kind of at range you know whacking away at ion's tentacles and ion's body like you know i wish i could have that here just you know that bishop could be attacked from range at safe <laughs> mm-hmm See, the e the evil ring would be also an interesting shout here as well to kind of like throw that and just like burn all of this stuff together. Executioner. Oh, wait, here we go. He could, he could attack physically as well. This is what sucks about this, is that he can attack physically. Um, I was really hope hoping he, he would have because that is that that kind of stinks. move him up there though you can attack the executioner at least right uh he's gonna be in the bolt range if i put him there yeah eh. well what? no because uh horses to the side yeah the worrying thing though is getting a heal onto onto him Ooh. Oh, now That's we're just getting everything down here, which is a pain in the butt. <sighs> okay. Um... Oops, no. Nope. <laughs> that was almost, almost. I didn't, though. Okay, the assassins are getting a little bit antsy. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't like that they came all the way down like that. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. We need to get main thing here is that 
Uh, oh. Main thing here, I mean, we, he's been, been buffed up, so the, the bishop will die next turn. Uh, that's a guarantee. Um, but there's just a lot of stuff right now that can... That, that is going to be staying alive, and there needs to be, like, a bit of an exodus on enemies here, but um, the issue right now is that there's... Oh, actually... Oh, hello, Amigo, perfect. Uh, yeah, but the, the issue is, if I put her somewhere, she's going to get bodied, and I don't have enough range to reach my bird. Uh, but what I can do, at least I can heal the other bird. I'm going to start getting people out of there, because usually the less people that are up there, um, the less likely Evil Monster is to cast Bolt 3. Yeah. But yeah, the AI is not being kind to me right now. Alright, let's do the thing. Okay. The damage was dealt, the bishop is down. You are such a jerk. He's trying. It costs 20 MP, so it does does go down quickly, the MP, so you can outlast it. It's just slow to do so. The good thing, at least, is that the bird can tank all the other hits. <clears throat> yeah. So, like, if the evil monster was just to kind of, like, you know, look in... like they, are there, The other assassin's going to do that too, mm. isn't it? Losing Shriek means you don't get the attack buff, um, but it's not, you know... It's not the end of the run if that happens, or you don't have to aggress if that happens, it's just going to be a little bit weaker, but it's not... It just slows things down a little bit. Well, I've got healing seeds, my bird is not dead yet. Hmm. That's nice, though. An enemy to feed to the... Uh the fourth. Okay. Um, I need to... Mm -hmm. I need to heal my bird <laughs> so he doesn't die to another bull three. Right then, Yisha. Have a try to help it. She's giving it a... Best shot. All right, I've had enough of these assassins. They need to go far, far, far away. And if one of my mages kicks the bucket, that's not the end of the world. They are not terribly useful for the second fight. Uh, you, on the other hand, need to hide over there. Guyan has my healing rain. Oh, Apis. Apis, why? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, start working on this evil monster. I was ho hoping that was a double there. Um, would have been lovely. We always hope. We always hope. But it doesn't always <laughs> Boost two. And this has the big AoE and it costs a good chunk, um, but it does help. Like normally damage mitigation is sometimes a little bit better than just healing up because if you don't mitigate damage, healing up, the heal will just be completely, you know, mm -hmm. turned back on its head. So yeah, absolutely. this is where boost does come in. It come in, in in handy where you can heal and you need to heal, fine. But there are times when boost would be a better shout. So something like boost two now, We'll probably be able to make most people who are a little bit precarious, they'd suddenly be able to kind of like wreck. Um. Well, Wendo, you did your stuff. Thank you. You're a credit to the force. Oh, Nick with the massive kill, you gotta love it. 
okay. helpful. Let me start moving her around to the other side. And it's a shame, too, because with Freeze 3's uh, longer range, Evil Monster is ridiculously uh, powerful against uh, any magic at all. <laughs> any kind. So using magic on Evil Monster is pretty, pretty useless. It stinks, but it is how it is. Yeah. Here's where it gets fun as well, just wailing the Evil Monster now. We can... Defense 2 again. Hopefully we get another physical attack. That'll make things a little bit easier here. Yep, there we go. Um, at this point, with 100 HP... Hmm. Yeah, Claude should be uh, able to do... I mean, like, it's two more turns if you were just to do, like, so to do, so to do solo Claude. Um, in like a situation where maybe there's like less pressure or not not so worried about doing something like you know what are you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> there was a there was like a moment there. I was like, does he have D Soul too? And I just cacked myself. <laughs> oh my god, that was a I, that was a thing that just happened right there. Yeah, I've never never seen them cast. <laughs> Oh, I don't like that. That is oh. actually really bad. Oh, you suck. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to risk my... Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Heal. Oh. One final heal to make sure, in case that other one... I'm not sure the other wyvern can reach, actually. But it's I don't close know. enough that I'm Exactly. I, I don't even care. I, I don't want it to reach. <laughs> but yeah, that that was uh that was a mute spell. Which is very amusing in this situation. Ooh, okay, only about 40 odd. I'm actually kind of nervous about Cray's HP. Does he have, did he have 20 left? He did. Um I'm gonna do this. Because I'm gonna get both read. Yeah, so I say. If you get unlucky and the bolt three comes out, which is most likely going to happen, it's going to come out because I have way too many people over here at, at, at once. He's really insistent on this. <laughs> yeah, so dispel just means he can't cast. Simple as that. All right, I'm going to move him out of here so that he doesn't die a horrible death. large amount of damage. Very nice. Yeah. That's why I wanted that white, white ring, because having that aura to spell is invaluable. <laughs> Absolutely invaluable. Uh, I'm gonna... Actually, I can double that. Get everybody healed back up here. Kind of helps as well. I'm a little bit nervous about that, about these wyverns still. Yep, me too. <laughs> Please don't use breath. Oh no. Oh my word. you just attack? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Jerks. Oh, man, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'm kind of stuck here. I, I, I gotta move him save out. would probably be a good idea just in case. I gotta, I gotta save my bird. If Claude dies, I'm in so much trouble for the next fight. Uh, let's do this. Get rid of these jokers. Oh, the big double 
from Rindolf. Oh, you are the best. You're the you... best boy. Oh. Uh, I, I lost Amigo, but you know what? She saved my butt. <laughs> she absolutely saved my butt. And I am forever grateful. Okay, I'm gonna move you here. Let's get some more damage. This should Let's be a uh, pretty done deal here at this point. Claude will be able to definitely deal over 28 damage now. As soon as he gets his turn, fight's over. And then we can move into the final fight, which again takes a little bit of a, a weird start, but don't dodge. Okay, we're good. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. <laughs> final fight. As we said, uh, Waldo is not done yet. I can't believe it. Why, my beautiful creature? Gone. I know what I'm going to do. I am... Oh, not, not, not yet. This is Luke from Shining Force 1. He bops Waldo on the head. Looking for this. He has the sword of Hager. <gasps> oh my god, why? And for some reason, the translation of the name is Lug. Yeah. <laughs> so instead, Waldo's like, I will become a scorpion man. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever seen The, uh, um, the Mummy Returns. Um... Is it the Mummy Returns? The Scorpion King one. The one yeah, with the Scorpion King in it. Yeah, I think so. This is where they got inspiration from that from. The Rock was like, I'm a big fan of Shining Force CD. And at the end, guy becomes a Scorpion. Let's go. Um, so yeah, this is Waldol, Scorpion form. Um, he has a Demon Breath level 2. And it's strong. So uh, first things first, Luke has the Sword of Hadra. That needs to go over to Nick. So... Um, if you were to look at the um, the Sword of Hager's in-game icon, it's actually the same as the Force Sword, which is very important, because again, the Sword of Hager becomes the Force Sword eventually. It's different from the uh, Chaos Breaker. Um, but yeah. That needs to go over to Nick. Nick's the only one who can equip it, and then... Um, we need to use that weapon on Waldo only, and then afterwards everyone else can pile in. So, there we go. And we're going to be very careful about leading our party up the sides of the platform here, um, just to not aggro Waldol before I want to aggro Waldol. Also, the evil bishops respawn. Ha ha! <laughs> so these Taroses are enemies from Shining Force. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Shining in the Darkness. Oh yeah. I, ideally, um, if I can get Domingo up to block the door, that would be really nice. That'd be really nice. I mean, having Yushi there is also fine, but Domingo has a little bit more range, so he's more likely to be able to actually get up there. Oh, Blaze 3, just in time for the last fight. Uh, and Gaian's gonna sit down here off to the side, nice and safe, away from everything, so if I need him to use that healing rain, uh, he can. Indeed. So, we should probably talk about uh, the BS that is this fight uh, in terms of what we need to worry about. Um, the, the demon breath is huge. Now, Waldo likes to stay around his throne, so he doesn't like move too far out. But he does sometimes get a bit, a bit aggressive. However, um, so like Bazoo before, um, he cannot use, and I'll say this in a very specific way, um, he cannot use two magic attacks on the same turn. He can use it twice in a row, but not on the same turn. So one turn is a physical, one turn is a magic. Now the way that you, or could be a magic, I think, is the way is the best way to put it. Um, so yeah, here's a sort of Hager and Bosch. Um, now Nick has to do that to Waldo once. Now again, Waldo will do one physical attack and then one magic attack. Now he can do the magic attack on either his first or second turn in the turn order, which means that he can use evil uh, demon breath twice in a row, which is the last turn of one turn order and the first turn of the next turn order. He can use the double magic. If that happens, thumbs up emoji, well played, good game. Um, so this is where, you know, sometimes battle saves are a nice thing to throw out just in case like, I'm gonna get aggressive now, I want to avoid this with Nick so I don't die. Um, that can happen. It does mm -hmm. sometimes happen. And it, Absolutely. 
Yeah, before I start the, uh, before I start aggroing, I will do a, a battle save just to save my butt. <laughs> it's always helpful. Because it can happen. Oh, it can happen. But it's gonna take a good bunch of turns before, uh, before we do that. Yeah, so certain kind of like conservative plays that need to be done, especially without Valkyrie, because the thing of the, the flexibility of the Valkyrie means that you can normally have um, Randall follow up on a melee turn from range. So a lot, a lot, a lot of the, the, these enemies right now that need to be kind of like um, shoehorned into certain areas and then taken out one by one would, would go down a lot quicker if Valkyrie was, was available. Um, so again, it's not one of those things that like ends the run, but it does kind of affect how you approach certain situations. Yeah, I, what I really, what I really, really, really would like uh, is for all of the Taroses to eventually kind of move down here, and I will wait it out, just for the safety sake and the Sentinel as well, just to avoid having to deal with the nonsense. Because Waldol is enough nonsense all on his own. Uh, I really don't need to deal with extra nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, getting rid of the bishop as well is an interesting. It's a bit, a bit of a weird approach to that one. You essentially want to kind of get someone to the top side first, um, and then block the door because the evil evil bishops respawn from that door up above the throne. So yeah. And the nice thing about Domingo, of course, is because of the hover. Um, he is not going to be affected by uh, the aggro area. I love that white ring. That white ring does so much work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go, Luke. Hold your breath! Oh, hello. Very blasé. <laughs> Boy, please. <laughs> okay. Right. He's not aggressive yet. So yeah, basically when you get like within where that, where that, um, where the crack in the floor is, like within that circle is kind of where, um, he starts looking a bit aggro. That is a really scary position. Hmm, I wonder. So yeah, he's got blue life. That's 250 HP. Mm-hmm. He is a, a tanky, tanky scorpion. Come on, one of you needs to come somewhere over here, please. They will come down, but unfortunately you have to be a wee bit patient. And I'm okay with that, because uh, like I said, uh, I don't want to die. All right, Domingo is secure in position. He is ready to go. So we can kill the bishop and not have to worry about him healing up. Uh, doing any kind of nonsense and shenanigans. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure everybody is on the up and up. Because if it doesn't come down, I'm gonna have to go up. Finding the right kind of like... The like the right time to get in there because again, you don't know if the first one or the second one's gonna be melee, so if you go up there and, and you, if you have to go up there, um, he could just start by, by meleeing, which gives you all the time in the world to clear the enemies. Um, oh good, but, okay, another yeah. Taros came down. Beautiful! That's what we want to happen. Counter. Okay, interesting position. to do it one more time didn't you yeah never too never too late nope <laughs> 
in all honesty, if we can run this uh, bishop out of MP2, that would be that'd be kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. So in this game, um, the items break a little bit less frequently than they do in some of the other Shining Force games, which is a very big plus of this game. Super nice. Yo, let's go, Luke. And with that white ring on, my hero is nice and tanky. Plus, he's he is hecking level ten. You don't usually get nicked up that high, so we're 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 pretty good. <laughs> I would love to use my big boys over here on the side, but uh, if as soon as I move them away from the edges, uh, yeah, I'm gonna aggro the scorpion, and uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Good job, Apis. Okay, I'll take another level for Nick. Sure, this is totally fine. I'll take all the levels for Nick. That's right, keep using up your MP, good boy. Because uh, even if the bishop walks around and decides to bunk you with his staff, uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. <laughs> and that's the end of Isha's MP. She put in work this fight, though. She's mm -hmm. doing really well. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of her. She's She's been, she's been pretty awesome. We're lucky that the uh, AI works the way it does here, just because we can wait it out if, if need be. Again, marathon runs is just a safety thing. You want to make sure that, um, you know, for those faster times, like taking those risks and like barreling in for like world, world record runs and stuff is kind of normally what you'd approach. But it's one of those things just to make sure that we get through these fights as smoothly and as cleanly as possible, because uh, we're, not, uh, we're not like, you know, joking around when we say that demon breath is just like unholy. It's so good. All right, that it, nice that that place. idiot has just used his last aura three, so I'm gonna move Bisha out of there because she's not gonna help too much right now. So the bishop is basically kind of useless now, which is good. I think he might have one aura one, but uh, that's how much? He's got five left. It's seven for aura one. Oh, okay. Then yeah, he's. He's done. We're done here. Yeah. Yep, he knows it. He's done. Cool. So, yeah, get rid of this sentinel and then uh, time to attack the big guy. Um, yep. And again, Nick has to get the first hit, so we're just waiting for his turn. And then uh, round and round and round we go, hoping that demon breaths don't double up in one particular Well, yeah, in, in, yeah, at the end and the beginning. All right, Apis. Thank no. you. Oh. Oh, eight. <laughs> eight. Well, at least it was plus, at least it was two and not one. I feel slightly less bad about that. <laughs> slightly. Uh, yeah, probably gonna need to do this now. Get a boost there to make sure that everyone's safe just in case. Well, those physical attacks, they're not like completely like. They're not, weak, but... but the extra speed might be nice. Oh, are you serious? Now you outturn? You're a bum. You're a stupid bird. You're a stupid bird, and I hate you. In that case, it might be just worth it to exhaust the three turns and go at the top again. So that Claude yeah, goes I in mean... with... I, I want Claude to go in with full attack, and this is already the second turn, so he's already double deboosted. Um, but what I can do... Uh, uh, 
You, you can reach regardless, it seems. So. I can, but I kind of wanted Waldall to be a little bit further down on this side. Uh, he'll he'll move back. Uh, it's just I think you're gonna find yourself within but between his turns, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, um, might just be a, one of those necessary evils. Unless you can find a way to boost Nick to put him between them, but then that might be a little bit trickier with turn, terms of like turn order as well. Mm-hmm. All right, let's reboost. Yeah, why don't you why don't you come follow me down? Let's re-power up my bird, and then we'll move Nick in. Remember that battle save as well, just in case. Yes, um, as soon as Nick gets his turn. Sweet. Okay, let's... So this doesn't act like a bookmark. Just, a, just a, as a reminder, this is just a save. That's like a regular save, so any time you reset and reload it, it'll always be there now. Yep, that way if things do go horribly wrong, we can restart from this point and not have to redo everything. Here we go. Okay, so again, first hit needs to be from Nick in order to damage the shell. There's like a whole scripted bit here. We'll do a little bit of damage. Nice, 20. Spit of Venom. Velocity's right arm was poisoned. Oh no. So now, oh good, there we go. Melee, nice. Um, now that that's happened, we can get Velocity out of there. Oh, the counter, oh, big moves. This bishop is very amusing. He's really trying hard, isn't he? He's uh -huh. giving, giving it his all. I cannot reach so then, again, positioning here is going to be really crucial to make sure that you don't double up anyone. You want as you want if if he is going to demon breath, which he is, you want to make sure that as little people as possible are going to be targeted by it. There are situations like like this where you kind of have to deal with it. Um, but yeah, again, this is where like you know Valkyrie would come in handy because then you could put someone just like one space below, so they're not in target, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, and blah blah blah. Yeah, but not always possible. So you have to hold the L. Double melee, that's so nice. End of the last turn was melee and the first of this turn was a melee. That's good. We st I'd still really like to get Nick the heck out of there, though. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move my bird over here so he's ready for the next power when he needs to. Uh, all right, I'm going to put gates in and we'll sub people in as we need to. This bishop is really, uh, really determined. I guess I can technically kill it because I have Domingo blocking the door, so. Bye, Gates. Oh, well, I survived. Oh, Jesus. It's yeah. So, so much damage. Yeah, I think it's like 25 to 30. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can if you want. I mean, um, there's no... Because of how much damage you're dealing to him and how much turns he's got left, that would yeah, be a bad show. Yeah. I'm just worried that they'll, that I won't get a heal to any of them in time and lose all three of the powerful melees over there. I wish I had enough for two healing reigns, but that doesn't always work out in your favor. Yeah. At this point, you can, as you were saying, you can just like sub people in. like You can just kind of barrel them in because it's the final fight. Um, you know... There's the red. That's oh, what I was double. that's what I was worried about. Jeez. <laughs> Thirty one. Fun. gonna at least get this a little bit up oh. 
this is where again like Amigo would come in and also be able to follow up with an aura two as well to make sure that, that that's that's okay. Yeah, losing her was 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 kind of rough. Okay, Ooh, okay. okay. Good, 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 good. <laughs> Freaking Bishop. <laughs> he's really trying. He's, he's, you know, he's paid, you know. Apparently. Paid, so. <laughs> and there goes the other demon breath. That's going to oh, be dead Lord. all of them. That's unfortunate. That was mac that was like damage rolls, like the player at the higher side of the damage rolls. Oh yeah, that was bad. Uh, and then, well, I mean, to be fair, Kraken, like, we, the damage the damage should be there between, like, Kray and Shriek and stuff, so... It is. It's it's not it's not a dead run. It's just annoying. I'm going to move... Uh, going to move Nick back out of there. All right, this is here to save the day. For my father! Oh, heck yeah, with a double. And then, and then Captain Paper in the corner probably will be about, hopefully... Oh, no. Oh, Luke, man. Okay. On away. Well, um, um. Captain Paper. Finished it. Bosh! And we are hey, going to be coming up on time and right. Mm, right now, time. Congratulations! Hey. Um, thank you especially to Tina for letting me do this run, because as you can see, it's not always the safest run to do, but uh, <laughs> but it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, if you like Shining Force, both Bowie and myself do a fair amount of Shining Force runs. Uh, I usually dabble in CD book one and two, and he, of course, focuses mostly on uh, Shining Force two, but he can run basically all of them, so... Yeah, <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> Tomorrow's going to be fun. Um, I yeah, agree, it will I, be fun. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I want to do a great big shout out to the majority of the Shining friends and like the community uh, of Shining Force speedrunning, which has been going on since I started streaming seven years ago, at least. Uh, that's kind of when we had a bit more of a, a focused, uh, combined effort to get these games run. And we've done like a marathon for like Shining Force 1, FC and 2 together. We never really had CD at the time. So um, over the years, Shining Force has been getting a little bit more love. Shining Force 3 now has a route. It's 10 hours long. Huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 12 on console because lag. Huh. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, we've had, had a lot more people get, get, get getting involved. We do have, have a Discord, the Shining Friends Discord. Uh, but in, in, in particular, like, everyone's been putting loads of work in, but Nakuri has been putting together a website for Shining Force 4 speedrunning, which is like a big uh, project we're going to be doing to kind of create a website all for um, Shining Force speedruns and routes and all that kind of stuff that hopefully will be a little bit more uh, community driven to get guides and get notes and get information out there to kind of help uh, new people get involved in, in Shining Force speedrunning. So if you're interested in that, um, it's a thing to keep track of. I should probably link at some point to the Shining Friends Discord if I can. Um, I guess I can hand that over to Tina um, if um, and then do it do it that way, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's really, really good. And there's a lot of Shining Force happening. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure if I can say this, but like, I'm going to be running all of them tomorrow. Um, there's going to be a lot of Shining Force going on. So, oh no, you uh, just said, said it. You said the yeah. thing. It's been yeah. said. Ah, <laughs> oh, dang. Well, there you go. I'm sorry. Um, I said it anyway. But yeah, um, make sure to follow RPGC uh, because, yeah, she uh, does a lot of RPGs. But if you do like Shining Force CD and have, have enjoyed today, she's put on a very good show of what it looks like. Um... <laughs> And there might be more of that going on. Yeah. Uh, additionally, I also run a lot of Legend of Mana. So if you're interested in that, that gets run on my channel quite often. Or uh, if you want more RNG, there's always Mystic Quest as well. So RNG. Beautiful. Uh, congrats again. That was a great run. You did very, very well. Yeah, that wasn't uh, too bad. I had to take a lot of safeties, but I mean, only having to oh. do one reset on the last double fight, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm being, I'm being, I'm being atted by Railkin like a billion times to plug myself as well, so I probably should. Um, I'll yes. do this for you, Railkin. Yes, you should. Okay, uh, I run Shining Force. Um, I run a lot of it, and tomorrow I'm going to be doing a massive marathon called The Legacy of Kane, which is 
Shining Force 1, Shining Force CD books 1 and 2, Final Conflict and Shining Force 2 back to back. Um, it's going to be a long run. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's like all of the stuff that Kane has a thing in. But uh, yeah, uh, basically I'm the Camelot guy. If Camelot Software Planning made the RPG, I've played it and I do play it actively on stream. Um, so Golden Sun, Beyond the Beyond, Shining Force, Shining the Holy Ark, Shining Wisdom, all of those Shining games. I'm the Camelot guy. There we go. There you go, Railkin. Don't hurt me, please! <laughs> I mean, it, the fun thing about that is by, the, by like 20 hours into that run, you're going to be loopy as heck and it's going to be absolutely amusing. This is why why we leave Shining Force Two for last because I know it the most. I don't have I don't have to think. I can just turn off and just like <laughs> do it. Um, but yeah, what I'll do is uh, if I'm allowed, I'll pop a Shining Friends Discord link somewhere. Uh, yeah, you should drop it in Discord and then Relkin can, can pass yes. it on over to Twitch chat. There we go. Done. Um, but yeah, Shining Force speedrunning is fun, even though they're long and they're hard to get like the time together to do it. It's very reward rewarding if you enjoy the games because it's a fun new way to play games you love as a whole. And you can watch your sum of best go below an hour below your PB, but you can't get to it. <laughs> Hell yeah, for sure. Uh, also, can I say a massive thank you uh, to GDQ for having us and of course Tina for um, having um, us on your show, I guess. Yes, and Railcoon, thank you as well for uh, all of the technical stuff today. Yeah, thank you. Um, you haven't been able to hear him, but we, he, we've had his uh, his stunning voice in our ears all evening. It's been lovely. It's great. Now, during my show, I get to listen to Railcoon say nice things or funny things or, you know, just things um, because he, he tends to be the producer and he does fantastic work, as is evidenced by all of the fantastic work done on this show. Thank you both. Everybody in chat, if you're not following the RPG chick, if you're not following Bowie the Hero, they're two of my favorite streamers, certainly two of my favorite RPG streamers, and you, you should be following them both. And that, I just I want to I want to make sure one more time if there's anything else for you two to plug before I go through the the announcement spiel one more time and then we raid. I want to make sure that you've said all that you have to say. Uh, I think I'm good here. Um, Camelot Software Planning are a very good company and I love them very very much. And Shugo Takahashi, the one of the brothers who owns kind of Camelot, have said that he wants to make Shining Force Four. So we can only hope. So hold oh, on to that hope. Fingers one crossed. One day Shining Force will return. Shining Force forever. That's a good note to end on. I like that. So quick reminder for everybody, AGDQ 2021 online is done. It's been completed. We we finished it in record time, I guess. Mm. Anyway, we raised $2.77 million, which is very good. Um, but for all of January, all of GDQ's portion of subs, gift subs, prime gaming subs, bits, all of that gets passed along to the Prevent Cancer Foundation as well. So while we have a really impressive number, everybody in chat, you are able to make that number more impressive. It can be impressiver through your action. GDQ Hot Fix is a series of shows like this one, which happens every week on Games Done Quick. Head on over to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to get a list of all the shows, rundown of all of them, it doesn't matter what kind of content you want, there's going to be a show that you're excited about. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to support our live content, consider checking out twitch.tv slash games done quick. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can sub to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Uh, consider maybe using that Prime Gaming sub to support GDQ. If you want to watch previous Hotfix shows or previous GDQ content at all, uh, we do have a YouTube channel, as you might have guessed, I guess, um, from the previous uh, bit of information. YouTube.com slash Games Done Quick. You can watch moments you loved, shows you missed, shows you just want to rewatch. And finally, just one more reminder, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, we've got Games Done Classic. It's a podcast by Lat Mackey, and they bring on people who can talk about classic GDQ moments, things that made people excited, things that are just really, really fun to relive. Tomorrow they're going to be talking about Taskbot. Uh, it, it's a second part of a longer discussion. It's going to be really great. And with that, I think we are about to raid. So 
stick uh, stick with us. We're going to send you somewhere. This has been super comfy. The next place we're sending you, just as comfy. It's going to be so much fun. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. I hope you've had fun.